Hi! One year ago this week, on January the 20th, 2023, I uploaded I Survived 100 Days on a Survival Island in 1.20. The series did so well, I ended up making six separate videos on the island, plus a separate spin-off with my friends. Now, with the beginnings of 1.21 beginning to come out, a new 1.21 Survival Island series will be in the works. And so, as a send-off to this great series, I decided to merge this entire series together into one 5.5... <laughs> So whether you have a lot of time to kill, need something to play in the background whilst you're studying or whatever, or if you just love me that much to enjoy this all in one sitting, you can sit back, enjoy, and go ahead and leave us a like and a subscription if you'd like to as well. Alright then, let's do this. Minecraft has always been a game of endless possibilities, an infinite world with infinite blocks, crops, and animals. But where's the fun in that? This is the Survival Island Challenge, and it's simple. You pick an island and you don't leave. Use the little wood, animals, and crops that you could find. But again, that's too easy. I found myself an island that has no wood, no animals, no crop, and I'm going to survive 100 days on it in hardcore mode. If you go on to enjoy the video, please consider liking and commenting, and maybe you could consider subscribing as well. I'd very much appreciate it. All right, then let's have a nice little review of my island. Over here, you'll see the turtles, no bigger. This is a uh, Jerry, Frank, and Hubert, and remember that that'll be on the test. Got some nice sugar cane growing over here. Some more sugar cane growing over here. This one's Dylan. This one's Carl. Oh, look at that. There's some, there's some more sugar cane growing over there. And, um, yeah, I have to survive here. Luckily, I have one item with me. One item that's gonna save me. The bamboo. How in the world is bamboo gonna help? What am I gonna do? Turn it into sticks and eat sticks? That'd be a terrible meal. So if you haven't been keeping up the track with the new additions to 1.20, one of them is now new bamboo wood. Four bamboo equals one bamboo plank, which means I'll have wood. And now we wait. Well, whilst we're waiting, we may as well grab ourselves some sugar cane. Never know what you could do with that. And I'm already down some food. Great. Now, one thing I have noticed across my luscious, beautiful, amazing island is the fact that there's something right there. And I can't tell if that's just a landmass or if it's a sunken ship. Now, the rule is that I'm not allowed to leave the island. So I don't really think I can go over there. Maybe when I have some better equipment, I'll check it out. I made myself a little sand hole just for some shelter. And hey, look at that. The bamboo has grown. This was a, this was a terrible mistake. Also, it looks like there's a drown spawner thing just off the shore here. Unfortunately, there's no chest, but at least more bamboo is growing. Yeah. Also, since the drowns were close enough, I decided I was all right to kill them. Slow, very slow, but I got myself some food by the end of it. Only the finest cuisine on this island of, uh, rotten flesh. Mm, yeah. And with the night coming, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. I have to survive the night with no tools or food. Now, no matter which way you look about it, my biggest problem going into this challenge was I had no food. The very quick fire way to deal with this is to kill myself some spiders. Apparently, fishing seemed like the best way for me to get some food, and so I need myself some strength. Ow. It would help if the skeletons weren't shooting me, or the zombies weren't bugging me, but I was able to get myself two string, which is fantastic. Oh, two string, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, I just said that, whatever. And now we wait for the night. When day two came, an unforeseen problem. Creepers don't despawn, and they also don't know how to die. Re really? How many hits did he take? At least the bamboo is growing. It's just a shame you can't bone meal the bamboo. You can bone meal bamboo? Did not know that. Well, now it's time for me to make myself some bamboo planks. It's not working? Wait, they changed it? Since when, when did they change it? So in all versions of this snapshot, bamboo planks were made by just putting four bamboo together in a crafting table recipe to make one bamboo plank. They have now changed it, so now you need nine bamboo to make a bamboo log, which then turns into two bamboo planks. However, you can only make the new bamboo in a crafting table, so there's no way for me to do that. Plans ruined, game over, end the video? I mean, I just can't get wood, can I? Well, no, I just have to time travel a little bit. By reverting the world back to the original snapshot where the wood was made in the original way, I was able to make myself some bamboo planks and then make myself a crafting table. And after returning back to the latest version, I did a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and would you look at that, a wow. fishing rod. I have food! I mean, it's only raw fish, but no, I'll take it. And now it was a game of fishing and bamboo halving. This will be my life for a while. I also don't have any access to stone at this point, so I can't make a furnace, but I was wondering if you could make a bamboo campfire and it turns out that's not something you can do and just before the night came i decided to harvest as much bamboo as i could before returning back to my little hidey hole this is fun
I'm having fun. Day three and oh, look at all that bamboo. It's going to take me a solid minute to get it all. And with over a stack obtained, I can actually do things like make the basic wooden tools and dig a hole and get some cobble. Oh, this is amazing. I even got some coal too. Didn't totally nearly drown, by the way. We, we move on. Also confirming, no, you cannot make a campfire with bamboo wood. Disappointing, I know. So we'll have to do it the normal boring furnace way. To munch all the cooked fish. That'll be better for the diet. And with the night returning, I don't actually have to sit in a high hole I could actually cave. Oh, well, uh, at least I can make myself some stone tools now. Now, digging in the dark is definitely my favorite thing to do at Minecraft, except not at all. I mean, what do you think, Livehaven? But I hate digging in the dark. My first bit of iron, how thrilling. And after all this digging, after all this scare case, you know what I find? A water cave. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of incredible on day four that I'm actually fighting back the mobs with a stone sword. I know, shocking. Also, the bamboo is so much easier to get now that I have a sword, but I still do have a food problem. And now I don't. Now, of all the little wood that I have, making doors may seem like a strange choice, but if you're a Minecraft pro like myself, of course, then you know that getting this coal and water is so much easier when you can breathe. I also grab some iron too, and cooking away we go. All in a day's work, and the fish tastes good. God, it tastes great. Also, I can set myself up some sugar cane. I don't know why, I just did. Nice. After upgrading to iron tools on day five, I began to make some more bamboo doors and headed back underground. Honestly, the water cave wasn't too bad to deal with. Luckily, the doors made it super easy for me to get all the iron that I could. It took me a while to find a non-water cave, and when I did, it was a geode where there was some skeletons and an enderman that I just looked at. Cool, great. Not an issue. No, no issues at all. More zombie noises led me to more caves on day six. It was, of course, more water caves. At least I was able to find myself some diamonds, but diamond, should I say. To be fair, over the day I was able to find myself a few more diamonds. Though, with no coal, I knew my time was mostly up. I had seven diamonds by the end of the day, though. And when I got up on day seven, it was raining. My no coal situation was starting to become a bit of a problem due to not being able to cook some iron, so I headed back to the nearby water ravine and grabbed as much as I could. On the way back up to the island as well, I noticed that there was another sunken ship right next to the island. And this sunken ship had carrots. Which means I could have had carrots and wood from the start. Are you serious? Well, I quickly headed underground to quickly grab some dirt. I got myself a stack, which you'll either do. And with these carrots and a bit of bone mealing, I actually had fun. Wow. I also made myself a full set of iron armor, except the boots. Now they start, they styling. And now I want a home, so I started the basics of making myself a house. What all material I'll make this house out? Of, oh, I'm, I'm doing bamboo. Who, who'd have guessed? Now, the next issue to deal with is I need to get myself a bed. And there's only really one way to do that, and that's to return back to the spider hunt. If only they drop string. Come on now. Okay, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I just said that. I was definitely being overrun by the end of the night, running out of food too. So on day eight, after doing some minor housework, I realized that the only food that I have was this rotten flesh, but I did have some bows, so that was another easy fix for the food. Then it was back to the house. Listen, I ain't saying it's a masterpiece or anything. I mean, if you've seen my other videos, but like my dad said the first time he saw me, eh, he'll do. Eater got to top it off with a bed. The lanterns, a bit unnecessary, I know. For the first time in this world, I was able to sleep in my own home. Legendary, I know. We're only on day nine, and I'm going to need to survive 100 days in this world, and obviously that's going to require a lot more food, and so I decided to expand the carrot farm. Also grab myself some more bamboo, and though I was planning to go cave, because it was thundering, I was able to skip the day, and I'm not gonna complain about that. I had another cheeky idea on day 10. I would love to get myself a turtle hat, so let's go get some grass and breed some turts. Didn't take me long to get two batches of eggs laid, and now I just got to wait for them to hatch. After that, I expanded the bamboo farm a little bit, and I also tried to set up something that would make bamboo collection a little bit easier. Obviously, I don't know if this will help, but we shall see. And it was back into the caves on day 11. Oh, there's a witch. Oh, bugger. Love being on half a heart, you know, the feel it feels great being on half a heart. Also, I found myself some more water caves. It's gonna be a great day soon where I no longer have to search water caves, kind of getting fed up of them. But after most of the day had passed, I had finally found myself a lava pool and I grabbed myself 10 pieces of obsidian. Now, usually I grab myself 14 pieces of obsidian, 10 for the nether portal and four for the enchant table, but there's no point in me getting the extra four at this point because at this point in time, it's basically impossible for me to get leather. Mm. Now, technically I 
could get some from potentially fishing, but the chances of that are pretty low, and so I decided let's just focus on getting myself into the nether first. After making myself the portal on day 12, I grabbed some snacks and headed into the nether. And this nether sucks. I did my best to make my way through, you know, digging, bridging, looking, but honestly, I was pretty unsuccessful this day. At least I can get myself some bone blocks on day 13. Fancy, I know. Now, unfortunately, because I am in the snap shops, Optifine isn't a thing, so it's really hard to see what is around in the fog. Now, that could be many things, including a fortress, so let's head towards it. And once I did get a bit closer, would you look at that? It is a fortress. Found myself some chests, which had some diamonds in. Noise. The blazers were doing some damage, which was less noise. Also, I had killed 10 blazers at this point, and I only got one blaze rod. At least I was getting plenty of never ward and some more diamonds, or else this would just be miserable. At least on day 14, my blaze look had turned around, and I was starting to get plenty of blaze rods. I was also finding all the wither skeletons I could, and boy, were they doing damage. And though it took a while, I finally found myself a blaze spotter. After getting myself a few rods, I actually noticed that my boots had broken. And unfortunately, I didn't have any wood on me, so I couldn't craft any more, which of course is a big, big yikes. It wasn't terrible, but I was definitely taking a lot of damage, though I was still safely able to get myself 16 blaze rods, and I knew I was done here. It is time to leave. It turned to day 15 on the way home. I had to deal with some, um, friends, and boy, did they hurt. Also, they started killing each other, I mean, as you do. And then we did take a second, I was able to get back to my portal and get home. And it's night, so it's time to sleep. I was running a bit low on wood on day 16, and so I set myself up a hopper and tried out my brand new bamboo collector. It was alright. It's not perfect, but let's be honest, it was never going to be. Then I expanded the carrot farm before jumping back into the water ravine because I need a bit more coal. I did alright actually getting some. I only drowned a little bit, which was uh, positive, I guess. Once day 17 came, let me start by saying the carrot farm was doing really, really well. Now, these seven diamonds, I decided to turn into some diamond boots, and I also made myself a second diamond pickaxe. And then, it was back to the nether. Weirdly enough, I was actually looking for brown mushroom. Back to the drawing board. Now, the chances of a zombie villager spawning on this island is very slim, but there is still a chance. And if that does happen, I want to be in the best possible situation to be able to cure him. And that, of course, requires a weakness potion. For those who are living under a rock and don't know, you need a brown mushroom to make yourself a fermented spider eye, which makes yourself a weakness potion. On my travels looking for one, I also found myself a warped forest, which was the last biome I needed to get the advancement hot tourist destination. And look at that, there's some brown mushrooms over there. Anyway, it is time for us to head home. So on day 18, I made myself a fermented spider eye. I was getting some potions brewing. I made some weakness, even turned them into splash. And then I remembered something that some of you were probably already thought about. Wait, how am I going to get apples? Oh, for God. So, how was I going to get apples? It's a good question. Oak and dark oak trees do drop them, but I don't need to explain why that's not a possibility. Trading is also a possibility, but you know, I have no villagers, and even if I did, I have no emeralds, which of course scratches out one of traders. Which means the only way I can possibly get an apple is to loot a structure and get an apple from there. Now, most structures I won't be able to access, but one I would be able to access is the stronghold. It is on the very small list of reasons of why I would be allowed to leave the island to go to the stronghold to kill the dragon. And so the plan is simple. So let's work towards getting towards the stronghold and hope there is a chest in there that actually has an apple. First things first though, let's head back underground quickly to grab myself some more obsidian. And after watching the mobs kill each other, again, it was like a royal rumble down here, no jokes, I grabbed myself enough obsidian to make a second nether portal. So on day 19, after the obligatory grabbing the carrots and harvesting the bamboo, I went back to the nether. Now I wasn't interested in killing the dragon just yet, but if I can get myself about five ender pearls, I should be able to find the stronghold with that. It'd just be useful if the enemy decided to actually drop some ender pearls. No pressure at all. Alright, there you go. Piglin, go away. Go, go away, please. Please, go away. Alright, enderman. Okay, that got me to five pearls on day 20, and the sun is setting by the time I got back, the usual. So on day 21, I had a bit of a thought. Leaving my island on a survival island challenge, go to the end to get an apple is probably the weirdest reason I'm ever going to leave this island. So don't gonna do it. I'd also like to mention that I did set myself an extra rule that whilst I was off the island, I purposely didn't grab any extras to make myself easier. For example, I didn't get any trees or saplings or extra seeds to help myself. I purposely just went to the mainlands just to find the stronghold. And on day 22, I believe I found it. After entering the stronghold, I found myself a chest when, well, that didn't take long at all. And would you look at that? The portal's right around the corner as well. There's no eyes in here, which, uh, hmm. Now, remember that I grabbed that obsidian. What I did was I set myself up a nether portal in 
in the main room of the stronghold. And now I'm going to dig a path back to my main portal so I have a direct link. So it's going to be much quicker for me to get from one side to the other when I need to. It was a lot of digging and placing cobblestone blocks. But by the end of the day, we got that all done. Day 23, and I don't think I need to tell the Brainiacs who's watching this video that you need a golden apple to cure a zombie villager. And of course, a golden apple requires gold. And so I had to head back into the cave because I didn't have any. Oh, hey, I found some more diamonds. Sweet. After mining just over 30 gold, I headed back up to the surface. It was night again. And as I tried to sleep, well, there was mobs. I had to fight off an army just to be able to sleep for the night. Just the usual survival island things, I guess. It might have taken 24 days, but I also was able to make myself a bow. Took long enough. Also, I decided to make myself some golden carrots. Good investment. It's something I've never really done before. And then it was back to the fishing because a couple of useful things I potentially could get from fishing, like leather. Now, I asked for leather. These leather boots is not what I was looking for. To be honest with you, the main reason I was fishing was just because I was waiting for the night. Once the night did come, well, there was mobs. But unfortunately, there was no zombie villagers. The skeleton hunt was definitely an issue, though. But after fighting throughout the night, no zombie villagers spawned. I decided to kill another day on day 25. Let's add a second layer to the house with more bamboo and more glass. Perfect. Sure, we'll, we'll say perfect. And then moving the loot over to the second story of the house. By the time I was done, it was night again. Another night of fighting mobs, blowing up a little, you know, the usual things. But yet again, throughout fighting the entire night, no zombie villagers spawned. So with day 26 here and some more time to kill, I was thinking back about leather again. Now, there is quite a few simple ways to get leather that I didn't think about earlier. But the obvious one is I could just simply trade it with some piglins. So if I can get myself some gold, the piglins have a small chance of giving me leather and so it was back into the nether though I only did have four gold. I just have to deal with this hoglin. Perfect. He's out the way where did, did you see it? The leather that the hoglin dropped. Now, not only did I not see it, I didn't know that hoglins could drop leather, which makes me the biggest fool of 2023. And it's only January. Anyway, after some trades, I got myself some leather. And it is time to leave where more hoglins? Not a problem. I can just climb the vines where, oh no, this is fine. Everything is fine. And though it took 26 days, it was now time for me to do some enchants. If I had some obsidian or lapis, which I don't, but nah, I could do that tomorrow. And once the night came and Oh my god, this is up. This guy's zombie, zombie village is happening. Oh my god, let's curry, baby. Yes, let's go. Oh, he's a nitwit. He's a goddamn nitwit. Are you having a laugh? Well, now what? With that failure out of the way, I got into the caves. I was looking for some lapis where I found not one, not two, but three veins of diamonds. And it was only five, but now we'll take it. Also found myself a spawner where I got myself some beetroot and some melon seeds. After that, I grabbed myself some obsidian. Took me till the next day to actually find myself some lapis lagoogles. I also grabbed myself a little bit of extra gold and I also got myself some diamonds too. Anyway, it was time for me to head home. So on day 29, I need to get myself some more dirt for the melons and beetroot. So I have to go into mine some and there was some lapis right here. Since when? How did I miss that? Anyway, the melons were set up. I I also planted the beetroots, gross I know, and I got myself an enchant table set up. I used the remainder of my diamonds to make myself a new sword and a new helmet. Now I do need a little bit more iron because I was running low on that one. We had to think 29 days in and I'm low on iron of all things. Hmm. Day 30 came and I found myself a second spawner. Got myself a name tag which could be useful, you never know. And after more iron mining and more coal mining, honestly apart from a creeper jump scare, I got a stack of raw iron. Also got myself a couple of extra diamonds too. Day 31 came and I'll be honest, I didn't do a lot on day 31. I was just cooking some things. I also checked the eggs, you know, the turtle eggs that I've been hoping to hatch and they haven't even cracked yet. I'm not really sure why. And then I went, well, AFK. Yeah. On day 32, I decided to head back to the stronghold for a few things. The never trip, well, it wasn't great, but when I did get there, I quickly found myself a library. The books were pretty good, however, this stronghold, I am going to quickly show you that this is the world's smallest stronghold. There is like three rooms, and sadly, there is no more apples for me, because there is no more chests for me to find. There's no more anything for me to find. The stronghold is pathetic. And so I was doing a little bit of research on day 33. Apples don't mm. spawn in the never, and you also also can't get them from sunken ships. In fact, the last way you could get them is to potentially trade them. But yeah, sadly, that's not a possibility for me in this situation either because I have a goddamn nitwit. Now, in theory, I could find myself a second stronghold and do that one, but I just feel like that would be 
kind of pushing the rules a little bit. The rules were that I wasn't allowed to leave the island with very few exceptions and finding a second stronghold feels a bit cheaty to me. So sadly, I don't think there is any way for me to get any extra apples. Some good news though, thanks to the books and the combining, I was able to make myself an efficiency four diamond pickaxe. Plus I have a level 30 enchant table set up. I don't have the levels, but we can work on that soon. And when I say soon, I mean literally the next day because on day 34, I ran back into Never to get myself some levels. Quartz is a very easy fix for lack of levels in this world. Not really sure exactly when this happened, but between days 35 and 36, I got myself up to 30 levels. And it was by day 37 that I got myself 33 levels, which will be enough for two good enchants. All right, we were enchanted on day 38 where the pick, Honestly, it's all right, but I really would have liked fortune and the sword. I mean, I'll take the looting, but it could have been better as well. And then I got attacked by a pillager. Man, what a what a crazy battle that was. That was insane. Well, I guess I can now go back into the nether to grab myself some ender pearls and get myself some nether skull. I just call them nether skull. Now I'm not saying soon, but eventually I do want to fight the ender dragon. And I also want to fight the weather. And so on day 39, I headed back into the nether to see if I can get myself some more pearls and skulls. And the plan was simple. Let's start by getting ourselves some. Wither skulls. On day 40, I got myself my first skull. And then a couple of days later, on day 42, I got skull number two. And then we immediately it took longer than I expected it to. It was day 45 when I obtained my third wither skull. And after that, I headed back to the war forest because I'm going to see about getting myself a stack of ender pearls. By day 46, honestly, this was a lot quicker. The looting was making things really, really simple. I got myself 13 ender pearls and I decided that that was easily enough. And so I returned back home. And of course, it was night. I mean, when it's always now where I come back. It's like it's like a trend for me. Day 37 is time to enchant a bow. Come on, infinity. Come on, infinity. Let's go. All right, then let's redo a diamond pickaxe. Come on, fortune. Give me some fortune. Oh, let's go. And now we can cave. We do need to get all the iron, gold, and diamonds that we can find. So we're probably going to spend a couple of days down here. Now, at this point, finding iron and finding gold was really, really easy. I was finding a bunch, but the diamond? Eh. However, on day 48, though, I planned to cave for a while because my pants broke, I decided to change my tactics a little bit. Let's let's do a little bit of strip mining. Now, I'm not even joking. It took exactly two minutes for me to find this diamond vein. And thanks to the fortune, I got myself 17 diamonds. It's the easiest thing I've ever done. Should have done this earlier. Oh, Jesse, we, we need to cook or whatever on, on day 49. Now, that's 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 the Rick and Morty reference, right? Better make myself the rest of the diamond stew as well. So I do have this book, which I got from the stronghold. So I'm definitely going to put that on one of these bad boys. The other one, I'm just going to do a good enchant as soon as I can get this up to level 30. It is taking an eternity, though. All right, then. What we got? Blast protection, nope. Fire protection, that's even worse. Uh, oh boy, what do we do here then? I don't really want to do either. I guess we'll just save up some levels and uh, come back. You don't sleep for one night and all the creepers pop out like they own the place. All right, come on, protection for You know what, I'll take it, I'll take that. Because with this bad boy, that is protection free chest plate, with a protection free leggings, projectile protection to boost, which is not gray, and a protection one helmet, but we can actually start taking hits now without having to die every two seconds, that sounds nice. With all the iron and gold cooked up, things were looking good, great in fact. It was on day 51 where I decided to spice up the island a little bit, making the enchant setup look a little bit more better, making it have more than just bookshelves I really feel like added to the island, and then I added some paths. Now, there's probably some people in the comments asking why I'm using deep slate cobble, and the better question to ask is why, why are you asking, it's my island. And then on day 52, I decided it's now time for me to take on the dragon, so I headed back in to never to do this. Also, I want to point out something interesting that happened. I don't know if this was a glitch or not, but basically, you can clearly see that my shield is down, but it's like deflecting stuff as if it was up. I don't know if this was a 1.20 thing or a known thing, I don't know how I did it, but uh, yeah, this was just a thing that was happening in the nether. Anyway, into the end I go. The fight went mostly well. Hitting the crystals was something I'm getting really, really good at, if you ignore the cage ones. Okay, let's definitely ignore the cage ones and once they were all gone the dragon was giving me very little issue it was honestly a very well performed dragon fight and after leaving the end the sun hadn't even set yet so in less than 10 minutes i got to the end and killed the dragon which was pretty good on day 53 i made a little monument towards the end of dragon and it, it looks all right i mean it's nothing special after that i decided to re-enchant my boots and helmet that cost me most of my levels isn't that fun i also redid my sword hey this was pretty good this isn't the best gear i've ever had but i'll take it on survival island and once day 54 came i made the decision that i'm gonna go explore the outer end ridges so into the end i went and it was through the gateway to explore the end day 55 came and 
And I'll be honest, it is kind of hard to give daily updates when you're searching these kind of things. I mean, everything in the end looks exactly the same. All I'm really doing is killing some Endermen and pearling around just looking for an end city. But here I am on day 56 doing exactly the same. A little bit of a side note is that these Golden Crowers are fantastic and I should make them more often when I can. And I was still looking at day 57. We was about an hour in at this point where... Oh, wait, there you go. There's one. To be honest, I'm not really bothered about the elytra. It was more the shulkers that I thought was going to be useful. I have to float in around and murdering shulkers in the coolest way possible. I well, we even got some decent stuff in the chest. But after heading over to the end ship, of course, I grabbed the loon in there. And it was now time for me to head home. Can't go without the dragon head, of course. I mean, of course, I'm never going to leave the dragon head. Also, just because I can, I'm going to cheat the floating advancement. I mean, it's just, it's just a usual thing I do nowadays. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do a running back montage. Here we are on day 60 where I got back to the gateway portal and it was through and home we go. Just, you know, ignore the falling. Using the armor that I found on day 61 in the end cities, I decided to combine it with my own armor to improve it a decent amount. I was trying to write some notes about it for this kind of commentary, but unfortunately these farting baby zombies kept booking me, like all up in my grill, you know how it is. Now my next task was pretty simple. I need to get myself some iron and a lot of it because I would like to make myself a full beacon. So it was back into the caves I go. To give you an idea of how much iron I need on day 62, this is roughly how much I need. Everything in the shulker needs to be at least a stack where there is currently a piece of iron, and so I have quite a bit of a ways to go. A little bit of an update on day 63. I got an extra two stacks of iron, which was quite slow. The progress was quite steady, so I really need to pick it up if I possibly can. Also, rip my shield. Didn't even know it was low durability, and uh, I found a giant cave with plenty of iron and even a couple more diamonds for me, so progress very quickly picked up here. In fact, it was was only the next day on day 66 where I got myself enough iron and it was time to leave. It was thundering when I was up as well so I took a quick nap. On day 67 I made myself a mini auto cooker. We'll hopefully speed up the process a little bit with all the cooking. I know it doesn't necessarily look that fancy but you know what let me move it outside so it make it look a little bit better. Made its own area and now that day 68 is here it now it's just about passing a little bit of time. I started by fixing my bow and making some more golden carrots. I did dig out the area where I'm gonna put the beacon in the near future just the basics to pass the time and it was on day 69 where i got bored of waiting around and i decided to go into the nether because i'm gonna go and get myself some neverite listen we all know how this goes you dig down you mine all the rack and then you just find as much neverite as you can it took me about 30 minutes on day 70 for me to get myself my first batch of neverite which is definitely not a good sign though i did get a couple more pieces same day just to fight the lava to get to it i got two more veins basically next to each other on day 71 which is always a appreciated and though i got nothing on day 72 i got myself two more quick fire veins on day 73 day 74 and i realized there was a little bit of a trend here when i did find ancient debris there was only batches there was like three veins basically next to each other in this case i mean see what i mean there's two more veins right here and both of them are right next to each other and on day 75 i got the last bit of h debris that i need which honestly wasn't too bad it didn't take me too long to get it all well it's time for me to return home i got back on day 76 and it was now back to the way so that's nice. We're almost done on day 77, so I decided to cook myself a little bit of glass. And I also went to go and grab myself some obsidian. Need it all to obviously make a beacon, and well, you can never be too ahead of the game. On day 78, I was just four blocks short from me completing the beacon. However, because of how quick the auto cooker was, it didn't take me any time at all for me to get those four blocks. And just look at that, the beacon is already done. Let's fill it in with sand, and oh, it looks perfect. You wouldn't even know a beacon's there if you didn't dig it up. And now I can cook the ancient debris. Day 79, and I think we can all agree on one thing. It's really satisfying to get yourself full Neverite armor. To think that I started on this island with literally nothing other than one piece of bamboo, and almost 80 days later, I have now got full Neverite armor. I've done all right, I'd say. I think I've done okay. Speaking of bamboo, I should definitely get some more. My wood supply is still quite low. And I also decided to expand the farm a little bit. I've been meaning to do it for a while, to be honest with you. And luckily, I've got plenty of dirt spare, and though it took all day, they are quite farly expanded, so that's going to help my food supply quite a lot. I just got to get all the crops planted on day 80. So I started with the carrots, moved on to the melons, and even got myself some beetroots. Ooh, I, I know, it's gross. But by the end of the day, all the crops were in place and planted. We were good to go. Now on day 81, I would say that I have a wither to fight. And to be safe, I'm going to make myself some health potions. Now I only had tier 1 because I had no glowstone available. It's fine. I'm not going to rain the never. I should be alright to deal with tier 1. I mean, do you know how many times I fight this little nub? And on day 82, I 
went into the caves to find the wither. Now, to be 100% honest with you, I don't like fighting withers in caves. I think it makes it a bit easier. But I'm not letting it destroy the island. There's not much of it as it is. And so I found it previously on Explored Lush Caves, and the fight was on. It was mostly easy. I didn't struggle that much with this fight. I think the only funny thing to point out is that I killed him with a health potion, which is something I've never done before, and I didn't even know you could do it, but we are done. Back home I go, the beacon was made, and perfect, we had made ourselves a full beacon on the survival island. Day 83 came, and well, now what? I kind of did everything I was planning to do on this island, and so I decided to fix the island up with a couple of creeper blasts that were happening on the island as well. Also, remember my original hidey hole from the early nights when I just sat in here? Oh, look how far I've come. I can finally fill in this hole with no fear of the night. I also remember that sunken ship that I saw a very long time ago. I feel like enough time has passed for me to be able to go and explore it. First chest froze my game for a little bit. Not really sure why. Give it a second, and oh, hey, Buried treasure map. And the other chest had nothing special. Also, this map, for whatever reason, it glitched and it just turned into a normal map somehow. Again, I don't know if this is a 1.20 glitch or whatnot, but yeah, this buried treasure map is now just a map. Though on day 84, it did give me a bit of a cool idea. And now I can make a big map and, you know, look at the entire island and everything around it. Definitely made it too big when I expanded it out a little bit. So I made four small maps and put them all together. The question is, am I going to sacrifice the only four lever I have to make my Myself some item frame. Yes, yes, I am. And it's tiny. Very tiny. But I kind of like it. On day 85, there is only one more task for me to do. So for those who are new to the channel and you made it this far in the video, first of all, thank you for spending so much time here. I really appreciate it. And second of all, you should know that I'm a really big fan of a certain music disc. But this music disc can only be found in Bastion. So back to the never I go for the last time in this series. The small problem is I'm yet to find a Bastion, and so I'm going to have to explore a little bit. The journey on 86 was pretty basic. Between killing gas and making epic jumps, I was finding absolutely nothing. In fact, on day 87, it was even worse. And the most exciting thing about your day is killing piglins, you know you're not having a good day. And another day of traveling on day 88, it was a fun time. And 89, yeah, it was more tra huh? Oh my god, a bastion! It's time for me to head in, and well, there was a little bit of an army in here. Luckily, I'm way too stacked for this to be an issue. And there is a chest at the center of this type of bastion, and in the chest, it had some pig step! Woo! I got back home on day 91. It was night. And on day 92, was there a need to put some soul sand on my boots? Probably not at all, but I did it anyway. And then I set myself up a little jukebox area, got some deep slate paths to it. And now, now I was technically done. So what was I gonna do? I think I'm just gonna re-kill the dragon just to kill the time. At this point, it's just about surviving to day 100. Like I say, I completed all of my tasks, and so back onto the Never on day 93, because I'm gonna go and get myself some gas tiers. Obviously, to respawn the dragon, you need the ender crystals, which required gas tiers, and I got four gas tiers the same day, which was pretty good stuff. And on day 94, I had some spare eyes of ender for when I originally traveled to the end, turned those bad boys into some ender crystals. With day 96, then I moved towards the end portal. Honestly, I probably could have done this all in one day, but I was honestly just trying to kill some time and if this fight after respawning the dragon was very similar to the second one the crystals were easy the cages were come on come on and the dragon was literally on zero hp come on come on oh come on that yeah, there you go and on day 97 when i got back now i was really really done had one last little tour of the island just had a look at around at a couple of things that i did also the turtle eggs never hatched i don't know why maybe someone could explain in the comments but when I got to day 100, I freed my nitwit friend, and well, I danced to some pig step! Woo! It's good to be back, baby. So I'm actually recording this only a couple of days after the 100 days video comes out. But the 100 days video is currently on path to do really, really well. So I hope this is the sequel that everybody wants. I hope people were craving for 200 days on this survival island. That being said, it's been about three weeks, maybe more, since I've actually been on this island. So let me just have a quick look around. So I needed to give myself a bit of a look around. Just remind myself of everything that had happened. I tried to make a little home for the actual that I picked up at the end of the last 100 days. It wasn't gonna work because of my Frostwalker boost, and so I decided to move it into a new location. So as I said, this video is pretty much happening only a couple of days after I uploaded 100 days, and I'm receiving a lot of comments about a few 
couple of things and I just want to address them. But uh, I'm not the man who is capable to answer your questions. I'm going to pass it over to everybody's favourite Minecraft expert, Dr. Haven and Take it away, Doctor. It's good to be back, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Haven and here. Well, let's talk about the first 100 days. The series has done incredibly well, as Haven has already said. However, there was four pretty frequently commented things in the first 100 days video, so I'd like to quickly address them if that's okay. Number one, the island kind of looks like India. Yeah, I guess it does. Number two, it's cheating to go back in time. So I saw a few people calling me a cheater because I reverted the version of the first day of Minecraft to be able to get myself wooden planks. Basically, I turned it back before the new bamboo wood crafting recipe was a thing. And my very simple question to the people who think that is, is it? Can someone please explain to me what rules I'm exactly breaking? My own personal set of rules was, was I wasn't allowed to leave the island unless I was going to fight the ender dragon, for example, or that I was going to stay in 1.20. And neither of those rules was broken when I reverted the version back. I was still in 1.20, just an earlier version of it, and I never left the island to do it. Yes, I spawned in the bamboo. I'm not going to pretend I didn't for the people commenting that, but the whole point of the video was to survive with one piece of bamboo on an island that is technically unsurvivable. If we ignore the moss blocks, yes, I'm aware of the moss blocks. So yeah, can someone please explain to me why they think that's cheating? I'd, I'd love to know, but I just don't understand it. Number three, bamboo are crops and turtles are animals. Okay, but if we're going to be technical, yes, the thumbnail is wrong because there are animals on the island and turtles and there is crops on the island and sugarcane. This admittedly was a little bit of an oversight from me, but when I was making those comments, I was mainly referring to useful animals or useful crops. I mean, yes, sugarcane can be useful, but not for the start of the situation. I was mainly talking about crops and animals that could give food. So like cows or pigs or animals or carrots or potatoes for crops. Now, obviously, yes, I guess I did technically get that wrong. So I apologize. I don't know much I can say about this, but let's be honest for a second. How are turtles going to help me survive a hundred days? Can someone, it, does turtles have a secret thing that I don't know about? I, I swear to God, if they do, I'm, I'm going to give up. So yes, there was animals and crops on the island, just not useful ones for survival. And number four, the golden apple. <sighs> All right, I can see this one. So have you ever heard of tunnel vision? Basically the idea that you're focusing on one point so significantly that you ignore everything around it. Yeah, I got it bad. So in the last video, I said that there was no way for me to get apples on this island other than searching a second stronghold, which I didn't want to do. I was correct about that. Even to the people who were commenting that I could get apples from Azula trees, you can't get apples from Azula trees, people. I looked into it. However, why did I need that apple? Simple. I needed a golden apple. And can you get golden apples in Minecraft? Well, technically, yes. You just have to find a, oh, I don't know, a mineshaft, spawn, a bastion, broken never portal, just to name a few things, all of which I have access to for the record. So, uh, does that still make me the biggest fool of 2023 now that we're in February? by yes, yes it does. I hope that answered you guys' questions from the first video. I apologize if I missed anything, but let's move on. We're gonna go into Never so we can find ourselves a bastion to get a golden apple. Now, sadly for me on day 103, I never actually rid down the quarters to the first bastion I found in the first 100 days, and so I had to hunt around the Never again looking for a new bastion. Lucky for me, though, on day 104, I actually found myself a bastion that was arguably even closer than the first one, and that is where disaster struck. <laughs> Could you imagine planning to make a 200 days video and dying on day 104? That would have been, that'd have been awful. Anyway, moving on, I searched the chest with honestly no luck and I was honestly about to give up on this bastion until I found the big room that has a couple of chests. Chest 1 unfortunately had nothing. What about chest 2? Oh, quick step. And that is a haven and victory. Just wish I would have thought about the golden apples 50 days ago. Let's move on. I'm gonna mine myself some quartz and get myself some levels quickly. On day 105, I got myself 30 levels, which is brilliant. It's time for me to head home. I decided that I wanted to get rid of the frost walk on my boots. It was kind of annoying. Fortunately, there's no way to just get rid of frost walk. I have to get rid of every enchant on there. That was the plan, at least, until... Why is there a chicken? No complaining. So, this entire island is a beach biome, which means passive mobs, unfortunately, don't spawn 
spawn on this island. So how did this chicken show up? My only working theory is that a chicken spawned as part of a baby zombie chicken duo. The zombie would have died in the sunlight, however the chicken survived. So I have my first chicken on the island. The sad thing is though, if I am right with my theory, which I can't see any other way a chicken would have spawned, baby zombie chickens don't lay eggs unfortunately. So I can't really reproduce the chickens with just one chicken. I'm going to have to wait for a second chicken to spawn. For the time being, I'm going to put this chicken in a hole. Anyway, let's redo my boots, which honestly, they weren't terrible. And with this name tag, I knew there was only one name to give to this chicken. I dub the King Pedro, the king of the chick chickens. I, I, I don't know. It's funny in my head. I was following more of you guys' advice on day 106. A very long time ago, I found this sunken ship where I grabbed most things from it. However, I left the moss block because I originally thought it was kind of useless. However, as many of you have informed me, if I bone meal the moss, then I can actually get myself some wood, some trees. So anyway, I began bone mealing the moss, hoping to get some azulea saplings. You can get grass? No way. I will say, though, it is kind of annoying to know how, um, well, how smart you guys are at times. Now, dumb I can be. Like, seriously, I could have had Caesars the entire time. So anyway, I grabbed myself some dirt and I started bone mealing like crazy. I got myself a giant wheat farm set up and it's another farm to add. You know, it looks good. It looks great. And then on day 107, after reading even more comments, I decided to follow some more advice. A couple of people mentioned that the reason the turtle eggs weren't hatching was because there wasn't enough space around them. And so I expanded the cobblestone walls around the eggs, hoping that that would do something, anything. Hopefully this will help. But I mean, they've been laying around for like 20 days. I'm not that hopeful. And then I grabbed the quartz that I had mined because I actually had a use for it for once. I really don't like this hole in the wall for the axolotl, so I decided I'm going to make myself a nice little small aquarium for the guy. On day one away, I did have to grab some sea pickles and some sea grass to add to the aquarium, but there you go. Again, it's not much, which is a lot of things I keep saying on this island. Honestly, I did still like it. And then on to another build that I wanted to do. I was getting really fed up with these storage chests looking like, well, this is just a mess in here. So I'm planning to build myself a bit of a storage hut. I do need some wood though. Now, building is not a skill I'm very good at. I'll be the first person to admit it. And so I spent the rest of the day actually on YouTube. I was looking for some tutorials to build a simple basic storage hut and I think I found one by the end of the day. And so on day 109 I started using some bamboo to create some walls. It was a pretty tall building but it's going to need to be for the ideas that I had. And then I began digging out the floors. I even began working on the roof which was not something I was looking forward to. But I had the roof completed by day 110 and after that I put some lanterns in. It's not a haven I'm building if you don't have lanterns. In. I also realized I made a bit of a mistake on the floor, so I started working on that a bit just to fix it quickly. And then moving on to day 111, I started getting the chests in. I also added this centerpiece in, which, you know, it had some water in, which I thought looked pretty cool. And now it's time for the grand reveal. So, full disclosure, really quickly, I actually didn't fully follow the tutorial. The tutorial had more work on the roof, but I wasn't too bothered about that. And also, the materials used wasn't bamboo, I think it was spruce wood. But I'm gonna be 100% honest with you, I actually really like this story shot. Now, I know what. That's probably just me being delusional that it's a semi-decent build. But, you know, let me let me know what you think of these builds. Because there's a couple coming up. And I, I honestly kind of like the builds that happen. On day 112, I'm going to give everybody a little bit of a history lesson. Now, before a time of item frames was invented. When everyone had the storage system, they'd have item frames. And they put an item in the item frame. And that's how you designate what chests had what. Well, we didn't have them back in the day. And you know what? We used signs. Now, in comparison, of course, it looks terrible. But, you know, that's just what we did. Now it's time to move all all of the stuff are where, oh my god, there's a wandering trader, and he has saplings? Birch or Alcacia? Oh boy, oh boy, I mean, this is, uh, this is gonna take me a minute. Well, I guess I'll pick the lesser of two evils. And after moving everything I had to the outside chest, the storage hut is now time to start organizing everything that I had. I wish there was anything I could say to make day 113 more interesting, but other than I sorted all my chests, I honestly didn't do that much. At least by the time I was done, my island was looking a lot cleaner. And for the first time in 113 days, I popped down a little bit of a dirt area. I popped down a sapling and would you look at that? A tree. Who'd, who'd have funk it? No, ne never me. And as the sun sets on this beautiful day, what a great day to be on the survival island. It's just amazing. It began thundering on day 114, and as I was looking around, I heard a noise. A familiar noise. Oh my god, a second zombie village has spawned, and I've checked. This guy's not a nitwit. I quickly grabbed the golden apple I got from the bastion and the potions I had left over for the first 100 days, and I was beginning the curing process. It's happening, lads. I can't believe it's happening. Anyway, let's leave for now. Oh, right, that zombie village is stopping. You know what, let's just sleep in the storage show. It's always been a comfortable place to go. Day 115, but there's another one. There's, there's another one, I don't believe. Oh, well, bugger. 
No. Oh. So now once the zombie villager has actually been ah. cured, I actually will have trade. So I need to decide what trade I want to turn him into to get the maximum amount of emeralds. Now, ah. my usual go-to in this situation is actually Fletcher's because 32 sticks for a single emerald is the easiest trade in the world. Unfortunately, despite the bamboo and the alcacia trees, I don't actually have that much wood, or at least not enough to sacrifice to create a large amount of emerald. But you know what I do have a lot of? Farm. Lots of carrots, weed, beetroots, all of it. And so ah. I'm going to make myself a farmer villager. Plus, there is the chance that farmer villagers would need apples. I don't actually need apples anymore. It's just nice to have them, just to brag that I actually have apples. So anyway, I made myself a composter, and I got myself a new friend. Carrots and beetroots, you say? Let me just... That's a nice trait. Anyway, now both melons and pumpkins were in options, and I have melons, just not any pumpkins, and so I started grabbing as many melons as I could. I was so close to maxing them out already, you know, more crops to trade, I decided that I know I just met the guy, I know you probably shouldn't do this kind of thing from strangers, but I'm just gonna buy this suspicious stew. I'm sure this one can go wrong. And on day 116, after getting a max farmer, I got no apple trades, which is just, you know, that's of course I didn't. Well, I can't just let the villagers live inside my home. I need to make myself a villager hut. And though most of you are probably gonna hate me, I just didn't want to use bamboo anymore. I'm gonna make it out of acacia wood. It does require, well, acacia wood and a lot of it, so I'm gonna have to wait for these guys to grow. I pretty much just decided what spot I was gonna put the new hut in. It was gonna be a big boy, I'll tell you that much. I also decided to finally test out the suspicious stew, so I took myself a little bit of damage. Stew 1 gave me jump boost, which honestly could be useful in certain situations, while stew 2 gave me poison, which is, you know, that's probably a little less useful to be honest with you. On day 117, I didn't actually look up a tutorial this time, I just, well, went for it. I was hoping that my building skills would actually be able to, you know, deal with it. As you can see, I'm using red stained glass for the panes, and I definitely should have gotten all the wood before I started, but what can you do? I was trying though. You're going to give me a trap I was trying. I was adding like depth with the logs. I was even putting trap doors. I was really trying here. I never thought I'd be using beetroots, but uh, here we are with red dye. Hmm. The glass went in. Now it was onto the roof. I had this idea to mix like logs and slabs on the roof, though I was running out of logs. And I'm going to be honest with you, I actually kind of liked it. So I quickly grabbed myself the rest of the wood and finished it off. I must say, if you've watched my builds for a while, you got to admit, I've definitely made worse than this. This looks all right. And so on day 119 just to finish off this but oh lanterns who'd have seen that one coming the floor was dug out and then replaced and then i got the villagers in there good amount of progress was being made so far and now this is where things are going to get a little bit uh complicated so to breed villagers you need two things the first one is a food source like carrots bread or potatoes of which i have plenty of and the second one is beds which requires wool which i have very little of so my only real access to get myself wool is some string i did have 28 by day 119, but that's honestly not a lot. You know what would help them? If shepherds traded wool, they, they do, but they only buy it, they don't sell it. What kind of shepherd doesn't sell wool? Well, I was at least able to get two beds in, and it was back to the most old-fashioned way of getting string. 119 days in, and I am spending the night hunting spiders, just like night one. Everything sort of comes around in a full circle at the end of the day. I mean, to, to be fair, I got 37 string, which was all right. And then on day 120, I got a whole uh, free beds, I'm sure. And now I needed a bit of a food source. I wonder if this is going to be enough. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do think it's going to be enough. That's a, that's a lot of carrots. Breed, my babies. Breed. And after 120 days, I have a child. All right, let's do some more trades. Mello. And on day 121, I came up with another idea. With these farmer villagers right here, I'm going to try and do something that I've never done before, and that is to make a semi-automatic crop farm. I picked up all the crops, and I also picked up all the dirt, and I began designing a little plan to make myself an automatic farm. Now, the design I'm doing on day 122 is kind of hard to explain, but basically all you need to know is that I'm hoping all the water will push all the crops into a bottom hopper system for me to collect. However, it does require some more blocks, so I am going to need to get myself some cobblestone. After getting the cobblestone on day one, two, three, I got the walls in. The next on the list was dispensers, which uh, it requires string. Of course it does. Just going to wait out until the night. I'm going to hang out with my villager friends. Don't have anyone else on this island. Also, I want to point out, whilst I was searching up the easy ways to get string, I was thinking maybe villagers would trade string. And again, they do. In fact, there's two different kinds of villagers that trade string. However, both of them buy string. Why do no one sell it? Anyway, throughout the night, 
night, I was killing plenty of spiders, but unfortunately, I only got 25 string this time, and I realized that this was going to take forever if I didn't find a quicker way to do it. So, what's an easy and good way for myself to get some string? But honestly, there's not that many options. The most simple answer is to obviously kill some spiders. It is the easiest way to do it, but it's arguably the slowest way to do it as well. There are a couple of harder, quicker ways to do it, so let's look into those. The first option is to find myself a spawner, primarily a spider spawner, so I'd have an infinite supply of spiders to kill. The second way would be able to find myself a mine shaft, which admittedly would have some limited string, but still have a lot. Sadly, 124 days into this world, I am yet to find either. But in the grand scheme of things, I think it would be worth the risk if I could find myself. So I grabbed myself some extra wood and headed into the caves. And though I found myself plenty of mobs, just a couple, no biggie, I am yet to find myself a mine shaft. Oh, hey, diamond. Now on day 125, if I actually needed diamonds, this would be a great day. I was actually finding myself quite a few veins, and thanks to the fortune, I was collecting diamonds quite nicely. Unfortunately, I am full netherite, so it's kind of a waste of time, and well, it's not a mine shaft, which I'm looking for. I'm still searching on day 126, I was searching Lust Caves, which was quite nice, and oh hey, a mine shaft, nice. Didn't take long at all. Honestly, this was a game changer. I found so much string in here, it was amazing. Now, it did take me a little while to find this mine shaft, and I had to dig quite far away to find it as well, so unfortunately, I'm gonna only really stay here once, and it's gonna be kind of difficult to come back. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I need to get as much string whilst I'm here, so I don't have to make the very long effort of getting my way back. Anyway, after getting myself plenty of string and some diamonds, of course, I found myself a spawner. It was zombie, unfortunately. I did find myself a cave spider spawner, though, which I don't really want to fight cave spiders, but there's normally quite a lot of string around the spawner, so I'll definitely take that. And by the end of day 127, I believed I searched every last corridor in this mineshaft and got myself nearly four stacks of string, easily enough. Anyway, it is time for me to head home. I got back on day 129 and realized a mistake. A dispenser requires redstone, and I have never picked up any redstone. Guess I could do that tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a significant day. To timestamp this video for you guys, today is January 24th, 2023. And the reason that is significant is because two hours ago, Minecraft has just released its latest 1.20 snapshot. Now, they haven't made too many changes, but they have made one significant thing to this bad boy, the smithing table. What I could do is I could pop it down here, and would you look at that? Things look different. You can now add trims to your armor, which I'm sure I'm showing on screen. Now, to do that, I need to find a template. And templates are not that easy to come by, and in this world, I'm kind of limited on what I can get. So I was going to make this farm and make it all cool, but I'm really excited to get a template. Between the ones that are available, and honestly, there's not that many, I believe the Spire one is maybe the coolest, if not the Snout. But basically, we're going to put our plants on port, and we're going to go and get some Trim Neverite. That sounds awesome. So it was into the Never. I now need to find myself a new, new Bastion that hasn't been loaded before, and hope that there is a trimming inside of it. It would have been much easier if I didn't charge into the Bastion as soon as I got on this island, but man, what can you do? Now, I'm sorry to say, but I did actually lose track of time here. I don't actually know exactly when this happened, so just bear with me. Uh, basically, I found myself a Bastion, which was fantastic, uh, and I did have to deal with some high damage brutes and stuff, but uh, I was able to survive that quite nicely. Now, the chance of getting a trimming is pretty low, 4.8%, which is not massive. That's basically equivalent of one in every 20 chests. So hopefully this won't take too long. Oh, in the first chest, sweet. Don't mind if I diddly do. And it was back home by day 135. I knew because I pressed F3 as soon as I got back and was actually able to track my days. Day 136 is Doc Haven again. So trimmings are pretty cool, right? We all excited for the update now. But for the people who don't know how trimmings work, let me explain. You see, the template that I found inside the Bastion is a one use kind of thing. So basically, I can only apply one trimming to one piece of armor. After that, the trimming completely disappears. There is some good news, though. You can duplicate the trimming. It unfortunately is quite expensive, though, costing seven diamonds. So, in theory, for a full set, aka four trimmings, you will need to give yourself 21 diamonds to duplicate it three times. The good thing I got 30 when I went into the mine shafts earlier, and so I was easily able to make myself four trimmings. Now to decide what to put as my trimming. Another feature that the trimming has is that you can apply other ores. So on my Neverite, I could apply all the materials that you can see on screen, and I was sort of testing, as you can see, you have a little bit of a preview here to test what kind of trimmings that you had. I basically came down to, do I want to put diamonds on it, or do I want to put emeralds on it? But I decided that diamonds was the best way to go. I just thought it looked really cool. And honestly, I have no regrets. I think diamonds came looking out fantastic. Oh yeah, also the moss. I read the comments, even the mean ones. I can now put down one of these saplings and grow myself an azulea tree. I'm not gonna lie, I was trying to get apples, because 
because people told me I can get apples from them. Again, you can't. On day 137, I went back to the auto farm and headed back underground to get myself some redstone. I did the maths. I only need 48 dispensers with no biggie. Lucky for me, I had all the stuff ready. And just like that, the dispensers were placed. The next thing I need on day 138 is 48 buckets. So uh, rest in peace, my iron reserve. I'm definitely going to need some more later. I was actually a little bit short, so uh, thank you so much for uh, Guy and Golems. RIP, my friend, you shall be missed. Now, getting the buckets in was really, really easy for me to do. Getting these dispensers to work definitely took a minute, so uh, give me a second here. All right, this took longer than I expected to, and I don't really expect to include many of the uh, the creation or the work that I need to put into this. Let me show you how this works now. Basically, crops are going to be everywhere that you see on the dirt. And then, for example, in this situation, obviously, all the water's turned on. I can easily turn it off. Uh, like that. But for example, if I have myself some redstone down here, well, let's just pretend that these are carrots. I turn this bad boy on, it should push the redstone. Now, there is a chance it may just shoot off like here, but more than likely it will drop into this hopper system. That hopper system will lead right into this dispenser, which has automatic observers, and the observers will shoot out into this water system where I assume the water will be able to push that forward and that will lead all the way to right over here where this hopper system will feed into this chest right here. This took so much longer than I thought it was going to uh, and we're still not done. Now I've got to figure out how to feed the redstone and stuff which is not something I'm good at. You know, I feel like I'm making good progress. This should be good in the next day or two. Uh, also, I'm very grateful I don't have to stand near here because this ticking sound would get annoying fast. And another problem has just arose and I feel like I may just give up on this project. The redstone to the dispensers. There is no way for me to get the redstones to the dispensers. The only way for me to fix this is to raise every layer up by one. And that sounds miserable, but I don't really see a choice. So let's just let's just get this done. And so I basically had to start again, ripping up a bunch of the dirt. I also decided to do the redstone paths before I put the dirt back in. Might save some time. Long run. So much longer than I thought later. Day 147. What day did I start this? I want to say like day 135. Oh dear. Okay. Come on. Here we go. Uh, hmm. Okay. Uh... Well, something's gone wrong, as you can probably tell. All right, then. Moment of truth. Let's see if we can get this bad boy to work. Uh, I mean, it's sort of working. Left is good. Right is good. You know what? It's not ideal. There's definitely some mistakes happening here, but it's working. It's working great. Back. We can now actually go and uh, plant some crops. Only who knows how many days later. And finally, I was done. Only about 10 days after I started. Anyway, let's get the crops down. Also had to make another little tweak with some signs because unfortunately I made a mistake. But it was finally, finally done. Oh, so much effort. Okay, I lied. But on day 148, now, now I'm done. Let's last touch, I swear. I'm going to grab myself some water pockets just to see if I can water the crops just to make them grow a little bit quicker. And with the spare string I had, I was able to make myself some more beds. I also made myself a less turn and after giving the villagers some food it's pretty simple what i want i want to give myself mending my armor was pretty damaged so i definitely need mending and then it was just passing the time waiting for the villagers to grow up so i did the usual stuff like bamboo harvesting i mean some things never change on day 149 i'm pretty much just went AFK the entire day, I'm not gonna lie. Like I say, my armor was pretty close to breaking and I didn't really want to risk, you know, losing the armor because now it would take so much work for me to get any Neverite armor, I'm not about to risk it. I mean, two babies popped out before I even noticed, but, uh, you know, I'm making good progress. Day 150, when I noticed that the nitwit had decided to hang out with King Petro, as you do, and now I need to make myself a new diamond pickaxe. Did forget I already had two, but, you know, let's move on. I had two enchants available, and I was hoping to get myself some silk touch because it's the one enchant that I didn't have. I unfortunately failed both times. And it looks like the crops have grown quite a bit in the past couple of days. So let's test out this bad boy. It honestly wasn't bad. I did have to do a few more touches to make it perfect. But honestly, for what it was designed to do, it works pretty well. And then after replanting, I got myself a good amount of crops. This was a worthwhile investment in the long run. And it was on day 151 where, well, the villages have now grown up. So it's now for me to spend the next couple of days trying to get mending. Now I'm hoping it wouldn't take too... Oh, okay. That was quick. Now let's grab some melons and and then we traded them. And look at that. The turtle licks was finally beginning to crack. 
don't know why, don't know how, but hey, someone did mention in the comment that you need water near them so they could like path find to them. I'm not sure how correct that is, but that seemed to make a difference. If not, that it was the expanding of the cobble walls. And anyway, after doing plenty of trades, I got myself four mending books. And just like that, I had applied mending to all of my armor. And it was only the next day on day 152, I got the final mending book needed to apply to my pickaxe. I just need to repair it all. So it was back into the nether to get myself quartz mining, get myself full durability on everything. And it was only the next day on day 153 where I got everything maxed out. But quartz mining is so easy, you know. On day 154, when I returned home, I popped down some more lectins. And I also popped down some more beds. I also decided to put down some fletching tables as well. I wanted to all the emerald for a future project. And that does require a lot of sticks. So let me just turn all this bamboo into sticks and let's cut down these acacia trees as well. Day 155 and I got myself a paper trade. Meaning for the first time since about day 5 or something, I actually had a use for the sugarcane farm that I set up. It's going to be useful for f for 5 emeralds. It's not a lot. And so the farms hadn't grown enough for me to, you know, trigger that water again. So, uh, well, let's leave it for the time being. And then it came a little bit more of a waiting game whilst I was waiting for these babies to grow up. I did make the executive decision on day 156 to actually remove some of the composters because I didn't need as many farmer village anymore and I need to get myself some more fletchlings like the Pokemon. And the emerald return was just wunderbar. <laughs> let me just say that. I was also back to chopping the melons. That was just the easy thing to do. I also came up with the idea is why don't I go ahead and get some clerics in? I have plenty of rotten flesh to trade so let me get myself a cleric. Rotten flesh is useful but it was on day 157 where I came to the realization that clerics are probably going to be the most broken of them all because clerics trade glass bottles and they give you emeralds for them. And since I'm on an island that's, oh, I don't know, full of sand, that just seemed like free money. And so I grabbed all the sand I could and made a little bit of a tweak to the auto cooker, replacing the blast furnaces with normal furnaces because sadly blast furnaces don't cook sand. And we were on our way to getting all the glass bottles possible. Also, most of the crops had grown, so I finally decided to flip the switch again. I think doing this for a second time in the long run, this does make sense to do, but I feel like short term, I probably could have got more emeralds, but you know, I guess it's always better to do stuff in the long run in a 100 day series. I'm also really glad that I did make it. If I ever make it again, I know a couple of tweaks that I can make to probably improve it, but uh, I mean, that might be for a future video. On day 158, I admit it was pretty slow going, but I was very slowly building up my emeralds. I even got myself some more glass bottles. Now, there's probably some of you thinking, why do I want so many emeralds? Like, what could I possibly be planning? And the answer is really simple. I feel like the ultimate success from this 100 days is if I was able to make myself a second full beacon, except this time making it out of emeralds. It would just feel like a great achievement considering I had no emeralds at the start of the 100 days and so I'm going to grind a little bit with the trades. Just to give you an idea, I need to get myself 1,476 emeralds to make myself a full beaker. For those who don't know, that's just over 23 stacks of emeralds so I have quite a bit of ways away to go. To give you an idea, on day 159 I only had 3 stacks of emeralds so uh, yeah, definitely going to need to get myself some more. I also had the idea of seeing about getting silk touch on my axe because it would actually help with the melon cutting but sadly I got fortune free instead. Now, someone in the comments will probably tell me this, but the fortune free felt like I was getting more melons when I was chopping it. Again, someone is welcome to correct me if I'm wrong, but I, you know, feel like I was getting more. Day 160, and that is a lot of emeralds. It really was a rotation of exactly what I was trading day by day. Today was a stick day, so I traded many sticks, and to be honest with you, that's kind of what I did for the next 10 days. I'm not gonna lie. Listen, I'm sure everybody would love to watch me trade for 10 days, but I feel like I'm just gonna skip a little ahead because if not I'll be repeating myself over and over again so let's do a little bit of a time warp day 169 and oh boy have i been schmoving let me uh, let me show you right in here look at all these emeralds now if i've done the maths correctly that should be enough for a full emerald beacon well i think i've done trading forever in minecraft because that was a good four hours of my life man probably wasn't that long okay the next job is i need to go and get myself some wither skulls so back to the never i go so it was back to the never gonna go ahead and get myself some skulls. Now, the one thing that I will mention is that this time I only had looting two, whilst the first time I did it, I had looting three. So I don't know if this will take a little bit longer, but it is worth me mentioning. It was by day 171 that I received my first skull, so things were going at an okay pace. And honestly, it only got better because on day 172, I got myself my second skull. This really was gonna be quick. And that is when I jinxed it, because here we are on day 176, and I still didn't have the skull. But luckily, this day, 
day I was able to get it. It was still a good two hours past and that was disappointing to say the least. By the time I got home on day 177, I had one simple thought. I'm not gonna need bones anytime soon, that's for sure. Anyway, there is no time like the present. I grabbed myself a potion just to be on the safe side and I went to the underground yet again. Now, the last time I fought the wither, I'm pretty sure I actually had worse gear than this, so I really wasn't that worried. I did flex a little by killing it with a health potion for the second time, but honestly, just like the first time, this really wasn't too much of a hassle. I was easily able to kill him. And it was on day 178 where I knew the perfect spot to put this emerald beacon. I was going to put it underneath the villager hut. So unfortunately for me, the villager hut is an even number, not an odd number, so unfortunately I can't put it in the exact spot I wanted to, but hey, it doesn't matter. I did have one little idea though, because I traded so many emeralds, I feel like it'd be really cool if I could turn the emerald beacon light into a green light, but of course that means I'm going to need myself some green dye. Lucky for me, this time there is actually a trade to get green dye. It's a wandering trade. Oh, great. And of course, you can sell green dye to shepherds, but you can't buy it as if it would be that simple. But I'm fairly confident that if I combine blue and yellow dye, it should make green dye. So, you know, that shouldn't be an issue, right? Right? Blue dye wasn't an issue, of course. I have plenty of lapis lagugles, but unfortunately, I don't have any yellow dye. And, uh, well, how was I gonna get yellow dye? And I was thinking on day 179. Now, to my knowledge, and there's probably someone who's gonna correct me, the only way for me to get yellow dye is from, obviously, yellow flowers, which the most simple way that I could do it is, well, there is that tiny little grass island over there that uh, I purposely avoided because I feel like the challenge would make it super, super easy if I was able to just go over there straight away. What if I go over there just to get a yellow flower and don't use any of the dirt or the seeds or anything? I mean, I already have wheat seeds. I don't feel like it'd be that problematic. So I came up with a very simple solution. If I could just connect the two islands, then technically it would be one island. So I decided if I make myself a bridge to the new island, I can go ahead and use the grass island. And uh, yeah, I feel like that's an all right rule, so I got to work on a new bridge. On day 180, the design was pretty simple. Bamboo pillars with trap doors on the floor, bamboo railings as well. It did cost me all of my iron to put these lanterns in, but I mean, it's just kind of what I do. Though admittedly, the lanterns made a nice torch. I really feel like the lanterns added to the build. And then on day 181, I pretty much just bone meal. Got myself the yellow flower and nothing else, because like I said, I'm only there for the yellow flower. Anyway, let's put the blue dye and the yellow dye together and, okay, I know what people are going gonna say. I know people already know this, but this is not something you can do. I don't know why I thought it is something you could do. Yes, I am the stupidest Minecrafter you will ever see. I do stuff like this and I'm like, maybe I deserve the bullying, you know? <laughs> maybe, maybe people are right. <laughs> Well, even though I couldn't think of a simple way to get green dye, I'm still gonna change the color. So here we are making the villager hut our yellow one and the blue one from the main one. And uh, you know, it's fine. And, oh my God, there's a kitty here. Oh my God, a friend. I mean, it ain't no wolf, it ain't no park, but uh, I'll love you all the same, I promise. Speaking of doing smart things on day 182, as you can see, there is a blank screen. That is because I didn't record the first half of the day. Basically what had happened, I was looking around and realized that the turtles had not only hatched, but they had actually grown up as well and dropped some scoots. Now, now, that's fantastic. Fortunately, I don't have the footage of it. But here we have the footage of me recording, making myself the helmet. Nevertheless, we move on doing a level 30 enchantment. It is technically less armor than the Neverite helmet, but uh, look how dumb I look. I can't even see with this thing. That's hilarious. Now, another little fun fact for you that most of you probably know. You can actually trim turtle helmets. And so, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, I didn't want to get myself a bastion trim because I already did that for the Neverite armor. So, I decided, let's go back to the end and see if I can find myself an end one. And so, it was back into the end. I go. Now, there is a little bit of a problem in this case is that I searched a lot of the nearby end when I was searching for the first ship in the first 100 days, which means I do actually have to run up quite far out because no trimmings will have spawned in those first end cities. It did take me a while, but it was day 186 where I found myself a tiny end city, which had honestly not that much. Now, just like the last trimming, the first end trimming only had a 4.8% chance of it spawning, though unsurprisingly, no trimming was found in this one. However, about 200 blocks away, there was a bigger end city that had plenty more for me to search. On day 187, I was getting pretty confident searching this end city. I did have to go through shulker hell to finally get there, but it didn't take me too long to search a chest and finally get myself the trimming, which was absolutely fantastic. And by the time of day 190, I returned home. Now, to actually duplicate the trimming, I actually need myself a purple -pur block, and I didn't grab any from the end city. Lucky for me, though, I had one spare in my end chest. 
chest. I am one lucky son of a gun at times, I'll tell you that. And so I decided to duplicate it in case I wanted to get myself an end trimming more in the future. And though I can't see, I have given myself a trimmed turtle hat, which is just fantastic. Also, which is kind of funny, the turtle hat gives you 10 seconds of water breathing. And I also had respiration free on the helmet, which basically just turns me to Aquaman when I have this helmet on. Anyway, I finished the day by just clearing out all the stuff in my inventory and putting in the hut. I love this hut, man. It's so good. Day 191 came and I was actually low on food, which was a bit of a surprise. It was a very quick sort though. Thank God for the auto farm. Made myself some golden comments and that was it. Then it was pretty much back to replanting the crops. I also, for no other reason, I wanted to make it look a little nicer. I decided to make the mine entrance look a bit fancier. It is nothing fantastic, but I can think you can appreciate the upgrade. And uh, before people ask, yes, of course, I put lanterns on it. And then it was just more quality of life stuff on day 192. And I was just doing my best to make the island a little bit prettier, adding more paths to the new stuff I had built. I feel like it really made it come together, even if it is deep slate. And then I spent the rest of the day AFK. That was feeding my dog. There, there is no joke here. That, that's my dog. And on day 193, well, I had one last little thing I wanted to do, and, and that was to redo the map that I made in the first 100 days. I didn't actually have any plans to build anything new, so this seemed like the perfect time to do it. I am unfortunately out of iron, though, so I'm sorry, Iron Golem. I just need to... Wait, don't kill me. I'm killing you! And four maps later, I have an idea. Let's make some hanging signs. I honestly think it looks pretty good. I also remade the board on the other side, so uh, now I just need some leather for some iron frames, and I'm good to go. Hey, guys, on day 193, I just want to give you a bit of an insider tip. Did you guys know that Hoglins drop leather? Did you guys, are you guys aware? I mean, you made me painfully aware, but are you guys aware? Because I, guys, Hoglins drop leather. Anyway, I got four by the day. And it was on day 195 where I got myself the four item frame. The maps were in and you could definitely see the differences between the first 100 days and the second 100 days. Also, I was looking at the corners and I was thinking, do I want to fill out the maps to like make it look good? You know, so they're not like the corners are all cut off. But uh, I just that it's probably better this way just to show that i've never really left the island other than the stronghold i own i never went to those corners like in the overworld i did travel which i feel like is a good add to the world the last things for me to do was firstly king pedro our king needed a home so i brought him inside my house like i guess we can share if anything and the nitwit that was there as well i mean fine i guess i could return him home to his village of friends and then it was on to a nap well ladies and gentlemen it is day 196 and uh i've pretty much done everything that I've wanted to do on this island. So how about we do a nice little last minute island tour. Uh, first things first, King Pedro has decided to come upstairs. Of course he has. We now have three kitties, even though all of them are exactly the same. Uh, I don't have names for them, so maybe get some names for you guys. The, the Neverite Helmet, maybe I should just, uh, probably not the smartest thing I'll ever do, but not like I need the armor. But yeah, my full Neverite armor looks pretty good. You know, I haven't touched the house in this 100 days, but you know what? I kind of still like it. I feel like the, maybe I could make the top side of it look better, like if I had these bamboos and raise them all to the top, but for the build that's kept me alive, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of it. Obviously, we have the 100 days map over here. This is pretty much everything that I did. Um, I had the house, the auto cooker. The, oh, that was the enchant setup. There's the bamboo and there's the farms. If we go over to this one, well, there's the house. You've got um, quite a lot more, as you can see. Obviously, the villager hut. You've got the axolotl home and the storage hut. There's the alcacia trees. There's the cobblestone thing that I've added to the mine. Obviously, there's the auto farmer thing, which I'm still kind of impressed with that, you know, that works so well. There's the bridge to the grass island, which I'd like to very clarify before you start commenting it. I did not take anything other than the yellow flower. Don't comment it. I don't want to see it. Obviously, the villager hut with yellow instead of green, which is very annoying, but we'll move on. I honestly like the villager hut build. It's really, really basic, but one thing I've always struggled with is roofs, and I feel like this roof has really come together. I mean, again, I'm not a pro builder, so I'm not going to like brag about how great it is, but for what it is, I like it. It's another very simple bridge that takes me over to the grass island. I feel like maybe... If I carry on this series, I could do something with this grass island. I don't know what it would be. You know, this grass island is free terrain now that I'm here. And technically speaking, I've not left the island because they're now attached. And the big farm really works well. It actually works better than I... Uh, I forgot to fix this. Uh, it actually works better than I... You know, originally thought it was going to. It looks fantastic and the stuff in there comes through really quickly and I'm not going to trigger it again because well, I'm not going to go pick it all up. The entrance to the cave is pretty much just it's just a staircase down. There's nothing really special about it. 
but it's just, um, you know, it, it makes the island look nicer with all the paths and everything. Obviously, you got the bamboo setup, which I haven't touched that in 10 days because I've not needed to. Here's our axolotl. He has been stuck in this corridor for who knows how long, but, uh, well, at least he's got his own home. The storage hut, which I think is probably the best build on the server. I still have, like, a bunch of chests that for space and stuff, which I probably could fill the chest. And obviously, the alcacia trees that I got from the wandering trader and the big step dance area. But, um, 196 days in, I have to remember. Oh, of course, the beacons as well. And I really feel like I've done quite a lot here. I really feel like I've done, I've done all right, all things considered. The reason I'm having sort of a little tour around my island, even though we've got four days left, obviously, like I said, well, not much to do, is because I don't really get long running series in my 100 days videos. I've made it to 200 days, only a handful of times, and I've made it to 300 days from the top of my memory twice, which is in the Skyblock world when I was still like getting my feet and learning how to edit, and in um, Trios, the series that did really, really well. As I am finishing recording, this video is currently on 270k, the 100 days, so I'm hoping it's still growing by the time I get this up. But if you guys want me to do 300 days, uh, I'd, I'd like the video, get it to like between 3 and 5k. If, if there is Express Show, I would love to carry on this world because I feel like there's still quite a bit I could do to it. But I feel like I've done. All right, all things considered. And to be fair, if this is the last time I stand on this island, I feel like I've done quite a bit uh, of work to it. I feel like, you know, what started off as a sandy dune with nothing on it, and, you know, me and one piece of bamboo have made all of this. And you can argue whether I should have had the bamboo in the first place or if I should have just used the sunken ship and the moss, which I'm aware that I could do that now. But one piece of bamboo has made all of this possible. I feel like that's a pretty big accomplishment. But yeah, I just want to let you know that I appreciate every single one of you for watching this series. It's been an honor to make it, and it's been an honor to start 2023 on such a such a high, such a high. So obviously I will feel the obligation of getting to day 200, and then we'll do a little bit of a dance. You know what it is. Day 200. And there's only one thing for me to do. That's a break step! Woo! So we began on day 201 with just like the first 100 and 200 days. I decided to do a bit of live commentary whilst I take a quick look around the island. But as you can see by the clip in my editor, there is no audio, meaning that I must have accidentally muted my mic whilst I did this clip. Whatever I was talking about, it did look super important as you could probably tell, but whatever it is, you don't know. Neither will I. But I do know how it ended with a little bit of a catch up with Dr. Haven. Back at it again with the white fans. Dr. Haven is back later. Ladies and gentlemen, so let's talk. 1.20 has been coming out thick and fast, and the last update when I played on 200 days was the trimming update. They made it so every kind of armor except leather you could add a cool trim to to make the armor look better. Since then, a lot has changed to 1.20, which now includes you can now get trimmings on leather armor. That's not really important to this video, however, there is three new additions to 1.20 that is worth talking about. The first edition is the new mob, the Sniffer. Apparently, you can only get the Sniffer fryer eggs, which you can find in suspicious stand, which is also a new feature. So where do you get suspicious sand? Simple. You can find them in desert temples, and you can also find them in desert wells, which, uh, oh, right, I'm stuck in an island, so never mind about that one. And the other addition that they added was the cherry blossom tree, but it Again, right, the, the island that I'm on. It's just hoping that a wandering trader uh -huh. can trade them for me. So, yeah. Unfortunately, the 1.20 updates, there's nothing I can really do to add to the experience. But that doesn't mean we still can't have a little bit of fun. It was day 202 that I decided that I want to set myself up a mob spawner. To be 100% honest, I decided to hold off against this because I didn't know if it would be very successful. So, I decided to set up a nice little simple cobble one. I did get a little bit distracted admittedly. I was looking around the island again, reminding myself what was going on. Some good stuff so far. I also did a tiny little little bit of cleanup, you know, moving some chests to the gunk to the storage hub, name, simple stuff really. It was day 203 when I got back to it. I did run out of cobble, so I decided to set up a little dig area to dig some out. Did all right, I'd say. And then I began the construction. Pretty much it was that the entire day. By the end of the day, I got myself the four water sources in, so progress was definitely being made. And much more progress on day 204. I had now put the floors and the walls in, and yet again, I am out of cobble. At least I can use the slabs for the roof, and I'm out of slaps. Cool. Well, back to the couple grinding guy I go. On day 205, and listen, if you watch any of my Skyblock videos, you know that I know I know how to do this. And say that three times fast. So after getting the final spots in in the shoot, I was done. Yeah, I was just really hoping that I was able to get this to work. Day 206 and Dr. Haven is back. So, what is the ultimate goal for this 300 day video? That's simple. I want to see about getting a full Neverite set of armor with a trimming of every possible trimming I can get on this island. It's a big task, but I was up for it. Unfortunately, because this 
island, not all of them are attainable. So let's have a look what we can and can't do. There are 11 trimmings out there. Because of the island, however, the pillager trimming, the jungle temple trimming, the woodland mansion trimming are completely unobtainable. Ocean monuments and shipwrecks in theory are obtainable, but that does require me to leave the island, even if I am just staying in the water. And so I'm making the decision to say that I can't leave the island for that because that feels a little bit against the rules. And so I'm going to say that they are unobtainable as well. For those who are counting, that means six of the 11 trimmings are completely unobtainable. So let's look at the other five. I already have the bastion trimming and I already have one of the end city trimming. So they're all good to go. It's entirely possible for me to get a never fortress trimming and an ancient city trimming. It just requires me to search around to find a new bastion and an ancient city, which I haven't found thus far. The stronghold one is a bit more complicated. If you remember what I said in the first 100 days, I said I didn't want to go to a second stronghold for an apple because I thought it broke the rules of me running over the land to find myself a second stronghold. I still stand by that. I don't want to run to a second stronghold. However, this was in the mindset that I run to the stronghold. There is no rule against me digging to the stronghold. And so I did what any sane man would do. I ran back to the first stronghold, took a note of the quartz. I mean, you want to notice how the quartz are pretty much identical, which I thought was pretty cool. And then I ran back to the overworld and noted the coordinates of my island. Basically, the plan was to find a second stronghold by digging to it. Since the first stronghold was to the northeast, if I dig southwest, I should be able to find myself a new stronghold. It's a crazy plan, but I'm all for it. So I started grabbing myself necessary tools, stuff that I needed, and it was back underground I'd go on day 207. The plan was to run as far as I can through the caves, going southwest of course, and then to throw an eye. And after running through the caves as far as I can go, I threw an eye, and would you look at that, it started going west. It is now time for me to dig very far. As I was digging on day 208 i just want to point something out this is the corners of the stronghold and here are my coordinates so it's safe to say that i had plenty of digging to do in fact one and a half hours passed on day 212 and well oh my god <coughs> oh my god thank you thank you oh thank you all right um, chests. And so I began the search. And after searching a couple of chests, I'm not gonna lie, I got nervous. Very much so. But after finding myself the library. Oh. Freedom. That's a really good book. Oh, two. Cool. And now I just gotta run back. It was definitely gonna take a minute if I did, though. So why don't, why don't I just run through the nether? And so I find myself a lava pool and... Huh, hot stuff. I can't believe it took me that long to get that achievement. But there we are. Anyway, it was into the nether. It literally saved so much time. Here we are on day 213. And literally after a minute or so, I found myself the main portal. I was easily able to make the four templates needed. But I also remembered that I need a purple block to duplicate the end city trimmings, of which I have zero in. And so at some point, I'm gonna have to return to the end for purple blocks. Yeah, I know. Well, for now, let's see about getting some of the other trimmings out of the way. Let's go and find ourselves a never fortress. Day 214, and honestly, it didn't take me that long at all. At first, I got myself a wither skull, which was pretty nice. And if we're going to talk about YouTube look for a second, let's open our first chest and... Oh, there isn't one in here. That wasn't part of the script. It's all right, though. This chest that was protected by two wither skeletons did have one. YouTube look finally coming back. And by the time I got back on day 215 and... Hey, there's a wandering trader there. Oh my god. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I was just complaining about my YouTuber look. The new cherry tree sapling is here. And I know the perfect spot to put it. Right on the grass island. Aren't they pretty? Well, let's chop them up. Also, a little bit of a side note. Now, this cherry tree blossom has just been introduced in this version of Minecraft. These things drop so many saplings. It is crazy. Day 216, I made myself four smithing templates. We are good to go. Now, I didn't want to make a big deal about it. But I also did get a spruce sapling too when I got the cherry tree blossom. I unfortunately didn't really have anywhere I wanted to put it and so I decided why not I just make a new island and well put it there. After looking for a new spot to put my island I saw a drowned with a trident. Now I didn't get the trident which you know I didn't that doesn't really bother me that much but I don't know how but look at this new animation that drowns have. Now I don't have any texture pack on but that looks really cool. I think this is a new thing for 1.20 which is kind of cool. I decided to put it next to the bridge unfortunately it does require me to do a little bit of adjustment to fix the bridge and so I need a little bit 
bit of bamboo, which of course reminded me that there was something else I wanted to do. I want to make myself an automatic bamboo farm. So scrapping the plan for the island on day 217, the plan was to make a simple farm for the bamboo. I set up a rail underneath the sand to pick up the bamboo and well, you know the rest. Most of the day was just setting up the machine as well as moving the bamboo over to the new location. And on day 218, well, there was a little bit of pistons here, a little bit of observers over there and a tiny bit of bamboo in the middle and voila, it is small and I could probably make it much bigger later. But for right now, it does exactly what I needed to do. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I know why I made this thing. I need to get a bunch of bamboo to finish the bridge. And so after making a small adjustment, I bridged over. Had to wait to day 219 to complete it, but there you go. It's honestly not too bad. And would you look at that island over there? I will officially dub it Cherry Blossom Island. It is so pretty. Speaking of pretty islands, I wanted to turn the Spruce Tree Island into, well, an island. At the moment, it's really nothing. And so I quickly grabbed some grass. I also grabbed some dirt and some sands, and I got to work. I'm going to be honest with you. I had no idea what I was doing here. It was just a classic winged approach, the usual. Took all of day 220, but I, oh, you know what? I like it. I think it's an island. It looks pretty good. Day 221 was pretty much just adding the final touches. I added a nice little waterfall to it. I got some grass. You know what? Yeah, I think it looks really good. Unfortunately, I can't call it Spruce Tree Island without, you know, spruce trees, and so I grabbed some of those too. We'll ignore the fact that the island is hollow. Nobody talk about that. But I'm going to be honest with you. I really like it. I think it's looking good. And now for a surprising problem. I had no food. But lucky for me, I had plenty of carrots still in my automatic farm. Unfortunately for me, I had no gold left over, and so my golden carrot run was officially over. Very sad, I know. Anyway, with these little tasks done, it is time we do the biggest plan of all. Take it away, Doctor. I swear to God, Doctor Haven needs a theme song. I mean, I mean, I need a theme song. <laughs> let's move on. So, let's talk Neverite. The big goal, as I mentioned, is I want to get a full Neverite armor set up with every kind of trimming I possibly can. But what exactly do I need to pull that off? What, how much materials and stuff will I need? Well, first, let's look at Neverite. Knowing that four pieces of ancient debris makes one Neverite ingot, and four ingots of Neverite make a full set of armor, it just requires me to get 16 pieces of Neverite ingots. I don't need the fifth trimming because I've already done that, but I do need four full trimmings, which means I need 16 Neverite ingots, which is 64 pieces of Neverite scraps. I also need 64 gold, but honestly, that's not going to be that important. What is important, however, is the diamonds that I need. I am going to need a full suit of diamond armor for each Neverite setup. Now, of course, that means I need four full setups of diamond armor. For those who don't know, you need 24 diamonds for a full set of diamond armor. So that's 96 diamonds that I need for that. I do already have one piece of leggings, one chest plate, and one boot, so we could take a couple off that, which is now 77 diamonds I need for the armor. However, we are not done. Because if you don't know, if you want to duplicate a trimming, you need seven diamonds to do that, and I need to duplicate a lot of trimmings. And considering I only have two out of the five trimmings, fully done, I need to do the other three times each. Seven times three is 21. So that is 63 diamonds for all trimmings. Adding that 63 to the 77 diamonds that I already need, and I need 140 diamonds for all of the trimmings and the diamond armor. However, we ain't even close to done because now we need to talk about upgrading the diamond armor to Neverite armor because you now need a Neverite upgrader to do that. And of course, you will need to duplicate that as well, which you guessed it, requires seven diamonds diamonds per trimming upgrade. Considering I need to do that for four full sets of diamond armor, that's 16 Neverite upgrades that I am going to need to pull this off, which means I'm going to need to duplicate the Neverite upgrade 15 times. So that means I need an extra 105 diamonds for that. Adding that onto the original number, that is 245 diamonds in total. For those who want to do the maths, that is three stacks and 62 diamonds. That's just for all of it. But actually, I'm not done because what I'm going to want to do is get one more trimming of each of them just in case I want them for the future. Which means I need to duplicate the four trimmings one more time. Four times seven is 28. Which means the total number of diamonds adding on to the 245 that I originally needed is 243 diamonds. Or four stacks and 17 diamonds. Are there any questions? Did you follow along? It will be on the final exam. I need a lot of diamonds. There is some good news though. I already have 41 diamonds on me, so that 273 now goes down to 232. Oh boy, I need a drink after that one. And so on all the twos, I went back underground and I was going to start strip mining. This was pretty much going to be my life for a while. About an hour into digging on day 225 and well, deep dark. Interesting. 
Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Now I'm just going to find me uh, one of those trimming boys. Look carefully though. I'm going to have to go through to go back. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't very careful here. I was running around spawning wardens. At least my luck was with me because after searching my first chest, I have found the ancient city trimming. And then I stupidly opened more. Okay. I think I got away. My god. That was terrifying. And I got the trimming. Let's go. Also, seven diamonds. Technically. So, yeah, good stuff. And so, once I left the ancient city, it was pretty much then on to Strip Mine City. Basically, between day 226, for a very long time, I was mining all the diamonds I could. Never been so grateful for fortune, but here we are. So... I have nearly been strip mining for about three hours, just under. It's been about two and a half or so. Um, I am very grateful that uh, YouTube exists or I'll be bored out of my mind. That being said, let's, let me show you where I am. Um, I'm in the in the last stretch. Uh, if I've done my maths correctly, because obviously you'd knock the seven from the thing, I need four stacks and ten diamonds, which means I'm only 14 diamonds short from completing this task, which is relieving to say the least. I, I think I'll be done in the next diamond vein. I have found another Asian city. Great. Probably be done by the next diamond vein, I'm hoping. So we shall see. Here's hoping that I find that diamond vein soon. You know what? I'm going to find it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, watch Haven and just get his YouTube look. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it's right here. I am wrong. But it's actually right here. It was a good try. Anyway, let's this mine. By the time we was done, it was day 234, where, uh, well, 64, 64, 64, 64, 27, and 7. That works out to 290 diamonds, which is uh, more than enough for everything I wanted to do. So now that we're done, uh, I should go back. I do want to quickly check one thing. I don't want to accidentally leave this without the thing that I need. It's this one. Oh, it's just deep sleep. And I returned on day 235. I was back. And boy, was I happy to not have to mine any more diamonds. And now I've got to cook myself some food. And that's when I realized that the uh, golden apple that I found in the ancient city wasn't just a golden apple. It was an enchanted golden apple, which I thought was pretty cool. And just like that, I have now gotten all of the trimmings. All three of them maxed out, which only leaves the end one. As a reminder, I need to get the purple -pur block, which I have not. And there is no time like the present, so I can't believe I returned to the end to get a single purple -pur block. Block, block, okay, we move on. I got into the outer end by day 236. I'm not gonna lie, it was just a bit of a trek until I found myself an end city. And it didn't take me too long at all to find myself the end city. It was day 237, and I got myself a stack of purple blocks. Okay, goodbye. And on day 238, would you look at that? We had gotten ourselves all the trimmings. And now we just need to find ourselves a bastion to get the upgrade packs for the Neverite, and we will be good to go in no time. But for now, I definitely need a break from doing that. So I decided to have a quick look around in my islands. I still have to say it. Blossom Island looks really good. I also had a look on day 239 of the bamboo and uh, would you look at that? That's not too shabby at all. Now I should definitely collect some cherry wood. However, because there were so many trees on here, when I tell you this took a while, well, this took a while. There is so much wood. So much wood. And by the time I was done, would you look at that? Look how many logs I got. Jesus, there was a lot here. And why did I collect this wood? Well, on day 240, I wanted to set myself up a build to show off my Neverite armor in the near future. Now, I've never worked with this wood palette before, would you believe? I mean, it is a brand new wood, so I was honestly just messing around for a while, just deciding what does and doesn't look good. By day 241, I had the inside completed. I'm gonna be honest with you, I quite liked it. I thought it looked pretty good. And then it was onto the walls, and I'll be honest with you, the walls was a real bit of a hassle. It took me forever to get the walls looking how I like them, have like looking good, and I'm to be honest with you, I don't even think it looked fantastic by the end of it. And on day 242, it was onto the roof. Now, luckily for me, most of the roofs on this island have a similar-ish build on the roof, so it wasn't too hard to just copy that style. And we are donezo. Just the final touch. Let's put some cherry leaves in the roof and add the petals falling. Really think it added to the build. Just gotta put me in some lanterns. I mean, it's not a hate. We've got over this. It's not a haven build if I don't put in lanterns. On day 243, I noticed that the bamboo farm, Acacia, was having pieces fall out or fall 
fall on the wall so it wasn't catching it all. And so I decided to put some more wooden planks on top of it to make it fall out. I really want to make this look better in the near future, but for right now, this is all it really needs to be. And then for no other reason than I just wanted to, I decided that I wanted to make my bow power five. Did break my anvil though. RIP, that was the first anvil and only anvil that's been made on this world. I didn't even have enough iron to replace it, which definitely sucks, which uh, did give me an idea though that why haven't I made an iron farm yet? I should definitely do that. Do I have a name tag though? Would I oh, I do have a name tag. All right, let's do this. It was day 244 where I was following a simple YouTube tutorial on how to do this. I started gathering the blocks needed and putting them in the shulker. I was done except for beds where uh, only one wool, hmm? Well, luckily for me, I knew the entire time that shepherds actually traded beds, and I didn't totally miss that in the last video, so let's uh, let's not point that out and poke fun at Haywin, that'd be sad. Just need to get some good trades where I'm... Shears, huh? Well, I guess I'm in need of shears and... They trade wool? Since when I looked at the screenshot, they did not trade wool in the last 100 days. I don't know what you can say. You know what? It doesn't matter, though. I was able to trade myself a bunch of beds, and it is time to work on the iron farm. Day 245, and even with the bamboo increase, I have no idea how a bamboo managed to get all the way up there, and so I started making it even higher. Let's start building this. And to be honest with you, with the iron farm, it was pretty much just a case of following the tutorial, so this was literally kind of boring. Let's skip ahead. And two days later, this is what we have got. Now, as far as I'm aware, I've already seen it work, so I'm hoping. I think you can already see it working. Is that the Iron Golem? It is. But this has been running for literally five minutes. Look at that. Look at that bad boy. This is this is great. And uh, yeah, I can now just leave that to basically generate myself some iron. Never have to go iron caving again, which is fantastic. So I'm going to be 100% honest with you, a lovely viewer at home. Uh, I've sort of just been like delaying because the next two tasks, whether it be to search for Bastions or whether it be to search for Neverite, are both going to be extremely long tasks. So I just keep doing little tasks to sort of distract myself like that, which for the record, I don't think I've seen it work once. Also, I really don't. Oh, actually, there is a single mob in there. Unfortunately, this is not working how I would like it to, which is a, which is a darn shame. But I mean, I kind of expected it to not work. Built this, which at the moment kind of looks terrible. But to be fair, it's working like a charm. This thing is shooting at bamboo. But I think I've delayed it long enough. I made myself four full sets of diamond armor. And uh, well, once I have this set with it as well, that will fill out the five armor stands in the pink house of loveliness. But yeah, soon enough, I will have my five armor sets. Um, th I mean, there's, uh, quite frankly, there's no way for me to, to go about it other than to just do it. So... I have one idea. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but it'll do. Oh, you can give me patents? I'll buy, I'll buy some patents. Not too shabby. I have a lot of uh, a lot of wool, so bed bombing in the nether will be good. One thing worth noting, and I will definitely note it, is that in the nether chest, I do have three netherite scraps. So that means I only need 61. I am going to go into the nether and get 61 pieces of ancient debris. On day 248, I spent the next two days bed bombing. And well, listen, I have always been an advocate that mining has been better than bed bombing, but I decided to try bed bombing as a change. Um, you'd think that it would go well for me. You think. Like, I'm literally halfway done with beds. I haven't got a single piece of the... Uh, that was wrong. So, <laughs> this is my last bed. Moment of truth. Yep, nothing. So, after all of that bed bombs... Probably about maybe 50 beds. I did not get a single piece of Asian debris. That was a complete and utter waste of time. I cannot believe I didn't get a single piece. Well, I'm just gonna go back to the classic way. Of course, of course. 30 seconds into mining, like naturally. And of course, I find some Asian debris. I mean, it's. It work. Just whatever. You know what? Whatever. <laughs> now, usually when I go Neverite mining, I only need 24 pieces of ancient debris to get it. That's enough for six ingots. That's all I need. However, in this case, I need 61 pieces, which is nearly triple the amount. So this was definitely going to take a minute. Now, earlier in this series, it took me nine Minecraft days to get 24 pieces of ancient debris. So when I tell you that in 13 days, I got 61, that honestly felt like a massive win. I was finding ancient debris like crazy. And by day 263, I got myself back. And even after all this work, I still am not done. That's crazy. It was great to at least see the Neverite cook. And just like that, I have obtained 16 pieces of Neverite. Now, this is 1.19. We'd be done here. We can make all the armor and that. There you go. But uh, no, we're not. Now, we're going to find ourselves a new, new bastion. So on day 264, mamma mia, here we go again. It's good musical. So I need to find myself a new bastion. As I say, the problem 
problem is I've searched quite a lot around me. So, uh, yeah, i got to head out quite far. So, we have ventured far. It's uh, day 266, so I've been going for a good 40 minutes. Uh, my coordinates are, I'm about to reach about a thousand, over a thousand blocks away from my main portal. So this is definitely new terrain area. Uh, I'm just going to keep going until I find Sebastian. I have nothing else to do in here, really. I thought about it as well, and maybe I'll do this next. But if I could get myself Elytra and a bunch of fireworks, this would be so much easier to travel. Now, I already have an Elytra, and getting like mending and stuff on it wouldn't be too bad. But getting a bunch of fireworks to do it, it would be kind of a pain i don't really have an easy access to gunpowder and i ain't about to build a gunpowder farm because the last time i did that it worked out terribly i probably have some gunpowder left over from my days over here but besides the point we have to run around for probably a while looking for this bastion so uh yeah get comfy people i could be in here for a while still going on day 267 this is uh definitely gonna take a minute oh now from what I know, the Neverite upgrade has a chance of spawning in any bastion, but it has a 100% chance of spawning in a treasure bastion. What is a treasure bastion? I have no idea. So I'm hoping this is one of them. But I guess we'll have a look around and see what we could find. Well, I'm pretty sure that's the last chest in here and uh, there is no Never upgrade. So oh, i will have to keep going. Yes, 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 okay. Oh, thank the Lord himself. Oh, oh, silk touch. Nice. Oh, it's over. Thank God it's over. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. I just got it. I just got it. You are not killing me now. Okay. Ooh, that was only slightly scary. What day are we on? 279. We have traveled over 3,000 blocks to get to this point, but uh, here we are. I don't think this was the way I came or whatever. So I'm pretty sure I set off the equivalent of 15 Minecraft days ago. And obviously you can't sleep in the nether. So that means that's what, 20 times 15? Been about four hours, I would say, since since I began this crazy venture. Probably longer now that I think about it. But the point is, we're done. And we can finally head back home, which is this way. Like I say, the other problem is, though, is that I'm very far out. So you'll have to give me a minute. I'm so close. Oh, portal. You have no idea how happy I am right now. It took so long. It has been exactly 20 Minecraft days. But we are home. We are home. Oh, it's been forever since I've seen these luscious lands. And we got it. The Neverite upgrade template. This is going to be a good minute. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. So I believe it's just... Is it with Neverack? No, this is the wrong way. It is. There we go. 20. I have 20. Oh my god. I cannot believe I'm finally doing this. Oh man, here we go then. So, what do I want to... So, you... You... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen legendary. All right then, we're done with you. I've also decided I'm gonna make each one of them like their own color. So we'll start with the eye, and we're gonna make you purple, I guess. Helmet, chest plate, leggings, boots. One done. S uh, spire. Uh, we'll make you gold. Helmet, chest plate, leggings. Perfect. Ward, we'll use emeralds. Helmet, chest plate, leggings, boots, and then rib, we have redstone for helmet, chest plate, leggings, and boots. There we go. There's only one other quick thing I want to do. Now, I'm never going to actually use this armor in the in the grand scheme of things, but anything that doesn't have a level on it, I just want to quickly get an enchant just for the effect. And it took so very long. So very... You have no idea how long it took. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we... You know what? I'll even, I'll even throw in my armor as well, just so I could show it all in one go. And would you look at that? Would you look at that? This is my life work. This is it. Ladies and gentlemen, I kind of feel like I've done alright here. I mean, you guys are welcome to disagree with me. I might 
probably change these signs to make them look a little bit better. But right now, I think I've done all right. I think that this is pretty good. I'm also definitely going to change it. I don't like the way this looks, so let me quickly go ahead and fix that. On day 284, I replaced all the signs with hanging signs. It did take me a second because of formatting, but you know, we got there in the end. Perfect. 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 You know what, what would be cool, and I don't think I would be able to do it, is if I could change the color of the signs, like writing, so I have like yellow for this one or red for actually i think i would be able to i'm gonna go see if i could do that oh my god okay uh second Ugh. and so i grabbed myself some red dye and some yellow dye blue dye wasn't an issue either and lime dye wasn't an issue either you see i am fully aware you can cook this to get lime dye i was fully aware last time i didn't want lime i wanted green i still appreciate you guys all pointing it out in the comments though and purple was really easy as well and would you look at that also just a quick check on the iron farm things were going really really good and quickly going back to the comments that you all put earlier a lot of people told me that with the beacons if i put yellow glass on top of blue glass it would make green and and uh, you, you call that green, guys? Really? I mean, I tried it the other way around. It didn't work. Uh, I, think you might, I think you guys are wrong on this one, unless I'm making a mistake. But uh, yeah, it's definitely not green. I head back underground on day 286. Of course I needed dirt. I mean, why else would I head underground? I wanted to make a new new island. And lucky for me, there was a bounty of dirt down here. So uh, not going to struggle for this one whatsoever. Day 287, I had a nice little square in. Added some fence posts and some hills. And now I just got to make it look, well, islandy. And it's not perfect. In fact, it's probably the worst of the islands that I have. But this is what I got. I made this little bridge over there. And uh, yeah, it's just a, it should be a nice little place for the chickens to hang out. You know how it is. Uh, well, it's still a beach biome. Uh, speaking of, let me, let me go grab my chicken friends. And just like that, our chicken army begins. I need to give King Petro a throne. I'll be right back. This is a throne for a king. There you go. The world's smallest throne. And the only person who's not on the throne is the king. So, uh, yeah. Are we all freshly done with uh, Chicken Island? Uh, I feel like uh, maybe there's some more I can add to in the future. But as far as we're, the chickens should be able to get out of that. But yeah, I think that's probably going to be the last build on the on the server for, for this video. So I guess I'm gonna go back to a uh, map building to get another layout of the land and build my 300 days map. Day 291 and I did just that, getting myself four maps. I made a 300 map board, but this time I had a cherry wood. I fancied a change, I don't know. Before I did lock them in though, I knew I needed to get some paths down. Almost forgot to do that one, not gonna lie. So it was back to deep slating and putting them down. On day 292, I did have one cool idea. If I can get myself some banners, I can put the names of the locations on the map and i feel like that'd be a really cool add to the world took me until the next day to complete it and now i was done and then on day 294 i didn't want the banners just sitting around the island so i decided to take them all down don't worry though they will stay on the map and with that we were done well ladies and gentlemen i think we've done it all 294 Fine. This is the day that we do our final island tour. And I mean final because I didn't expect to get to 300. No way in the world I'm getting to 400. Let's let's do a little bit of a tour, why don't we? Let's start on this side of the island first. We'll work our way over here and then move to the left. Obviously the Neverport, don't look at that. But this, this actual building, I'll give you a little bit of a fun fact. I was actually trying to make it look a little bit like a helmet. Um, obviously I don't think you really pulled off that well, but there, what can you do? My five grey armor sets, the eye trim with, uh, amethyst, the war trim with emeralds, the snout trim, which is the trim that I have been using with diamonds on, the rib trim with the redstone, and the spire trim with the gold. I love this building. The little petal effects from the roof really help to it. It's really simple. It's a really simple build, but, uh, you know, to have it be the build that really shows off, you know, everything that i've pretty much worked on this has been half of my work has been this one building and everything inside of it i, I love it pig step dance don't worry we'll come back the old crazy trees i don't even think i touched this time obviously we still got the axolotls and the storage hut the enchanter all that's kind of the same uh, but the, these two things are the two new ones a lot of what i've done this 100 days is i basically uh, automated everything i i mean i filled it up with bamboo that's how good this has been and just a reminder it only goes too high i mean i can't even look into any more because it's that high this thing great tutorial shout out to the person who made it um plenty of, like the iron has been streaming in it's been streaming in even when i've not been looking at it it was a really simple design i'll have to remember that design for future builds and stuff this is the big disappointment of the hundred days is the the mob grinder just 
didn't really work. I'm going to be honest with you, when I built it, I wasn't 100% confident it was going to work. The idea was if I build it over the ocean, maybe it would help a bit. Mob grinders really only work in worlds that are incredibly limited on spawns, and this world has an entire will to spawn in, even if I am just on this small island. I said at the end of the 200 days that I really wanted to add more to this house to make it look better, but I just never did. I, I don't mind, it's fine. So this is where we started on day 100 with uh, the, the farms there, and literally, what, one, two builds. There's an auto cooker, the pig step area and the farms we, we we built up quite a bit you know improving the farms i mean even the, the melons added a couple more builds like the villager hood and the storage hut even made a bridge to this farm and you know still stuff's there but if we look at it now oh my there's just so much there's so much on here you know we've added we changed the bamboo farm the iron farms there we put the ort we put the <laughs> i literally named it the broken mob grinder because it is we have King Pedro's Island, the Spruce Island, and the Cherry Tree Island. Um, there's just so much on this island now that I've done. This is the most amount of work I think I've put into a series. Obviously, we can't, you know, pass up the, the thing without at least getting hi to our king. Where is our king? There he is, King Pedro. Oh, hail. Uh, this is the stupidest. I can't believe it. Oh, uh, Spruce Tree Island is just a nice little island that I feel like adds to it. I was thinking about doing like similar to what I did for Cherry Tree Island by having a bunch of spruce trees, but honestly, I just like it if it's just limited. And then, of course, Cherry Tree Island, which... Let me just say, ooh, enemy. let me just say, I, I I kind of blasted through this 100 days. I've done a lot of it over the past week. These cherry trees, obviously, I imagine they'll get changed because the amount of saplings that drop from them is crazy, but I love the cherry trees so much. I think they're so cool. We're done. That's it. That's 300 days in, you know, very soon time. Honestly, I'm just going to kill the time until we get there. Like, compared to where this island started with, look how much we have done. Again, I don't think I'll get to 400 days. This series has been fantastic, though, and I'm really grateful to, um, you know, get to Survival Island out there. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you have watched 100, 200, or if this is your first 300, if you're somehow still at the end of this video, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. It has been a privilege and an honor to start 2023 on this island and just to have everything work so well it's it's been fantastic a fantastic start to the year but yeah i mean there's there's not really much else to say there, there really really isn't I, i'm sort of back in the same spot as i was at the end of 200 where um you know <laughs> I, I i've done everything i wanted to do a couple days early and it was a bit of a grind at times getting the never right and the trimmings and everything but i i, I gotta admit this i've loved this series it's been my favorite long-term series out of every 100 days um and who knows who knows again I'll ask again, because I did last time. If you get this video to about 5k likes, just like you did the last one, I'll do 400 days. I'll do 400. And then, we'll do 500. And if we get to 500, I'll make you this deal. If you get, if, if we get to 5k likes and we get to 400. And then let's say we get to 5k likes and we get to 500. After 500, I'll do 1,000. I don't think that will happen. Prove me wrong, people. This small island that looks like India could potentially have 1,000 days survived on it. I don't think I'll get there, but if I do, I'm sure we can find some stuff to do. All right then, I guess it's time for us to, uh, wait look. Oh my god, there's a Siamese cat in there. There's another cat. I should get some fish. I'm sure I've got some. Oh, there you go. should <laughs> eat the perfect spot as well. Let's go. Guess we'll, uh, wait to 300. And wait for it. Wait for it. Day 300. We did it, boys! And, and girls, and those who, you know... Don't really have a prep. You, you know who you are, you non-binary SOBs. And, uh, well, I mean, I ended 100 days like this. I ended 200 days like this. So you know for a fact, I'm ending 300 days like this. We back, baby! Welcome to Survival Island 400 <laughs> Days. Now, let me start by saying 300 days blew me away. Thank you for the support of that episode. I just realized I should get my armor. Now, I do have quite a few plants that I want to do in this particular video. Uh, some big projects that include... You know, I'll, I'll let somebody special... I'll, I'll let somebody special take over that when the time comes. However, there's one thing I want to quickly mention to you. First of all, thank you for watching. That's really cool of you. And second of all, if you missed the ending to 300 days, so the last video I did in this world, where I did all of this, there's a lot of stuff here. You could pause, you could have a look. There's, there's a lot of stuff here. I said that the series keeps continuing you in, I would go up to 500 days. So I'd do this video, and then I'd do 500 days. That's the plan. However, after 500 days, I said I'd do a 1,000, which means 500 days in one video. Crazy, I know. However, for that to happen, I need to know that the series is supported. I need to know that I'm not wasting my time doing it. So, ladies and gentlemen, if the video gets to 100,000 views or gets 5k likes, I will in instantly start working on 500 days. 
so you know do you want do you want five you want 500 days like the video tell your friends share you share your buddies that that's the way to do it enough dilly dally and ladies and gentlemen i'd like to introduce you to a very special friend who's going to explain the three main goals i have for this 100 days take it away Dr. Havenhand. Guys, I'd like to personally thank you for keeping this series alive. Like, seriously, without it, I wouldn't have a job. I have kids. I have a cat. I mean, how am I going to give my cat a dindies if I don't have any money from this job? Anyway. So, one of these great plans that my better-looking, less intelligent half is talking about? Well, at the start of the 300 days, I made myself three big plans. The first one, which is the smallest plan of the bunch, is to make the Never Portal look a bit better. At the moment, it just looks like, well, this. There's not really much to it, so it really needs an improvement to make the island look better. The other two plans somewhat come hand-in-hand, hand, but they are both separate and massive tasks. For those who remember the last video, I quickly covered all of the new features that were added to 1.20, like the sniffer, suspicious sand, and blossom trees, but I did miss something that at the time I thought was kind of irrelevant. There is a new mob head you can get, the piglin mob head. I didn't really think about this much, but it did now give me an idea. Wouldn't it be kind of cool to click all mob schools in Minecraft and make a monument similar to how I made for the Neverite armor? So that was the ultimate big goal here. Unfortunately for me, that does require me to do something even bigger because I need a trident. For the few people that don't know, the only way to get a mob head is to use a supercharged creeper to kill that selected mob, and the only way to get a supercharged creeper is to zap it with lightning. Now, I could use copper rods and light the creepers that way, but that just kind of be boring, so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to make a trident farm, something that I've never done before. Admittedly, it's only for one trident, but maybe I'll find some other uses in the future, and it's probably the easiest way for me to get a trident. Now, so... So many of you in the comments were like, the reason the spawner is not working is because it's on half slaps. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, that's not true. So let me quickly work my way up. First of all, there you go. Uh, actually, wasn't that a... Of course, zombie villager. Yeah, of course there is. <laughs> How much hassle was that? Well, first of all, there you go. Stuff is actually spawning. There you go. Stuff is spawning. Now, unfortunately, there's not much, as you can see. And it is still dropping down there. Now, this should work. And it doesn't matter if it's on half slabs. Because there's two different kinds of half slab. As you can see, this half slab, is it looks normal. It's on the normal thing. However, if you have a half slab like this, where it's half a block, in that case, it won't spawn. So, these will spawn perfectly fine. However, the reason this is not working is because every... Everywhere below me, right now, there'll be caves. And the only way for me to get this mob spawner fully working is to fully light up every single cave below me. And unfortunately, that's not going to happen. And though I do appreciate all your input on why this isn't working, it's not working because there's too many areas for the mobs to spawn below me. That's the reason why this is not working. And so it was on day 302 that I got to work. This trident farm was actually massive following the tutorial that I found on YouTube, and I started the day by collecting every box that I could. I got everything I needed except the building blocks. Now, I'm not joking when I say this. This farm requires 5,910 building blocks to complete, or 93 stacks of building blocks. That's also ignoring the extra 6 stacks of slabs that I need to complete it. So I'm going to need a lot of building blocks. Now, the most blocks I had at the time when I started this was actually Deep Slate with 11 stacks, which means if I go for Deep Slate, I need 82 more stacks to complete it. Yeah, I know. And there was really no time like the present, and so I went down under and started digging. I did do a little clever and I decided to dig around diamond layer because you know diamonds are always useful You never know if you can get some on day 303 and about 20 minutes later I had got myself 18 stacks of deep slate So if I've done my maths correctly everything in my inventory right now is the equivalent of 43 stacks of deep slate And just a reminder that I need 93. I already have 11 back home So that is 55 which means I need to do all of this again Just to get the enough deep slate to make this farm if it doesn't work. I'm going to uh, stop I kind of need you. I'm going to stop the series forever, and that'll be that. And just to show you on day 304, it was enough to fill a double chest. Anyway, it was back to digging. And let me show you on day 305, there is 38 more stacks, giving me a grand total of 93 stacks of deep slate. I had completed the deep slate mining, though I still needed six stacks of slabs. And really, though, this was much easier because I decided to just get normal cobblestone for that one. And the best part about it, because I was much higher up and I was close to the beacon, I was able to get the haste, which made this super, super simple. Day 305. 6 I moved all of my equipment over to the location where I'm gonna put the trident farm and it was time to get to work. You know, this was a 
very big build, so I'm just gonna quickly go over the highlights of everything that was needed. First, I used all of the scaffolding to get myself to Y200, and then I had to get 22 more blocks into the sky. I think already on day 307, you can probably tell how big this is gonna be, and it is definitely going to take some time. I was able to get the floors in, and I started working on some of the walls. Day 308 and the sign placing was awful. There was no cheap way to speed up this process rather than just doing it, and this area is quite big, so this also took quite a minute. It's gonna be funny when I complete all of this, by the way, and uh, it doesn't work. I mean, is that a spoiler? Is that foreshadowing? You just have to wait and see. I had to complete it by day 309. Let's see what's up next. I uh, gotta raise all of this by 69 blocks. Are you kidding me? At least I can get a good view of the world up here. Why is the fuck in a circle? Now, when I tell you there is no quick way for me to do this, there is no quick way for me to do this. So, uh, anybody mind if I just do do a little bit of this? And I, Okay, 45 minutes later, it's day 313, and we are done. Now, two last things to do. First, we need to get a temporary very flooring and about of blocks of course I am had it complete on day 314 and the water was down next job is to remove the floor and just like that we're done at least once I get the roof in now I did actually place the shulkers at the bottom of this farm so I was planning to go down and get them however the drown spawning had already begun so I wasn't actually able to get them from this way not gonna lie though pretty happy about the fact it was already working it wasn't too hard to get the shulkers out on day 315 it was in fact very simple to do and now it's time to begin the murder process now I do only have Lily too, so this may take a minute. <laughs> Are you serious right now? Really? <laughs> okay. Alright then. I decided that this wasn't enough though. I mean, I made this. I made to get something out of it. So I tried to get myself a couple of levels. I went to go and get myself a mending book and then put it on the trident. And then started getting levels. First, I tried to fix my pickaxe. And then it was on the trident. It's not as good as an enderman farm, but you know what? It does the job. And on day 316, just like that, it was full. I'm going to be honest, there's a very high chance I'll never use this again. But to be fair, if I ever need levels, it is right there. But there is a better way for me to get levels, and that is straight into the nether. So I'm going to go and mine some quartz. Day 317, I was quite close to my goal of level 30. Simple reason was, is I wanted to get channeling on my trident. That would give me the enchant that would allow me to zap a creeper with lightning. And so I was pretty happy to get to level 30 on this day. However, I decided let's keep going just to be safe, because, you know, if I don't get it the first time, then, well, at least I've got the extra levels to do so. By the end of day 318, I had got myself 35 levels, and then I decided to call it quits. I got back before the night and quickly stored my things away, because it was time to enchant. Day 319, and here we go. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. All right, take two. Here we go. Oh, that's unfortunate. All right, take three. This is the one. Uh, really? Ah, we're out of levels. <sighs> okay, back to the nether. I'm just going to skip to day 322, because I'm not going to make you watch that again. Basically, I got myself back up to 36 levels. Anyway, let's try it. I tried it again. You are taking the absolute... Do I really need to explain what happens next? I don't think so. This is a joke! This is a joke! I don't believe this is happening! That's a chant 9! Am I- what? Just ch did they remove channeling? We got back on the night of day 329. Now surely, surely, this can't happen again. Oh my god. I'm not gonna lie, I actually paused at this point. I actually spent a good five minutes on the internet just to make sure that channeling wasn't removed from 1.20. It, it wasn't. I just I just got extremely unlucky. Day 331, I just want to make it clear that I'm not trying to skip days, but I, there's nothing I can do unless you want me to go. Then I went to the nether. And then I mined quartz, so please forgive me on that one. There was a little bit of luck on day 332. Because I got so much lapis in the first 100 days, I've just been leaving lapis around, so so this really wasn't too hard to get. Plus, with the fortune, I very quickly got myself some lapis. Alright then, here we go again. <gasps> oh my god. Oh, thank you, lord. Jesus, I am done with Minecraft for a while. Do you want to know the funny thing about this? I went into the Never originally on day 316. It is now day 332, so it took 16 days to get channeling. I started trying to get the trident on day two, built all of that up there, and got the trident on day 15, which means it took me 13 days to get the trident and 16 days to get channeling. I, 
I can't make it up if I wanted to. Now the question is, how long is it going to take until it starts thundering? Oh boy. At least now I can have a nice relaxing time building a better portal. I did have an idea to make it look like a never cave is the best way I can describe it. It was a lot of testing and, you know, I'm messing around a little bit. And whilst I was finishing, it started raining. Or was it? Oh my god. And it was on Black Donkey Kong. Let's go get some skulls. At first, he very quickly got myself the Creeper Skull. After that, it wasn't too hard to get the Zombie Skull. The skeleton admittedly was a little bit of a pain, but we got there in the end. Now, I did actually pause my game here because the next one is going to be the big one. Take it away, Doctor. Now, going into this challenge, I already had a Wither Skull and a Dragon Head Skull. And because of the Trident Explosions, let's call it, I had now got myself a Creeper, Zombie, and Skeleton Skull. Which means there is only one skull left in the game, which is the Piglin Skull. And when I tell you this is the most difficult skull to get, this is the most difficult skull to get. So there are two pretty simple options. The first option is to take a Creeper into the Nether. Now, unfortunately, Creepers don't spawn in the Nether and neither do Thunderstorms. So my only option would be to get a supercharged Creeper, put him into the Nether, and then blow up a Piglin in the Nether. The problem with that is the moment I put him into the portal, obviously I would have to go through the portal and it would be very close to each other the moment I come through the portal and there's a very high chance he could explode and kill me. Option two is to bring a piglin to the overworld and get him to explode by the supercharged creeper. However, this is also a problem because once a piglin enters the overworld, after a very quick period, they actually turn themselves back into pigmen. Both options kind of suck, but I decided that the easier option would be to get the creeper into the nether because then I'm not on a time limit as long as I can avoid the initial explosion. All right, let's get you into the nether. Well, that failed. All right, then. Take two. Nice. And now for the fun part. I'm not going to lie. My plan was to just go through the portal and sprint away as quick as possible, hoping the creeper doesn't explode along the way. Incredibly, it actually worked. All right, then. With a piglin nearby, let's do this. And, well, it was quite simple. First try. Let's go. I returned home, and it was day 333. The thunderstorm literally ended as soon as I was done, which was kind of poetic. That's the right word. The piglin head looks kind of funny. But they are all here. A job well done. Now, we just got to build a bunch of stuff. First of all, I do need to fix my eyelid a little bit. There may have been a failed creeper explosion here or there. So I'm just taking a second to make sure that that's all fixed. And then it was to fix the portal that I kind of destroyed. Design 1, wasn't really a big fan of. And Design 2 was... I was okay, got the point across. Just want to point something out on day 334. Um, you see the grass block on top of the tree? I think that's just a glitch. Grass blocks or dirt blocks can spawn on top of cherry trees? I don't know. Don't know how we got up there. Anyway, for an idea that I wanted to do to make the skull monument, I wanted to get myself some spruce wood. So most of it was pretty much me just cutting down the spruce trees and then waiting for more to grow. And I did have myself a stack of logs by day 335. I also grabbed myself a little bit of wool. Brown wool was was tradable, which was perfect because that was the kind of wall that I was looking for, and I got myself to work. Now, what is the build that I'm thinking of doing here? It's really simple, actually. I can get every skull in the game except a player skull. That's not possible without using commands or creative mode, but that doesn't mean I can't make one. Now, does this skull look terrible? Yes, yes, it does, but considering the blocks that I have options for, you could definitely tell it's at least supposed to be Steve, just a very dodgy looking Steve. I don't know. It is going to require me to get a bunch more brown wool and a little bit more spruce wood to finish it off. Luckily on day 336, the brown wool was still easy. I still had plenty of emeralds left over and the spruce trees were growing. So again, that wasn't an issue either. And well, there you go. I'm not sure if we could call it Steve. It maybe his cousin. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe like it's Charles or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now on day 337, my fiance actually gave me a really good idea. You can create a sort of head display for them by putting the heads inside glass glasses using a couple of pistons and such. I did find the tutorial on how to make this online, but unfortunately for me, it doesn't work because it requires snow layers. And unfortunately, well, I don't think I need to explain why that's not possible. So I did the next best thing. I picked a block that best represents each mob and I put it in there as like the base of the skull. And I must say, all the skulls are in now pretty happy with this. I did a little bit of tweaking on day 338 on the inside to make it look a little less bland. It wasn't amazing but I could happily say that I'm done with this build. I mean, I got all the skulls in hardcore Minecraft. I'm sure there's a hardcore episode out there that is similar to this and, uh, well, I'm pretty happy with it, to say the least. And just like that, the two big tasks that went hand in hand together 
were done. There is now one other task that I decided to do at this point. Basically, the villager hut that I had, I wanted to make a second hut that allowed librarians to trading as sort of a trader hall. At least that was a future plan. I wasn't interested in doing it right now. For now, let's just take a food break. I gotta admit, there's something really, really relaxing about placing crops even 300 days in. I did do a couple more trades on day 339. My main goal was just get a couple of spare mending books. These diamond tools are pretty good, so I wanted to do my best to improve them. And after adding mending, I thought that if I could do to the drown spawner, I could maybe get them a couple levels up, get them improved. But after standing there for a solid five minutes, I realized that this wasn't the play. And so it was on day 340 that I returned to the nether. Got all the levels and all that schnitzel, you know how it is. And by the end of the day, they all had four jury building which was pretty good i did quickly return home on day 341 only for a food break before it was back to the nether this time i was going for netherite now usually when i mine netherite i only get enough for all of my armor my sword and my pickaxe but i thought it'd be cool for me to get a couple extra pieces for my extra tools and so i was looking for 11 pieces of netherite i already had one spare rover and 11 would get me to 12 and it was pretty quick all things considered day 344 and i got myself 11 pieces of ancient debris day 345 and on this never had gone to waste. Really should have done something with it. Now, some of you are probably wondering. Now, obviously, I've got the shovel and the axe, so that's obviously two pieces of never right, but what's What's the third piece for? Well, that's really simple. Add one super good enchant later with a little bit of mending, and this may be the best hoe I've ever had. In fact, this may be the best set of tools and armor that I've ever had, if you were. Well, I mean, the sword's not that great, but we can work on that a little later. Day 346, and for a while now, I've wanted to make a couple of changes to the island to make it look better. A couple of the builds are just kind of bland, and there's some other stuff that I want to change, so I've decided to work on that at this point. Well, let's start with the bamboo farm. I added myself a little bit of a roof, made a couple of adjustments to the walls, and as this I think it already looks pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm not complaining about it. And then on day 347, I decided to do the biggest change to the wall. Now, as you all know, I've been using deep slit cobble as like a pathway between all of the locations on the island. And I decided that I really didn't like the deep slate. So what I decided to do was I decided to use oak logs on the stripped bases to replace them and make the island look a bit better. But it does require me to remove all the deep slate, so I'm going to do that quickly. I had to spend all of 348 doing this as well. It was pretty much a day of me placing and stripping all of the oak logs. It took me a bit longer than I expected, admittedly, but I have to say, I think it looks much better than the deep slate couple. I like it at least, and that's the most important thing, what I think. And then on 349, I decided it's time to work on the bamboo house. I've been saying this for a while that I wanted to make the top side of it similar to the bottom side, and so I raised the bamboo pillars up, fixed the roof a little bit, which was pretty simple, and yeah, I think it was a definite worthwhile upgrade. It looks so much better than it originally did. After that, on day 350, I spent a little bit of time looking around the island to see if there's anything else I wanted to upgrade and to be honest with you there's not really anything extra that I wanted to do all the buildings at that point in my opinion was at an acceptable level now let me let me stop you from commenting in my opinion they're at an acceptable level I'm not a pro builder we already know this but you know in my opinion every building on the island is a-okay I did however want to do one more thing on day 351 so the first thing I did was I went to go and trade as much wool as I could on day 352 I collected all the wool grabbed a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and here it is on day 355. What did I build, did you ask? I guess you'll have to, uh, guess you'll have to wait and see. I guess you'll have to watch the entire video to find out. Isn't this, uh, isn't this a tricky moment for you? You have to watch the entire video. Oh, Lord, isn't, isn't that unfortunate? All right, let's move on. Now, one thing I did take note of whilst I was looking around was my limited, called 33, limited amount of diamonds. And for future plans, whether it's in this video or potentially a future video, I'm going to need a lot of diamonds to work. And so I went back underground to go and mine myself some diamonds. When I started on day 356, my plan was really, really simple. I'm just going to strip mine. I was aiming for about a stack of diamonds and I started pretty well getting 16 on my first day of Gaven and then on day 357 I got myself two more veins and thanks to the fortune 3 I had now up to 40 diamonds. Now I didn't actually find any more diamonds on day 358 but I do have a question for you the viewer. What is your opinion on me covering days like this? Nothing happened I just stripped mine the entire time but is this a day that I should quickly cover and then move on or should I just skip days like this? You know I mean both are good options for me I've done a bit of both in recent times so uh, let me know what you think down below. Should I skip days where nothing happens or should I try and include them just a little bit even if I'm just saying, hey, nothing happened. Anyway, moving on. Got a new vein of diamonds on day 359. I had now 51 diamonds and it was about day 360, I believe. I don't know. I didn't check my F3 at this point where I got my final vein and it was a giant vein as well. I believe it was about 12 diamonds in total which got me to 79 diamonds. I was pretty happy with that. Let's head home. What I can tell you is by day 361, I was home and settled in and would 
around you. Look at all those diamonds. Pretty damn good. I also noticed a hole in the villager house, which I have no idea how that got there. It wasn't an issue to fix, if it was a bit weird. And then I saw myself a llama. Two llamas? Oh, there's a trader over here. Cool. And hey, he had some cactus, which, you know, that's pretty cool as well. My thank you for this great trade this day is a little bit of murder. Don't worry, I took the llamas out as well. Now, I did try to sell up a very basic auto cactus farm. I just don't know if it's going to work, so I decided to watch it. I just spent a couple of minutes just watching it to see if it would work. And it looks like the moment the cactus grew, it would instantly break. Now, I wasn't sure if this was correct, so I quickly watched a tutorial online, and it looks like it's the same way. The only difference is that they don't use blocks, they use fences instead, and so I decided to change it so it's just a fence there. This is about as basic as you'll see when it comes to cactus farms, but I, I mean, what do I need cactus for, let's be honest. Day 363, and I'm going to be honest with you, I've been putting it off for a while. I think it's finally time that I build that villager book trading hall. I decided to use Alcacia Wood again, since that was what I used for the original villager house, and there was a zombie inside of the trees, which I thought was kind of funny. Anyway, one deforestation later, and we can begin. To be 100% honest with you, I had no idea what I was doing in here. I was just going to wing the build. But if I've winged it before, then I can wing it again. I can... If I've winged it before? It's winged a word? <laughs> I had good progress done on day 364. The idea was to have a little department, so we shall call them and that the villagers can live in, and obviously I can trade them whenever I do that. I am going to need a couple of beds, though. Quite a few, actually. So there's nothing a little trading can fix with that one, I will say. And with the beds in on day 365, lecterns were completed. I did only need a little bit of wood to finish the walls and roof, and we would be good to go. I had the walls complete on day 366, putting a little bit of glass so it's not just a dark tomb for the boys. Also, some separators were put in so the villagers weren't all clumped together, all in their own separate departments. And next, the roof. It was simple design to copy the other one. Pretty much just put some slabs in here and some logs in here. A very simple roof design, but I quite like it. And it was day 367 where I completed the roof. And he started thundering like straight in the day so I was able to sleep and skip to the next day, which was kind of cool. Day 368, I decided to add a couple of final touches on the inside and we are good to go. Now for what will be the worst part of this 100 day adventure. Getting the villagers in the departments was a massive hassle. Here's me doing you one of them. By getting a minecart and getting them in there, me trying to get that- oh, this is four times speed. This was the worst and I have to do this 19 more times. And well, this was another portion of my life that I didn't want to do, but I guess I have to. I am not even going to tell you the hassle that it was to get this done. Day 375, between breeding the villages that I've needed to breed and moving them around, we have now got them all. I am going to turn this off immediately. I'm going to be honest, I haven't really looked at any of the trades. Yeah, let's, have a, let's have a gander and see what we can do. Ooh, protection 4. That's actually a good one. In all of that, I've got one good trade. Do I even need protection 4? No, but I guess it's good to have for the future. I guess now we have to sort of mess around until we get some good trades. This will be fun. I'd like to officially announce my retirement from villager manipulation because this was the worst. Let me start by showing you something over here. As you can see, there is two llama boys in the water over here. There was a wandering trader with him and unfortunately, this very intelligent wandering trader decided to go underneath the house and drown. However, he did give me this. He gave me, gave me a little birch, birch sapling, which, uh, you know, well, let me show you what I've got. Now, I didn't get all of them because there's no reason to, but uh, this guy's fire aspect too. We have an infinity boy, a fortune three boy, a silk touch boy, power five. We have a looting three boy. We have an unbreaking three, mending and flame. I didn't do these guys because I didn't need any more. There's a sharpness five boy, efficiency four, protection four, horns three, and feather falling three. So I have a lot of, uh, book trades as you could probably tell right over here so this is actually really good because it means i can now take probably one two and three start with the sword looting three fire aspect darkness that is about as good as a sword as you'll ever see. So just just in case anyone is ever thinking, hey, then you don't have that good of a gear, let me show you this. Sharpness 5, looting 3, mending, fire aspect. The only thing I can get is sweeping edge, and I'm not that bothered about sweeping edge. The shovel, again, I can make it efficiency 5, I don't care. The bow, I do have a flame book, so I could probably put that on there. That's about the best pickaxe I've ever had. The axe is pretty damn good as well. Protection 4, okay, that don't have a breaking 3 either. Protection 4, protection 4, protection 4, all mending, all unbreaking 3, except the boots which have feather falling for. This is about as good as this gear is ever gonna get. I could spend the rest of these 100 days working on, you know, putting this uh, free over here 
and fixing these up. I have no interest in doing that uh, because now that I got the birch sapling, I actually want to see if I can add a third island, that birch tree island. And then maybe I'm going to see about killing another wither because I have a beacon over here. I have a beacon in the middle. I'd like a beacon on that side of the island as well. That's my final couple of plans. I'm going to build myself birch tree island and then I'm going to build myself a final beacon. Uh, the only question is, do, am, am I going to have enough iron to... Uh, you know, make a full beacon or not. I mean, I don't think I will. It might be really, really close. Oh, no, never mind. So, on to Birch Tree Island I go. I set out a good outline, grab some grass blocks, and start filling it in. I had the island fully made by the end of day 383. I did also make a little bit of an access from the bridge, similar to what I did for Spruce Tree Island. Now, this is definitely the worst tree out of all the islands, but, you know, it's birch, so anyone got a problem with that? No? Cool. I also tried to add flame to my bow, but I did not have 17 levels unfortunately and so i wanted to do one last task to get myself a beacon i had two beacons on the island already but a third one in the other side of the island would actually be really really helpful now i did already have one skull in the skull monument thing but i decided that i didn't want to touch that that one could just be left there i'm gonna go get myself three fresh skull and so i returned to the fortress now i didn't really keep track of my days on here but i believe i started on day 385 and it was by day 391 i believe was when i got myself the first skull. Other than a mild pigment problem that I had, this was pretty standard with a skeleton murder shabuckle. And by the time I grabbed back, I grabbed all the iron and just started digging out the beacon. I had all the blocks in by day 392. Just need to cover it with a little bit of sand. And after slowly making my way down to the deep slate caves, it was day 394. I mean, I've done this twice already, so I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, feel like it's time we do what we do at the end of all these 100 day schnitzels. Let's do it. I haven't done the map. Scratch that. Scratch that. Uh, let me do the map. All right, take two. And uh, I'm not going to lie. I've made a mistake. So what I've done is when I realized that I wanted to get the maps, I accidentally grabbed the maps up here in 200 because I never knocked them in. You'll see that the stuff there in 200 that shouldn't be there, like the Never Portal and the House of Loveliness, that kind of thing. Really, really kind of upset by that, but I guess there's not really much I can do about it now. Uh, I did look, there is no way to revert the maps back. Uh, they are just there now. I realized I also made a mistake with this thing because you could, uh, be, you could kind of see this. You see this little guy? Do you remember that little skip that I took, like on, it was like the 50 day bar. Uh, yeah. It's, it's there. Now, obviously, I can't go over there and show you exactly what it is, but I can show you right on the 400 day map. I, uh, I had a little bit of a goof, so... I hope the payoff was worth it. But here, here's the 400 day map board in its entirety. Um, let's see, we have added Birch Tree Island, which is still growing. There is a new house for the villagers. There's the head for Stevie Boy, the new Never Portal. Honestly, there wasn't too much that I added for build. Oh, of course, the giant thing. Let's, let's go on a bit of a tour. Let's start with the village trader hall. Pretty satisfied with it, I must say. I do have a couple of villagers spare if I ever need any other enchantment. But to be honest with you, looking at this, maybe Sweeping's Edge. That's about it. That's pretty much all that I'll need. You know, Spruce Island still looks nice. Cherry Tree Blossom still looks nice. I still don't know how that block got up there. Because that block was not there originally. I don't know. Uh, here's Birch Tree Island. I personally like that it looks terrible. Because it's Birch Tree Wood. And there's probably someone in the comments being Haven. But Birch Tree's the best. Obviously, we made the changes to our house, which uh, it wasn't much of a change, but I kind of like it. I think the house now looks better. All of this is the same. Now, I'm not going to go up there. I'm really, really not because it, it, it does genuinely take a good four minutes to get up there, it, roughly. But just know that it's very funny that I spent all the time building this, watching tutorials, faffing around, actually trying to, you know, get this to get a trident, and then I get a trident within 30 seconds of me actually trying to get one from it, which is just, it just sums it up perfectly. It just sums up my, oh, oh, I don't want to say my luck, because that would make it sound like I'm unlucky here, but uh, I just think it's very funny, very, very funny that, of course, I get one basically instantly. The cactus farm, again, I could probably make it much more efficient but i just i don't really need any cacti that much so 
This is a short thing, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, they can get stuck there. It doesn't matter. It, it, I got cactus. That's all that really matters there. And the other two things that build, well, firstly, there's this, which is just, it's supposed to make the nether portal look, you know, more than just a nether portal. It's not that great, but I, I like it. I like what, it, what it's supposed to be. I guess I could maybe add like a little lava pool around here or something, make it look better. And then the Steve house, which, uh, now I can't, unfortunately, the best thing to use is probably like clay or stained clay. And I could technically do that, but I don't know. I, I kind of, you know what it's supposed to be just a very poor rendition of steve uh, and this is where i spent most of my time in this world uh, getting you guys already had you too but uh, this is the first ever time i've got a piglin head in fact it's probably the first ever time i've collected all the skulls in minecraft so you know i quite like it i quite like it it's it's basic it's it's not meant to be much but for what it is i quite like it and uh well if they ever add more skulls then i'll have to faff around trying to make more space maybe i can make a second layer or something but um yeah you know what? I'm pretty happy with it. And if I'm correct, that is everything. Uh, I even left my armor in here, which is adorable. Uh, this 100 days... Oh, yeah, there's also the paths, which uh, I made look better. The only thing I didn't touch was this, but I, I honestly don't want to touch this. This is just supposed to be the basic thing that it is, and I quite like it. Oh, there's also the beacon, which is accidentally co nearly covered by the trees. Might have to change that in a little bit. But we stand here on 400 days with, you know... It was more about the builds themselves weren't necessarily massive, but they required a lot of work. Like, again, the skulls was such a big feat. Making that abomination was such a big feat. These, this, the book trades was such a big feat that each individual thing took so long. But I'm going to be honest with you, I'm really satisfied with what I've got done. Now then, the question that most of you have probably been waiting for, is 500 days going to happen? When's 500 days going to happen? And the simple answer is... I want to do 500 days. You know what? I want to do a thousand days. As I said at the end of the last video, if I get to 5k likes on 300 days, 5k likes on 400 days, and 5k likes on 500 days, I'll do that. I I'm kind of confident that no matter what the situation is, I will do 500 and a thousand. Just give me a minute because literally the last video, people like the video was out for two hours. And people were like, okay, where's 400 days? Guys, I can't play 100 days of Minecraft in two minutes. It takes over 20 hours for this. I pretty Appreciate the support, but g give, me, give me a chance, please. But yeah, I think that's about everything. Maybe, maybe give me some ideas of what I could build. Maybe, maybe, because I'm going to be honest with you, I feel like I've done everything that I wanted to do. That looks really good, by the way. That's really, really good. Right then, I will see you on day 400 because we, uh, we have a tradition for 400. Yeah. Day 400, we did it. That being said, going to test me to the next step. Woo! Did somebody say... 500 days hello everybody welcome back to the survival island series don't know who i am first of all why are you starting on day five why, why are you starting on this video go 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 watch the hundred first oh yeah i'll put a link at the top right oh well i can't really move i'll put a link at the top right so you can watch the full series but if you don't want to do that i'm haven and nice to meet you pleasure this is day 401 on an island that i have spent well 401 days on as always i need to grab this bad boy because i may have forgot to do that now then ladies and gentlemen we have things to do now for 400 days there's a lot that i wanted to do before i even started i actually basically made a list of things that i want to do from making new islands with cherry wood and acacia trees to quote unquote fixing the mob spawn which we'll get to a little bit later but to talk about the new things that are available do i even do i do i even need to introduce him do i even need to say what's going on take it away Dr. Havenhand. Well, 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 can't get enough of us, can ya? Well, you know why I'm here, let's do some explaining. The better looking Haven came up with quite a few plans for this video, so let's quickly list them off. Firstly, the mob spawner. I'll let Lie Haven go into more detail, but I've been getting a lot of comments about it, and I'll tackle that first things first. However, that's nothing compared to the big task that I'm looking at doing. Firstly, there is a brand new trimming in the game that I'm able to get, so I'm gonna be wanting that to the trimming house when I'm able to get the trimming. I was also able to convince better looking Haven that I actually need need a, you know, house for my lessons, so he's gonna build one of those at some point. Be much better than this flat world that I'm currently doing it in. I also have a Zulia and Acacia tree, so I want to build a new island to them, similar to the Cherry Tree Island or the Birch Tree Island, so that'll be on the cards as well. The egg statue at the moment looks kind of bland, so I actually found a cool design that I wanted to recreate in my world to make it look more fancy. I want to make a somewhat boat design as well, maybe with a little bit of a dock to just put onto the island. I mean, I've got to leave the island at some point. And then finally, Bees. Can I get them? Is it possible? I mean, I'll need to investigate a little bit, but that's pretty much every goal that I wanted to get onto. Now, that pesky mob grinder. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm, I'm still against the comments because I have received many comments saying that this is broken and it's my fault. I don't believe any of you, but 
as a final let me prove it i'm going to go ahead and listen to your comments now my claim about this mob spawner if you forgot from last time is that it's not working because there's too many caves underneath it and that's the reason why it's not working however everybody is now claiming that the reason this is not working is because the slabs on top these slabs right here are still technically laying in life which to be fair they kind of are but you missed that was worth it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove every one of these slabs every one of them and we're going to basically replace it with cobble and then we'll know for sure we'll know 100 percent for sure who is right this is it I, this is the last time I, I don't even need this anymore but i just want to be right about this and if i'm wrong about this then i owe so many people an apology i am willing to bet it all that i'm right i'm willing Anyway, let's bring it down. And so I took off the roof. It did take longer than I expected. So now that we've taken it all down, before I continue and get this finished before the day ends, I need a ruling, ladies and gentlemen. These are in a scenario where I, I feel like I need to talk about something and I need to know whether what I'm about to say is okay or not. You, my loyal viewer, I, I, I need your guys' opinion on something. The Survival Island Challenge is pretty straightforward. I'm not allowed to leave the island. Like, in the overworld, above the ground is the general ruling never is fine and caving is fine and usually the end is fine if you can get there without going to the cave if we ignore the one time i ran to the stronghold of the overworld which very much a regret of mine so in theory i have technically broken that rule by doing the stronghold one but if we ignore that i've never broken my own set of rules of leaving the overworld to island however there is a ruling that i would like to ask you the viewer i'm obviously keeping on my island as you know but am i allowed to search the ocean so if if I don't go to other land, would I be allowed to search the ocean? And the reason I ask that is because there is now new things in 1.20. Suspicious sand, suspicious gravel in, in oceans. This world has obviously not been explored very much. And the, the general area around spawn is mainly ocean. So I'm hoping I'd be able to get some of the new armor trims. Maybe a sniffer egg, something like that. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do it in this video. Because, well, people aren't here. And you know, I don't want to just do it without asking. So in the comment below, I'm going to leave a pinned comment. And I would like you to reply to that comment just... You know, give me your opinion. Am I allowed to leave the island if I only search the ocean? Let me let me know what you guys think. Making an argument for either way. People think I shouldn't even be able to search the ocean. I'm 100% okay with that. But yeah, that's, that's kind of where I am. All right then, it's now all cobbled. So tomorrow we can go back to this and actually have a gander. Ah! All right then, this is uh, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Haven versus the comment section. I'm gonna just clear out these guys, so we obviously know for sure that they weren't there. I'm gonna wait here for five minutes, and we see how much spawns. Let's do this. And five minutes later, I have gained a grand total of two zombies. Ladies and gentlemen, as I have been saying for the last two videos, the reason this is not working is because all the caves underneath it is spawning mob. I, I understand. I appreciate you guys trying to call, like say when I'm doing something wrong. I really do. It is not Haven on versus the comment section. The reason this is not working is not because of any slab issue or anything like that. It's just because there's too much areas in this world to spawn. And unfortunately, that's not going to work. I still, you know, I, I'm really happy that I tried it though. Because if I was wrong, it would have been cool to have. But unfortunately, this is just not going to work because there's just too many areas around for it to spawn, unfortunately. Anyway, I'm glad we got that one sorted. That's the first one ticked off the board. Let's uh, let's move on to something else. Before I get on to any of the main tasks that I spoke about in the intro, there's one thing I really wanted to do, and that was to fix Steve. Somebody suggested that if I use stripped oak logs instead of stripped spruce logs, then he would actually look more like Steve, and so I was going to do that. I have to say, after getting it completed, it was definitely a good fit. Here's the completed version on day 403. I have to say, it looks so much better, and now it's time for a new build. I haven't actually made a build out of oak logs, yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a bunch of oak logs. Once I had enough by day 404, it was just about finding a good spot and this one I am gonna need some space for. I ended up making this build quite big. I was actually focused on the floor pattern at first because that's just something I never really do with my build. It took me all day, but I have to say, I, I quite like the floor plan. I think it looks good. Next up on day 405, it was the back and the front walls. I'm not gonna lie, I was just completely winging it, but I'm hopeful towards the end it will look alright. I also got the entrances to sort of this day. And after getting even more logs on day 406, I started working on the roof. Logs were expensive, but I think they were going to really complete the build when it was completed. For 407 update, I just added some glass in. In my opinion, this build was finally coming together. Do you know what it is yet? You will in a second. 408, I was mainly focused on finishing the roof. I got some spruce stairs in, and I would like to say that the roof is now complete. And the final touches on day 409 were very simple, and well, it was done. I just got to work on a bit of interior design. I'm going to need quite a few bookshelves for what I wanted to do here, so thank God, villager trade are a thing. And about 
three or four days later. Joey, should we do a little bit of a tour of Dr. Havenhan's new office? So here we are. Looking at it from the front, I think it's very different to everything I've built. I can't decide if I like it or not, so you'll have to give me your honest opinion in the comment section. The exterior is pretty basic, but I'm perfectly fine with that. Interior, where the work has been done. You got the bookshelves that I thought, I thought they looked really cool up here. Makes it look like you have to like go up and actually try to get them. Had a couple of things like a flower pot here with the only clay that I've ever got in this world. I don't even remember how I got it. These little cauldrons with bushes I thought looked cool. You have a little area here for Dr. Haven to do his study in, of course. Here is his little podium right here. And then there's obviously this. Now, if you if you look in, you obviously can tell very clearly something's kind of wrong about this. Now, unfortunately, in the main design, when I already did the Dr. Haven and bit, I use black concrete and I don't think it's possible for me to get black concrete in this world, at least not easily. So I did my best. Hopefully this won't look too bad, but we shall see. Oh, it looks fine. It looks great, actually. Uh, even the design, I quite like it. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to officially introduce the new area for Dr. Havenan to do his standing. He no longer has to sit around in that flat world, and we can sit right here, right there, and watch Dr. Havenan talk about his schnitzel. It's not the best build I've ever done on this thing, but it's a new build for the server. This world's really coming together. In the future, from now on, on. Whenever there's a Dr. Haven and bit, he's going to be right in there. We'll be sat right here. Anyway, on to the next task. And with that done, it was time to finally fix up the end egg statue. So I got myself to work. I found a really cool design of a slain dragon. So on day 413, I got to work. There is a problem, however. For the statue to be completed, I need another dragon head. Not just the end, by the way. Not just the outer right. I got, I got to go find an end city. I got to find a brand new end city. Oh boy. Good thing I still have this elytra and I'm able to make plenty of fire works and with the power of mending and unbreaking i was off into the end i go day 414 and it took me no time at all i got the end rods and the dragon skull and i was already off home the same day also check this out i could not do this fly in a hundred more attempts so i think i think i'm just a pro gamer i think that's the only only facts of the day by the time i got back on day 415 i wasn't actually fully done i needed to quickly run into the game and found a long forgotten geode from the past because i needed some crystal. And then I also need a candle which needs to be black. Luckily I have some black dye from some squids that I've killed. And you know I originally planned to make it much much bigger. I do have to say I like the look of the slain dragon. It came together quite well. It's not perfect but don't worry I fixed it a little later. Dr. Haven and here and my god look at these sweet dick. Didn't even have to pay Haven that much to build it. Anyway on to the biggest task of this whole video. Minecraft has added five new trimmings. Now in case you don't know between the five new trimmings or are hidden in trial ruins or suspicious sand or suspicious gravel areas of which I have basically no access to. Lucky for me there is a fifth trimming in the area called the silence template which of course I am able to get. Now these new silence templates can be found in ancient cities which means I am going to need to find myself a new ancient city and then after finding the ancient city I'm going to have to hope that one spawns. Checking the spawn rate and it's only 1.25% chance. Oh boy that's going to take a minute. So the goal is simple we first have to find a new new ancient city and then hopefully the almost one in a hundred chance of it being in there. Fortunately, because I've been everywhere around my base, I am going to need a new plan. And I did have a bit of a wild one, but it is going to require some obsidian. After grabbing some and popping back into the nether, my plan was to go very far away from my original portal, pop up back in the overworld in complete new terrain, and then basically dig in a random direction and hope for the best. The only thing that's worth mentioning during the flight in the nether was that those two bastions like basically next to each other, so that was cool. Anyway, after getting what I I thought was far enough away, I made my portal add bedrock. That way the portal in the overworld would spawn underground as well, which meaning I didn't break any rules in leaving my island in the overworld. Because of how far away I am now, this is all completely new terrain. Now it's just about digging in a random direction and hoping for the best. Day 417 is pretty much going to sum up my life for a little bit. It was just digging. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I did box a little clever on day 418, raising my Y to the point where I was aiming to get as much coal as possible, since I stupidly didn't bring any when I originally came. The coal was definitely bountiful, but you know what wasn't bountiful? I ended up killing two zombies. One of them dropped a carrot, and the other dropped a potato. But because my sword has fire aspect on it, it dropped a baked potato. So 419 days in, and I am still yet to get a potato, and this is the first time that a zombie has dropped a potato. But like I say, because of the fire aspect, 
perfect. It's a baked potato, but my quest for taters carries on. I was back to digging on day 419, making sure all the XP dropping ores happen so my men in pickaxe doesn't get anywhere near as low as it should. Unless a man may make a joke about making it to day 420. I'm more focused on finding the deep dark biome for the first time. Let's get a look at around. Fairly confident a day passed during this time, so we'll call this day 421, but I found it. Now we just gotta get lucky. So, in order, I found a swift sneak free book, great diamond leggings, a golden apple, sure, some disc fragments, more fragments, a template, but it was the wrong one, an infinity book, which I didn't take, and after searching for what was probably 10 minutes, I can fairly confidently say that there is no new template in this area, which means I have to find a new, new, new ancient city. Isn't that just lovely? I returned back to my portal on day 422, and then started digging the other way. The creeper was a little bit unnecessary. I walk a lonely road, the road that I walk, cause I'm alone. That, that's not the lyrics. Day 424, and Dr. Haven and is here. Haven stopped recording. I'm just here to fill the gap. I mean, look at my sweet dicks. Oh yeah, he apologizes for skipping days, but to be fair, he did dig like four days and nobody wants to watch that. Anyway, it was day 428 and I was back to recording and I had found myself another ancient city. Let's sneak in and on the second chest. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, thank you. Now let's just leave safely. I said safely. I got back to the portal by day 430 and one quick fly later, we are home. That's just lovely stuff. It was really easy to dupe them as well. Now we just need a full set of Neverite armor. So it was day 431 where I got myself back to Neverite mining again. Good news is I only need 14 pieces of ancient debris because I already have two scraps back at base. And I had a very successful day one of mining because I got five pieces of ancient debris on the first day. I got myself two more on day 432. I got myself three more on day 433. And you guessed it, on day 434, I got three more, getting me to the 14 pieces I needed. Let's head home. 435 and I was cooking away. Got myself three Neverite ingots. Feels cursed. Better make a fourth just to be safe. And I can't believe how little lapis I have. It's actually kind of crazy. Now, the only options for the trims available to me was actually iron or copper. Never one was amazing, but I decided to settle with iron, and now I could put the house in the trimming area, and it may have taken 20 days, but it was done. I can now take a break from digging. We are done with trimmings for now. Day 436, and it was now time to work on the new islands. First things first, I need dirt, of which I have zero off. Well, the good news is I can finally take down the giant acacia tree that's just been sat there for ages. And then he was into the caves to grab dirt of all things. Dirt digging, yeah, 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 yeah. Dirt digging, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think I have enough dirt by day 437. What do you guys think? And so I started building the islands on day 438. I've done this quite a few times at this point, so it was pretty much just following the same script that I've already done before. Day 439, I had the first outlet done on the first island. Day 440, the next thing up was the bridge. I just need a little hill over here, a little stream right there, and Dunzo. Once the trees go in here, this will be great. And on day 441, it was time for Azalea Island. Okay, so I literally am just doing a copy and paste from the previous lesson. Here we are on day 443, and she is done. I just need a little bit of bone meal. Gonna add some sugar cane. And again, once we let this all grow out, it will look great. Now, somebody did suggest something about bees as well in the comment section in the last video, and I thought that maybe it's something I could go for. Sadly, I wasn't too familiar on how to get beehives to spawn on trees, so I was honestly just faffing around here a little bit. Day four. 444 came and honestly I was just looking around a little bit on some extra stuff to do. Apart from the bees and the boats I had completed everything that I set out at the start of this video and to be honest with you those two tasks was not going to take 50 days to complete. And so after having a quick look around the only thing I really looked at and thought I could do some work on that is the melon farm because let's be honest that looks kind of basic. But first on day 445 let's attempt a trial and error of birch tree growing. Now from what I learned is that if you have flowers around the birch tree, there is a 5% chance that a beehive will grow on it. It's a low chance, but we'll give it a go. A full day later of trying this, and sadly, I got no success. So instead of day 446, I'm going to set myself up an auto melon farm. So let's gather all the materials we need and get moving. Day 447, and this melon farm has been with me since the first, what, 20 days? So this is a, this is a sad day. So you did a salute for the melon, boys. Salute for the melon. All right, let's get moving. It was pretty simple case of following a tutorial online to find a useful melon farm. I 
once I got the rails down, it was time for me to do a little bit of a test run. It worked great. Day 449 and I got the roof on there. Now it was just a case of placing the pistons, which was not fun. It, it was actually kind of a pain to do, I'm not going to lie. And then on day 490, I had to take off the entire roof. I don't know why the tutorial told me to put on a roof just to take it off, but there you go. Because now I need to put observers in. And with that done, this melon farm should fully work. Day 451, I grew the melon stems with some bone meal. I watched the melons grow and it was not working. Wonder why? I quickly learnt my mistake and spoiler alert, it was a very annoying one. Basically, I accidentally put the rails one block too low, which means I'm going to have to remove all the rails, raise it all up one block and then put it back down and that sounds terrible. Lucky for me though, I'm just a bit of a whiner so it actually wasn't too bad to get all in. And after fixing it up and watching it again, there was success. One day I will make this prettier, but for now it is a fully functioning auto melon farm, which which is fantastic. And then on day 452, well, as I already said, I wanted myself a boat and a dog, so I'm gonna go ahead and start on the boat. I mean, I have to leave the island one day, I may as well make a boat to do it. So I started yet again grabbing the materials from my storage shack. Day 453, and I decided to build it over here, next to the nether portal. You know, good spot, really. All right then, let's build a boat. Well, it took three or four days. Here is my little boat. Quite like it. Simple, it's basic. I feel like I could probably put something on top of that to really add to the roof up here. But other than that, it's it's quite good. The only two things I really want to add to like probably make it complete is firstly, the, the design actually has an armor stand here. I would like to put an armor stand there. Overall, I quite like it. It's basic, but I mean, I'm not even going to try and build something complex. Uh, that's the first way with the armor stand. The second thing is I need to build a dock to it. So that's kind of the next two things I'm going to do. So after getting my armor stand in, cleaning my gubbins, I started cutting down birch. Hoping to give the beehives another go. I also needed a bunch of spruce wood, so I started chopping down some spruce trees as well. It was honestly just a bit of a waiting game this day for whilst I'm waiting for the trees to regrow. Whilst I was waiting, I did actually have a quick look around and look at the tiny little island over there. It'd be a really cute spot for something in the future. I don't know what, but I just think it'd be cool for something. I was pretty confident that I had enough wood in by day 458, so I began building the dock, which I instantly began deconstructing because I made it way too big. I don't know what I was planning here. As I was building on day 459, and would you look at that? A wandering trader. These are useless. And with the dock completed a basic dog. I still like it for what it is. Let's get the armor stand in. I made a black cap for the pirate cap. You know how pirates have a black cap. And then I made red armor because I just thought the red looked cool. But we are officially done, sort of. I did have the plan to make a second smaller ship in the future somewhere along here, but uh, for now, we'll come back to that later. On day 460, I gave one last attempt in trying to get some bees, and then I'm moving on to another project, and I can pretty confidently and sadly say this isn't going to happen, but it was worth a try. Melon Farm working great, by the way, but the bees, that's just not happening. Day 461, and out of the 10 tasks that I have completed, I did actually think of another one that I wanted to do, but for that, I am going to need some clay. Lucky for me, I found about 100 lush caves in my time, so this shouldn't be a problem getting some clay. I think I got myself enough. You may be asking me on day 462, why do I need so much clay? And the answer is really simple. I want terracotta. My plan is to finally upgrade the pig step area from just, well, four never racks and a couple of bamboo planks. I'm actually going to make something good. And after looking online, I found that if I was able to get three colors, orange, red, and yellow, which are all obtainable for me, I could make some pretty cool pig Pixel art of the pig step disc. Just need to bone meal 18,000 times to get myself a bunch of yellow dye and we will be good to go. After a lot of crafting on day 463, I had everything needed and let's get to work. Starting with the outline, did a little bit of inner design and it was done. It's a little brighter than I was hoping for, but to be honest with you, it's fine. You can definitely tell what it is. There's only one way to celebrate art life on day 463. But is a pig step, woo! Day 464 and the farm still isn't working by the way. Just before I mention it, so um, 
Now what? As silly as it sounds, the plans that I made at the start of the video were all very quickly completed and I still have 35 days to go with nothing planned to do. So for the time being, I was just aimlessly wandering around the island looking for something to do. But then a very simple solution hit me on day 405. This is my island, of course, but there's no me. There's no, there's, there's not me or anything. So uh, I need me, if you, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to recreate my Minecraft skin on the island. But to do that, I need wool and a decent amount of it. So let's make some shepherd villagers, which I always knew you could trade wool with, and I need to get myself a white wool trade. I am out of villagers though, so I am going to need to breed like crazy. And then on day 466, I honestly went AFK. I hate to do it, but I need the villagers, there's nothing else for me to do, so sorry about that, but I guess we're waiting around. And when I came back on day 468, I now had villagers. The only problem is that I don't have the extra wool needed to trade the emeralds, because the wool trade back is on tier 2, so I need to basically upgrade the villagers from tier 1 to tier 2. So the only option I've got is to keep swapping out the villager trades until I get shears, which means I'm going to have every shear I ever need. 470 and it took me a second, but we got it. The color is completely random, so the fact that it took this little time, I'm honestly quite appreciative of. Also, you may notice the uh, the inflated prices. I may have had to murder a villager or two together to work, but there we got there. And by day 473, I got every train needed for the main body. The extra details I can work on later, but for now, Let's get to work building our body. I started with working on the front first, getting up to the top of my body. Day 474, the next thing I worked on was the arms, which admittedly wasn't too bad. The face was definitely going to be a bit of a pain though. But on day 475, once I had the face completed, I decided to leave the whole head, which admittedly again wasn't too bad. I mean, I, I don't have a mouth or, or a moustache or my goggles, but we'll, yeah, we'll do that later. For now, let's finish off the body. I got the feet done, the legs done, and the body done. Mine is the chicken on the back, of course. And on day 476, with the arms done, I nearly got killed by a golem whilst checking it out, which definitely would have sucked this far in. Anyway, I finished the face off, which it does look a little bit stretched when you're looking at it, but this is an exact pixel by pixel recreation of my skin, so I guess that's just the way it looks. And, uh, oh, hey, wandering trader. Oak sapling, you say? Oh, go on. Go on then, lad. And here is the finished project by day 477. Yeah, the colors aren't a perfect match to my skin, but to be honest, I was with you. I quite like it. I think it's a good fit. Day 478 and with a new sapling. Well, you know what that means. I need a new island. And so I began setting up a tiny little island for the oak sapling with plenty of poppies because, you know, the beehive dream is still there. And here is the completed island on day 480. It's simple, but good. Just had to build a little bit of a bridge over, which is also connected to the acacia tree. It's a very simple bridge design. Lanterns, of course. Now we just need to get some saplings. So I cut down the tree and got one in return. So, uh, yeah, I think I'll leave that for now. I hear what you're saying on day 481. Wow, Haven, that's a, that's a lot of melons. What are you going to do with all those melons? And the answer is simple, my dear viewer. I'm going to build a melon castle, which, of course, requires a lot of melon. Now, I know there's some of you going, what are you talking about? But I'm going to make a castle on a melon. How are you not following along? Though I was fairly confident I wasn't going to be able to complete it this video, and as always for the next one, I got as much done as I could. Like, this, most of the flooring is done, but unfortunately for me, yeah, I'm going to need a lot more. I also got really look on day 4. 482 was one thing I did notice in the villager area is that there was a black cat and that is something I've never seen before after taming him which was admittedly a real pain in the membrane I got him in my house I was actually thinking if I would be able to get every type of cat here but that's something I'll have to look for in the future as well day 483 and I did something that some of you may find cheating and I hope not and that is I flew around the local area just to have a look around the water that's around me I just really wanted to see what was there there wasn't much like a tiny little island over here but there was this ocean ocean ruin over here that did have suspicious sand. I could very easily brush it apart and open it up if I wanted to, but again, I want to know if that's okay. Let me know in the comments section below. Oh yeah, and here's the Among Us in the water that I built earlier in the last 100 days. Day 484, and I remember something that I wanted to do for a very long time, and that was add stairs to my mine area. It makes it so much easier getting up and down. I even found a new cave because the main staircase originally just led into a water cave. And though it's not much at the moment, I'll hopefully fix that up a little bit later as well, and yeah, I think it looks quite good. Day 4 485, I'd like to make it clear that I'm still getting attacked by iron golems, by the way. Not really sure why. And then I had an idea to add any missing enchantment to any of the armor that I had. So after buying three mending books, I started combining. I only had two more books to combine, but that does require me to get an extra 15 levels to do it. So I went back into the to grind some levels. Day 488, I didn't even realize that I got to 20 levels. I was still going, but admittedly not for long. I still knew what was going on. And day 490, and it was done. Get to sneak around really quickly. 
the last thing for me to do was to get the maps done. I did also get a nautilus shell. I don't know how you pronounce them, but a shell from a drown. So I don't know if that's useful at all, but maybe I can get a bunch. I can make a conduit or something. I don't know. I would have finished quicker, but these stupid iron golems won't stop attacking me. My God. And on day 490, it was done. And the absolute last thing I did on day 494 was I spent a few days collecting melons and I was able to get the floor in. One day, this will be a beautiful melon castle. For now, it's just a beautiful melon and floor. Anyway, on to the last couple of days. Day 498. And I think we can all agree that we're done here. Island tour, anybody? Let's do an island tour. First of all, uh, let's introduce our black cat friend. Uh, I actually googled this. Uh, they can only spawn in villages during night, during like perfect moon. So I guess it spawned the night before and I just spotted it in there. So very lucky. At least that's my understanding of it. I could be wrong. Uh, someone could correct me in the comments if they'd like to. Uh, oh god, there's a lot to get to. So let's start on uh, this side of the island as we normally do. Start Starting off with our little Steve boy. We've finally fixed him, so he actually looks more like Steve. Uh, definitely looks better. And the little dock over here is quite nice. Leading onto this tiny little boat. I think I will add a boat here at some point to make it more of like a, a docked area, a ship area. But I actually quite like this boat. Maybe I could do a bit better on the roof over there. But for what it is, it works fantastically. Obviously, we got this new bad boy, the silence trim. If it was up to me, I probably wouldn't have made it white. But considering that I literally don't have any other options other than white or copper and copper did not look good, this will do. Oh, look at the new pig step area. Now we have 100% more pig step. A bit like the Iron Sour one if you look at it that way. But hey, you know, it's it's pretty good. Obviously, Dr. Haven's house, you will have seen him sat in there a couple of times throughout the video and probably the next couple of videos. Uh, but it's quite nice. It's a very simple design, the floor design and everything, but it's much better than that flatlands, I must say. Don't think I did really anything over here or really over here, but I did do this, which is it's not really much, but I'll still show it. Just the stairs that go all the way down to the bottom. I'll probably make this like a full mineshaft area in a, a future video, but for now, uh, it's just some stairs for ease of ease of the world. This is where pretty much the free big builds have come from, so you got the melon farm, uh, obviously, of course. You got me. It does look a little bit silly, depending on the angle you look at, but like, trust me, that is a pixel by pixel recreation of my skin, so that is technically correct. It just looks a bit silly. The melon platform, one day I will have a nice melon castle there, but for now, it's just have to be a platform. I've tweaked with this one like quite a few times uh, to make it look as good as possible. I do think it looks better than the just it, just the egg by itself, which was like there, and now the eggs over here. Uh, it actually looks like I've slain a dragon. I don't know. I, I quite like it. Maybe maybe you guys can tell me if, you, if there's anything I can do to improve it, but I, I quite like it. And then finally, the last few things over here was the new islands. Obviously, Birch Tree Island actually has birch trees now, so go Birch Tree Island. Uh, Alcacia Tree Island is it looks a bit like swampy and stuff, which I quite like. That's not Alcacia. That's as Azulia. Azulia? Azalea? Azalea, sorry. There we go. We got there in the end. This is Alcacia. What I like about this one, this was actually completely an accident. I like that you have to go across this bridge and then I made a tiny bridge here. I wasn't f intending on putting an island here at all, but I don't even know why this oak sapling is not growing. Do I have bone meal? I don't. But yeah, that's uh, that's Oak Tree Island. We'll probably add some more to it. I'm really disappointed about not getting bees, but I, I don't know if I can based on the biome because it's all lukewarm ocean. So unfortunately, that's probably not going to be a thing. And I think that's about everything I did in 500 days. I've done 100 to 500. Today is 501 and I have 499 days to go to successfully, you know, complete the title of the video. Surviving 1000 days in hardcore Minecraft. Just by looking at this island, you can still already see how much I've done. It's an insane amount of work. Everywhere you look, there is something on this island and that's crazy. It's a couple of things I want to talk about before I jump into it. Number one, the seed. Oh my god, here we go, the seed. Everybody wants the seed to this Minecraft world. I promise I will give it, but I don't even know what the seed of this minecraft world is uh i knew a long time ago when i got the world but yeah the seed i promise at the end of this video i will give you the seed to this world and you guys can make your own videos on this world and i'd love to see some of your videos but we'll, we'll talk about that a little later secondly i have so many big plans this is going to be one of the most daunting tasks i'm ever doing because of how much work it's going to take but I'm, I'm all for it i mean 500 days in one video is going to probably be a very very long video considering each one of them is over half an hour each 100 days per video and i'm doing five of them so if you're telling me this is going to be over two hours, so uh, strap in, get some snacks. But yeah, we have so many different things to do, so many things to build or trying to accomplish or everything like that. You know what? Let's just get right into it then. Start on day 501. The first thing we're going to look at is that pesky mob grinder. Here we go again. So I don't remember exactly which video it was, maybe 200, maybe 300 days, but I built this and I never was able to get it to work. And a lot of people in the comment section have come and they basically 
basically told me that I've made mistakes with it here or there. And I've done my best to follow pretty much every instruction that people have given me. I use slabs, which I've now replaced. I've done everything I can. It just never worked. My argument is because of all the caves in the deep that are unlit. That's why there's, there's too many areas around for stuff to spawn. Everybody else seems to believe that there's a different particular reason. The last thing I keep seeing people saying to why this isn't working is because in here, I didn't put trap doors down where the drop is. Sorry to burst your bubble, people. There has been trap doors in here for the past 100 days. Uh, unfortunately, I just forgot to show it, but this has been here for the past 100 days and this thing is still doesn't work. So uh, I'm sorry to say, people, this is just not going to work. It is unfortunate because it would have been very useful, but yeah, this just doesn't work. I don't know why. I just wanted to show people that to make sure that I'm not ignoring them. I read all the comments, I promise you. I'm not trying to do it for more views as people have accused me of doing it. Uh, this just doesn't work simply because there's too many caves underneath that's causing mobs to spawn. That's the reason why this isn't working. Are we done with the mob grinder now? I'm officially done with the mob grinder. I've been tempted to take it down. I'm not going to lie. Anyway, moving on. And so on day 502, I created the classic haven and to-do board. I mean, can't be that classic since I haven't made one in a while, but you get the point. It's just a way for me to write everything down that I want to do between now and day 1000. But what are these crazy tasks that I'm wanting to do? Well, my friends, I think we need to get the experts in here to explain it. Tough, like I need to give him an introduction. Wow, 1000 days. We did it, peeps. <laughs> I'm gonna get paid. So when we began on day 501, I set myself nine challenges, all of which will definitely take a lot of time, but all of which I'm fairly confident that I'd be able to do. Let's quickly run through them. Firstly, at the end of the 500 days video, I began working on a melon castle. At this point in time, I only had the platform completed since I ran out of time, so I will want to finish that by the end of this video. I thought it would be cool to see how many advancements I'd be able to get between now and the end of the video as well. I know I won't be able to get all of them, but as many as I can would be cool. The villager house is definitely a little bit cramped and I really wanted to improve their bases. I mean, they have been complaining enough about it. So what I'm wanting to do is to basically make my own villager city of sorts, basically create their own island for them all to live on. So they no longer have to live in a, what, 10 by 10 house? Yeah, it might be better for them. I also think it would be kind of cool if I can get a monorail kind of deal set up on the island. I'm not exactly 100% sure what I mean by that, but I'll add it onto the do board for the time being. And the final four tasks require context. For the past 500 days, barring the one time I left to go to the stronghold, I've never left the island. Yes, I've technically caved and gone to new dimensions, but I've never gone more than 100 blocks outwards from my island on the surface in the overworld. And last time I asked you guys if it would be okay for me to search the oceans of this world. To clarify, I wouldn't be allowed to search any lands, but any body of waters would be okay. And the best way I could say the response to that question was, well, for every one person that said I shouldn't be able to do that, there was at least a hundred more saying that it would be fine. So if you have a problem with this ruling, then you can blame the commenters of the last video. But from this point onwards, I'm allowed to leave the island to search oceans, but only oceans. I'm not allowed to enter any other piece of land, any other structure or anything like that. It's just the water and what's inside the water. I imagine flying over the lands with an elytra is okay on the condition that I don't actually step on the lands itself. At least that's how I was able to find more oceans by flying over them. And with this new ruling, it does give me some new options. Firstly, I want to get myself a sniffer egg. I can't really get a camel, so I'll have to settle with the new mob of the Survival Island series being the sniffer. After that, I want to see if it's possible for me to get the brand new seven pottery shards. I want all of them, and I didn't think that one would be too hard. And finally, the last two tasks, though I will go into more details a little bit later, I should be able to get two more trimmings now that I can search the ocean. Meaning my pink house of loveliness may need to be tweaked a little to fit them all in. But that is the nine tasks that I am wanting to get done. Pretty simple, really. It'll just take me a lot of time to do. All right, let's get on. I began day 503 by making as many fireworks as possible before heading out into the world. For those who didn't see the 500 day video, I did actually find myself a ruins towards the end of that video. So I'm going to go and see if I can find that again. I also found myself a shipwreck where, well, that was easy. Also, it may have taken 503 days, but I got potatoes. That is crazy. Anyway, after checking the ruins, I'm going to be honest with you, there wasn't really anything here, but I did get my first shards. So that was a good start. After searching around more on day 504, I found myself an ocean monument. I decided not to check it out just yet. I might want to get water breathing potions for that one. And hey, there's literally a second one right over here as well. That's pretty cool. I did also find two ruins over here, but neither of them had suspicious sand. That made me think that this area would have been preloaded from, I assume, some caving trips. And so I decided to head further out to see if I could find myself some fresh ruins. I really don't need this flesh. Oh no, my sword! On day 505, I was able to find myself a new ruin and this one did actually have some suspicious sand in it. I was able to get myself two more pottery shards. You never know, it could have been more, but I did accidentally break a couple of suspicious 
suspicious gravels like a smart person would. And then on day 506, I decided it was time for me to quickly return home. I put away the stuff that I had found so far, trying to remember where my brewing stand was. It did take me a second, but I did end up finding it. I grabbed the necessary stuff that I needed, and then I started brewing away. Took myself a nap at the same time. Sure, why not? And on day 507, with the potions brewed, off we go. When I did get to the monument, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what happens here. We murder ourselves some elder guardians. Weirdly enough, I found some suspicious sand here. Now, I'm fairly confident that monuments can't spawn suspicious sand. I think what happened was a ruin spawned inside of the ocean monument, which I thought was kind of cool. Could be wrong, though. Also, let me point out that despite the fact that I am full netherite armor with protection 4 on everything, these elder guardians, they do damage. Anyway, three elder guardians later, and sadly, there was no trim. Hey, at least there was that second monument over there. Three more elder guardians, and still no trim. I was still exploring the oceans on day 508. I did get myself a new pot shard from this ruin over here. Also, quick side note, I have very recently been informed that they're called pot shirts, uh, but I think we can all agree that that sounds really dumb, and I'm not going back through literal pages of script just to change the word shard to shirt, so yeah, get over it. And searching more ruins on day 509, not only did I get myself a couple more shards, but I was able to get a sniffer egg. Smells interesting. Why, why are you smelling it? I also got myself a new shard. Wait, no, never mind. I already had this one. I did get myself a second sniffer egg, which I'm pretty sure is quite rare to find two in the same ruin, but then we move on. For the time being, I was done searching ruins, so I decided to head back home. It is also worth knowing that I did pass an outpost and a jungle temple along the way, but as agreed, I'm not allowed to search them. I, I ain't a rule breaker, even though it is very, very tempting. Oh, hey, I'm home. Look at that. On day 510, I counted the pot shards that I had. I had six, and there is seven. So, of course, I am one short. Anyway, I duplicated the trims. I just need some diamonds for some diamond armor. Though I did spend a couple of minutes looking inside the trimming house to see if I could find a good location to put the new trims in. After figuring that out, I decided that mining diamonds wasn't really something I was wanting to do at this point. So, let's just trade for the diamond armor instead. I was able to upgrade a armor villager that was able to give me full diamond armor, but I didn't have enough emeralds to complete the trades needed. Luckily, I made a second armor that trades iron, and I have all the iron in the world, so this should be pretty easy. At least I believe so on 511. Here, let me just quickly run over to the iron farm, and oh, oh, so I do. Should have done this ages ago for the record. A couple of trades later, and the helmet was done. A few more trades, and we are completely done. Now I just need to go and get myself some neverite armor, and so it was time to go into the nether. Once I saw out my food, it's been a while since I triggered the semi-auto farm. On day 512 into the nether, we went to pick ourselves up some ancient braid. Now I need to get myself the equivalent of two full sets of armor, so that means I need four ingots. Here's a couple of highlights of me just mining some ancient debris. I'm gonna be honest with you, it took a little longer than expected, but we was able to be completed by day 519. I got back home and started cooking on day 520. I grabbed myself some gold, made myself the ingots, went AFK, sure. And 20 minutes later on day 521, I came to the realization that I don't have any upgrades, and so I'll need at least 28 more diamonds to complete this task. You know, it's, it's annoying, but I'll be honest with you, I prefer being forced to do this than just being able to do it naturally. I feel like it just adds more to the game. To be fair, it wasn't too bad. I mean, the first vein of diamonds, thanks to the fortune, gave me 11 diamonds, so I was basically halfway done there. And it was only the next day on day 522 where I found myself another vein that got me 20 diamonds. And the final vein got me a grand total of 38 diamonds. So, uh, yeah, definitely enough. When I got back on day 523, I only had lapis as a trim color, unless I changed up one of the armor sets and actually add a neverite trim, which I decided to do. After a little bit of faffing around, which included me swapping where exactly the armor trims were, I was done with the armor trims. I can say, theoretically, I have got every single armor trim that I can get without being able to search the iron, which, you know, is definitely an impressive feat. But in case you don't believe me, let's quickly check in the expert. So, as of right now, I have the end city trim, both ancient city trims, the ocean monument trim, the nether fortress trim, the shipwreck trim, the stronghold trim, and I am wearing the bastion trim. That is eight out of the possible 16 trimmings you can get in Minecraft. The other eight that you can get in the game all require land access. One of them you can get from a desert temple, a pillager outpost, a woodland mansion, a jungle temple, and the other four can be found in suspicious gravel, which was the main reason I actually asked to search the ocean, but these particular suspicious gravels can only spawn in trial ruins, which yet again require land. So, I still think I've done an impressive job to get eight full trimmings and basically all of them full neverized, so uh, yeah, we'll just have to settle with 50% here. I realized that 500 plus stays in on 524 and I still get a lot of enjoyment by just replanting the crop. The 
semi-auto farm admittedly isn't great. I've made much better versions in newer videos, but I still like it as a first attempt. After that, I was just wandering around. I'm not really sure what I was doing. I did have a good look at the 500 day map, which uh, yeah, definitely looks good. On day 525, after making a couple of adjustments to the to-do board, I started looking at advancements, what I would be able to do and what I wouldn't be able to do. The one that caught my eye was the rare trimmings one. I was so close to being able to get all of them, but unfortunately, I'm not able to get Vex or Wayfinder, so unfortunately, can't do that one. I was actually surprised with how many I should be able to get here. Like, eating every food, most of them could be done if you ignore the actual animal foods that you need to get. In theory, I should now be able to get every cat as long as they spawn at the village. The one I did notice the pottery one, I remembered that I need to actually make the pottery stuff at last. I am missing one though, and after having a quick look around, I found out that I am missing the plenty shard, which can be found in cold ocean ruins. And so I quickly grabbed my fireworks again and remembered a bed this time and headed out into the world. On day 526, I found myself a brand new cold ocean ruins. I forgot to bring the brush. 527 and it feels like I was just here. Anyway, let me uh, let me go ahead and make a couple more fireworks before heading out again. I found a new new ruins on day 528 and had to deal with a little bit of a drowned infestation. Nothing too bad though, but on my second suspicious gravel, I got myself the plenty shard. Let's head home. It's always funny that the first thing I see when I fly back every single time is the Among Us thing. I don't know why. Day 529 and I decided to make the pot straight away. Not like it matters at all, but I put all the cold old pottery shards together and all the warm pottery shards together it makes no difference whatsoever but to me that's very satisfying i also will never forgive the man that decided that only making seven pottery shards rather than eight was a good idea like seriously now where am i gonna put these bleeders hmm i don't know I ends up deciding on the boat because sure why not and we can finally clear up the board next up let's make sniffer island and so on day 5 30 let's get to work it's crazy how good swift sneak is like it makes this so much easier. I am literally flying around. I've done this a few times now, so it was pretty easy enough to just basically remake it. I also had the perfect amount of dirt needed to fill in the island that I made, which uh, was completely accidental. By the end of the day, I had the top and the sides of the island completed. Nice. Anyway, I connected the bridge to King Pedro's Island. Don't worry, he said it was cool. And with the bridge done and the grass in, I of course added some lanterns and the sniffer eggs were down. And before any of you say it, I am fully aware that they hatch faster on hay bales. I just don't care. Not like I'm in a rush to do, you know, anything. I also remembered on day 532 that I have Oak Tree Island. And well, I was wanting to get bees at some point. So I want to have a quick look to see if I could get them. Oh, wow. I picked up an apple. I'm literally getting PTSD from just holding this thing. Well, I replanted the trees, hoping to get myself some buzzy bees. And yeah, that I decided that whilst I'm waiting for the sniffer eggs to hatch, I'm going to unclock some of the auto farms. Let's start with the iron farms. Just so much iron, it's kind of crazy. And also, look at how much bamboo I've got. Also, a decent amount of melons, I must say. You know what I realized on day 533? In any normal video, I would be about 33% done. In this case, I'm closer to about 6% done. So uh, isn't that nice? And now we wash the sniffer eggs. I wanted to actually get myself all each of them hatching, and he did take most of the day, but boy one was able to hatch. And straight after, boy two. On day 534, I decided let's tick off some of those advancements. I thought at the start, you know what would be really easy to do? Bullseye. It'll only take me a couple of seconds, you know, just to get the bullseye, and then we'll be good to go. At least that's what I thought. And then after many, 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 many shots later, I didn't get it. Of course I didn't. And after spending about two seconds trying to get it on day 535, I decided to give up and do something else. How about we try and get the advancement Caves and Cliff? If you don't know, basically you have to land in a water source from the sky limit, but that water source has to be at the lowest point in bedrock. So it was a simple case of digging all the way down to bedrock, and then I got to fly up all the way to the top, and then I started building up to the top, but unfortunately for me, I ran out of blocks, so I had to fly all the way back down, and then I went to go and grab some blocks before flying all the way back up. <gasps> And then I got all the way to the sky and live before I drop down the land of the walker and get myself the advancement caves and cliffs. It's really easy enough. So I uh, made a mistake on day 536. I wanted to go check if any beehives had spawned. The, the simple answer was no, but I was hearing a skeleton below me. And uh, while the footage speaks for itself, it was not my brightest moment.
had to quickly fix that, I also decided to go and get the advancement you need a mint. That does require me to respawn the dragon and so it was back to the nether and back to the end. I mean it was really simple stuff, I got the advancement pretty much straight away and I dealt with the dragon with ease. And the only real advantage of killing the dragon again was using the XP I was able to fix all, all my gear so uh, hey that's good. Right then what's next? Um, Sniper's duel, hey that's pretty simple. And the best part was that there was a skeleton in the mob grinder. So I just quickly opened it up, got enough blocks away and a couple of shots later it was done. For the first time in the series the mob grinder has actually been useful. Alright then bullseye time, it is round 3. I am 3 nil down. Alright I really didn't want to do this on day 538 but there is actually a way to rig the bullseye advancement which is a little bit cheaty but I just I can't get it otherwise. Basically what you could do is you can put a trap door on top of the target block and then lead a redstone thing to go about 30 blocks away and if you put arrows on top of the trap door move 30 blocks away and then trigger it the arrows will drop on top of it and actually give you the advancement i really didn't want to do that but I, I mean i spent three days doing it give me a break and next up i decided to deal with a couple of trident ones the only problem is that for all of them i needed lightning and by the looks of the sky i don't think there's gonna be any rain anytime soon so let's take a break from advancements for the time being i decided to check how many melons i had and crazy enough after collecting them all i had exactly five stacks of blocks which i thought was kind of cool and so on day 538 i started putting the melon castle together the first thing i had to do was actually even out the platform i accidentally made it two blocks short on one of the sides and five stacks down there is so little done i am gonna need so many melons it's actually kind of crazy there is also this one advancement where you literally need to spawn an iron golem not like i already have an infinite amount of them already and though i have the pumpkin seeds i've never actually gotten myself a pumpkin this entire time so let's quickly plant them in the sniffer aisle and just well wait for them to grow i also got both of the new sniffer plants that you can get from the sniffers and uh, i'm gonna be honest with you i'm not really sure what either of them do but uh well here, here they are there, there's the sniffer plants on day 540 and you know sometimes i like to look at the first 100 days map and just remember that i started all of this with just a single piece of bamboo i feel like i've done some crazy things with that accomplishment alone in fact this day was kind of just a lot of remembering the armor stand dr havenan's classroom big me ah, that's a good time to be honest with you, I was just killing time until the pumpkins grew, which unfortunately never happened. Whilst I'm doing that, I may as well unclog the iron farm again. So for the most part, it was pretty much waiting around, but sadly, I didn't get any pumpkins. I decided on day 541, instead of waiting around, let's just do stuff. I'm very glad I picked up a lodestone all that time ago, so this is another advancement done. And for the time being, I think I'm done doing advancements. I felt like a cage to swap in my task would make it less likely to get burnt out on this world, at least in my head that made sense. And so after going back to the board and having a look at my options honestly there wasn't too much that i wanted to tackle at the moment though i was able to add on a couple of more things that we'll definitely do later as well in fact the next day i literally was looking around the island to make sure i had everything i wanted on the to-do board just to add for it basically seeing any extras i wanted to do just make sure i have everything written down so i don't forget anything i had a grand total of one thing i want to add a second boat to the dock and then even later in the day i came up with two so that let me with four ideas extra in total but the big task that i saw that i decided that i wanted to get out of the way was the fact that I wanted to make a multi-layered beacon. Iron at the bottom, then gold, then diamond, then neverite. I originally wanted to make a full neverite beacon, but I know that I don't have enough time, but that's that's just crazy. Come on, guys. I thought it would be funny to put it on top of my head, you know, the giant head that I've got, and so I began putting it on there and basically measuring it out. The only thing that's worth mentioning is that it's an even number, which means I'd have to make it 10 by 10 at the bottom. It also means that I would need four beacons at the top, which means I have quite a lot of work to do to get this done. If the beacons wasn't enough, I'd also need 12 blocks of neverite, yes you heard me, blocks, 36 blocks of diamond, and 64 blocks of iron. Lucky for me though, I need zero blocks of iron because I have that all already. But yay, I guess. It kind of looks dumb without the rest of it, doesn't it? So I decided to bite the big bullet first and go neverite mining. Well, I wouldn't even want to do this myself. Like, I'm looking that I'm the thinker and Havers the doer because this, this is crazy. Anyway, I'm just here to tell you the maths of actually getting the neverite blocks needed 12 neverite blocks is actually much more complicated than it sounds for every block of neverite i need nine neverite ingots meaning that i need 108 ingots to make the 12 blocks in question because you need four ancient debris 
used to make one ingot, that means I need to get myself 432 pieces of ancient debris to complete this task. To round that down, that's 6.7 stacks or 6 stacks and 14 pieces of ancient debris just for these 12 blocks. Great news though, I already have two pieces of Neverite scrap. So uh, yeah, I don't know how this is the second time I've gone Neverite hunting in the first 50 days, but let's just mine away and hope for the best. Six days later, day 550 and honestly I was doing pretty good. I had 47 pieces of ancient debris down, which was honestly a pretty decent star. Sadly though, I was down to my last carrot and so I decided to head back. I don't want to starve out here and so I got back, set off the cooker and I took a comfy nap. Hey, future haven here. Um, I actually forgot to include in the script that I got the ocean monument trimming. I don't know when exactly that happened, but uh, here's a clip of me doing it on the correct day. Uh, shout out to my editor Gray for figuring this all out. They're, they're a legend. And so on day 551, after reloading the food, I grabbed the scraps. With these scraps, I only need six stacks and one scrap to go. So I'm going to be there in no time. And well, there was no time like the present. So I made sure my pickaxe had some good durability. And listen, my journey to 1000 days is going to take a very long time. And I want to show you as many days as possible. But unfortunately, at this point, there is going to be a lot of Neverite mining. And so I'm just going to go ahead and skip those days. Because let's be honest with you, nothing is really different between the days themselves. Everybody, everybody okay with that? Everyone cool? Cool. Anyway, eight days later, day 559. And I got myself a stack of Neverite. And I really needed a break from Neverite mining. So I decided to head back. I need to also quickly fix my pickaxe though. So I'm going to mine some quads. By the time I got back on day 560, I realized that, hey, it was fun. Friend. It was the perfect time to get the two advancements that I needed. Sorry, villager guy. I'm sure you won't be that useful. And now I can take a quick nap to skip the next day. Throwing out the Neverite on day 561. And I realized that I'm always wasting a lot of Neverite. I should definitely save it, but nah, too late now. And with the Neverite cooked, I only need 349 Neverite scraps to complete this or five stacks and 25 debris to go. So yeah, I need a break. I'm not about to do that. And the villagers are just getting louder with the complaints. So I guess it would now be time for me to actually build them a new home. Now, did I have a plan on what I was going to do to actually make the village for them? Absolutely not. But what I will do is I'll just start making a nice ring out of quartz and then we'll just take it from there. By the time I had the ring done, it was night. And then it was to the interior of the ring. I decided to just use some cobble slabs. Unfortunately, the ring was quite big, so this was definitely going to take a minute. However, with the beacon and swift sneak, it definitely was going to be quicker than it normally would be. I had it finished by the next night, night 563. Took a while, but we got there in the end. On day 564, and I finally have a new use for acacia wood. Fences. Like, guys, please don't complain that I'm using orange fences. It's not that bad of wood. Actually, I've kind of grown to like it. Nah, who am I kidding? It's the internet. Anyway, I've got the fences around on the ring. Definitely overestimated how many fences I'll need. And then I went to the villager house and started counting out how many beds was, and then was going to work out how many houses I was going to make. I counted a grand total of 35 beds, and I thought that if I just make myself 18 houses and put two beds in them, that would be quite nice. Now, let me be clear before I begin. These won't be 18 of the best houses you'll ever see, but they are going to be houses for them to live in. So uh, I guess it's now time for a classic building montage. <laughs> And though it's not complete, here we are. So uh, I ended up, instead of doing 18 houses with two beds, I have done 12 houses with three beds and then just got some extra beds. So there's all, all these houses are filled with three beds. Is the design good on them? No, not at all. I mean, they'll get them more space so they shouldn't complain that much. So this, this is pretty much where they're going to live. And then over this side is where like the jobs are. At the moment, it looks really basic. I'm not fully done, but I just want to get like the basics done and then come back later and make it more fancy. But for now, this is what we've got. One thing I kind of underestimated 
underestimated is I have no idea how I'm going to get them over here. I really didn't think that one through. Anyway, let me go ahead and try and figure that one out and we'll take it from there. After setting up the customary bamboo bridge, I decided the best way to get the villagers over there was minecart. So I set up a temporary track leading from the new villager area to the old villager house. And so on day 573, I tried to set this up and I'm going to be 100% honest with you. This was a bloody disaster. They wouldn't get close to the track. So I tried to put water down to push them closer, which definitely worked. But then they clogged up the tracks, which just, oh my God. And then I was able to get some of them through, but the tracks weren't correctly. So they were falling off the edge because they were stuck in the minecart. They were now drowning. Now I just have a bunch of dead villagers. And what's even worse is the ones that did survive are now like out and basically running around like the elder. But this was honestly awful. I only began having some success on the next day, day 574, but it was incredibly short lived because now when I was able to get them through for one reason or another, they were now coming back. Basically what was happening over here was the mycos were landing on top of each other and they were clogging the top of the track. So this wasn't working either. I did actually come with a very simple solution. If I put a water bucket down here, it should push the minecarts along. It's very simple, but hey, it worked. But with that water bucket, it was finally coming together. I just have to occasionally go down there and unclog them. And honestly, this was good to go. I kept going on day 575. It was mostly fine. And honestly, this was just more annoying than anything. But after learning the basics on how to do this, I very quickly picked up the pace. At least until one flew back and I started getting really concerned that I messed something up. But I guess I just got unlucky because one got stuck at the end. I don't know how this happened, but I'm not complaining because it was really easy to fix. And with the last villager sent through, I can now clean up the minecart and get rid of the bridge. Can't even let this guy into the villager area. What a small chap. I quickly looked around to see if I could find any more villagers on day 576. These guys over here made it really easy since they were trying to get into the villager area. Unfortunately, these guys over here was on the other side of the island and I, I just couldn't be bothered to try and get them over. So I am um, dealt with them accordingly. Take that as you will. One did take refuge on the boat that I built all that time ago. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't necessarily mind him there. He looks like he kind of belongs there. So I'm just going to leave him as is. The only thing left in the old villager house was an island golem. Keyword was. Now, I don't want to bring this place down, but I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this building. I'm sure I can find something. For the time being, let me quickly go ahead and grab some food. I'll go ahead and grab a little bit of iron. I can breed the villagers with the food that I picked up and I can get the advancement for spawning an iron golem. On day 577, after slowly putting my stuff away, it was time for another Neverite mining adventure. Also, the villager on the boat, he was there a day ago. I have no idea where he's gone now. I looked everywhere for him. I think he may have drowned. I don't ask me how. Anyway, as I've already mentioned, I do need a lot of Neverite. I decided that with my Neverite mining trips, I'm just going to get a stack at a time and come back later. So I began mining away on day 577. And apparently, eight days or two and a half hours is the lucky number. Day 585, and I had another stack of Neverite scraps. So it's time for me to head back. By the time I got back, it was the night of night 586, and I began cooking on 587. With the extra debris I was able to get, I only need 254 to go, which is basically the equivalent of about four stacks or just under. Also, ages ago, I have replaced the blast furnaces with normal furnaces when I was cooking terracotta and I forgot to replace them back. By the time I noticed that she did replace them, uh, the Neverite had already cooked up, so I kind of wasted a little bit of time there. If only I didn't have all of it in the world. I finished it by basically checking on my melons. Had another two stacks work, so I decided to add it to the castle. It only put a dent into the amount of work that I want to do on it, but for the time being, it's good to go. There was pretty much one last thing I wanted to do on day 588 for the village area, and that was to add a beacon. I could have replaced the beacon in the old villager house, but I decided to just get a brand new beacon. And so I flew over to the Never Fortress to get myself some wither skulls because I'm going to need to go ahead and kill a wither. Literally the second wither skeleton and I got myself a skull, so this was a good start. In fact, this was quite a quick venture altogether. It was only day 590 or two days later and I killed two wither skeletons uh, five minutes apart and I got myself two more wither skulls. I literally had all of them very, very quickly. I even managed to get back the same day. Honestly, this was very quick compared to some journeys I've done. And on day 591, well, I'm going to be honest with you, this is the baby way to do it, but I fought the wither. I ate a god apple and then pretty much went to town on the guy with my sword. Don't take that out of context, please. Seriously, I barely even took any damage by the end of it, and that was pretty simple, so I grabbed the wither scar and headed up. I was one glass short. Of course I was. Also, I thought you could use dyed glass for some reason. I was very wrong. Anyway, after cooking up a single piece of glass, I got the beacon down, and I started using the iron box that I collected over the time to set up a new beacon. I don't know why, but setting up a beacon from the top going down to the bottom felt really weird to me. Like, I'm so used to going bottom to top, especially when it was underwater. It wasn't too bad, though, because it is just a beacon, but we got there in the end. On day 592, I decided I wasn't fully done with 
with the beacon, so I decided to make this bamboo fence thingy. Technical term, I know. Basically, I just didn't like the way the beacon looked when it was just floating, so I started adding some bamboo. Ow! Stupid puffer fish! And it is done. I don't know why I killed the fish on the way out, but there you go. You can also see the Among Us statue really well from here. Anyway, I grabbed some things to make a little bit of a garden, made that little garden area with some trees, and it was done. For the first time in what felt like forever, I could finally take something off of the to-do board. I just wanted to show you on day 593, by the way, that this is a lot of my footage, just me storing stuff away in the storage hut. Like, seriously, the amount of times I did it, it would probably be 100 days itself. Anyway, with another task done, then I'm going to go, say it with me, never ride mining. That is lava. Hey, straight to never ride as well. That's cool. I knew pretty much straight away that it was going to be a good trip for me when within the first five minutes, I had four separate veins of never ride, and that's excluding the one that I found straight away. So I had hope that I could potentially be my eight day timer. And boy, did I. It only took six days this time. So I'm going to see if I can be that next time. But in six days, I was able to get myself a stack of never ride. I very quickly head home where it was day 600, the first milestone of the 1000 days video. I cooked up the never ride. I now have four stacks of scraps ready to go. I only need about two and a half more stacks and I would be good to go on that side. But I really take a break from never ride mining. And besides, today is a very, very special day. It is map day. So just like every 100 days, I got myself all maps and did a check out of the area, created the four maps in the four corners. And I finally had a use for the old villager house. I decided that I was going to put the map boards in there and I'll fully fill it up by the time I reach day 1000. I had the first map in and would you just look at that? Honestly, the map so far hasn't really updated that much other than the new villager area, but it's definitely a noticeable change. 100 of the 500 days done. Only 400 to go. Oh boy. I did come to a decision on day 601. I really wasn't happy with the fact that the beacon was on top of my head. So for the time being, I think I'm going to move it. I want to make a proper platform for it at some point. And I'm thinking that I should use blackstone for it because I haven't used blackstone yet and I don't know why. For the time being, I think I'm going to put it over here. I'll put some temporary blocks in for the time being. I also did another quick check of my iron situation. Yeah, I think I'm good. And so on day 600 due when I entered the nether, I started looking for blackstone. I'm not going to lie. I'm not 100% sure exactly where blackstone spawns. At the top of my head, I want to say basalt biome, but I really wasn't sure. It didn't matter in the end though because I was lucky enough to find myself a bastion. I'm sure they don't mind if I just borrow their wall, I guess. And once I had enough, I headed straight back home and started working on the pathway pretty much straight away. It is really basic, but like I say, I've never used blackstone, so it is going to stand out when you look around the world. Though on day 603, okay, some people might be annoyed at me here, but I decided yet again I wasn't happy with the location, so I'm going to move it. I decided to just leave the bridge as it is because I will put something there at some point, but I want to put the beacon somewhere else. It took me until day 604 to settle with this location over here. And once I had it all in with lanterns, of course, I think it was going to look really good when I get the beacon in. The most important thing about this beacon is that actually it is technically smaller than the beacon I was planning on top of my head. So, uh, means I've got less to build. Yes, it does, Haven. Yes, it does. We need less neverite. Now, the original beacon that I was planning to build on top of my head actually had a base layer of 10 by 10, and obviously that means that every base above it is bigger. In case you don't know, the bottom layer of a beacon is only supposed to be 9 by 9, so that means I was shorting the amount of everything I needed by quite a lot. So, at the top of the beacon, instead of needing a 4 by 4 neverite grid, I now only need a 3 by 3 neverite grid. Doing the maths, including the neverite that I've already got, I only need 74 more ancient debris scraps to actually complete this 3 by 3 grid. Definitely less daunting than the over 2 stacks that I originally needed. I will go and get that neverite real, real soon, but for the time being, I actually do need to restock on my food. I was waiting for the farm to finish doing its thing, but it was taking a while, so I just said I'm going to come back to it later and replant. And so it was into the nether on day 605. Now, it usually takes me about 8 days to get a single stack of neverite. In this particular case, I need a stack and then 15 extra pieces of ancient debris, so it was definitely going to take slightly longer at least. Also, if you're ever wondering what I do whilst I am neverite mining, uh, well... Oh Yes, yeah, that's about right. So this one took even longer than usual. It was day 617, about four hours it actually took me to get the 80 pieces of ancient debris needed. I mean, I had one spare. I'm sure I could do something with that. But I was able to get back the same day and I started cooking them away. Even might just sneak in a little nap. Isn't that cute? And on day 618, I don't think I've had as many neverite scraps in one place like I have here. Unfortunately, we now have to do more maths and I'm luckily not a nerd, so I'll let the doctor take over. That was a little bit 
bit rude. Anyway, as I mentioned, the top layer of this multi-layered beacon it needs to be netherite. That is mostly soldered, so let's talk about the gold layer and the diamond layer that's underneath it. Let's start with the diamonds because that's pretty straightforward. The second layer of a beacon is five blocks by five blocks, which means you need 25 blocks of that material to make it. 25 blocks, nine diamonds each. 25 times nine means I need 225 diamonds or three and a half stacks to make the five by five layer. The gold layer is actually a little bit more complex. Obviously, you have the seven by seven layer, which sits underneath it, or about 49 blocks. 49 obviously times nine, because that's how you make a block, means I need 441 gold ingots to make the seven by seven layer. However, I only have neverite scraps and not neverite ingots, and you, of course, need gold for the neverite ingots. The grand total that I needed for the neverite scraps was 324. That would get me enough scraps to make enough ingots to make enough blocks. Of course, you need four neverite scraps to make the ingot, but you also need four gold to make the ingot, which means I need an additional 324 gold to make the ingots as well as make all the layers. Adding all that together means I need 765 gold ingots or just under 12 stacks of gold to actually complete this beacon. Oh boy, that's a lot. Now, I could technically make a gold farm, but I never have done and I really fancied a bit of caving, so I decided to. Also, for anybody wondering if I have enough iron, I do. I'm not going to go caving just yet, though. First, I'm going to tend to my farms. I was able to get all the carrots and taters back down, and I might even start baking some potatoes. I don't know why I haven't upgraded my food source from just your carrots in a while. Day 619, and I checked on the melon farm, and I noticed that the minecart was full. It was picking up all the melons, but wasn't depositing them away quick enough, so I wasn't getting all the melons that I needed. And so I made a couple of tweaks. I basically added five additional hoppers to the system, so hopefully more will now fall in there, which will hopefully clear out the minecart. It is also worth mentioning I was able to get myself a couple extra stacks of melons during that time. Day 620, just, just blaze it, I, I guess. I started adding the melons back down to the castle, and I finally reached how high I actually want to make this melon castle. Now, I do need an additional five or six stacks to complete the walls, but we are making some decent progress there. Now for something a little more, uh, sus. Now, to be fair, for those who watched it in the Trio Survival Island, I did the exact same thing. Maybe you should go check that out at some point, but I really like this build, so I am decided to build it again. Here's a completed version on day 622. It does look very, uh, sus. I'm not sure what I'll do with it, but I'm just happy that it's on the island. And with that done, I just can't put it off any longer. I need to go caving, get myself plenty of diamonds, and even more gold. So on this day, 622, I headed into the caves. So there was a lot of caving here, and not really much happened during the in-between time, so I'm just gonna update every five days, starting at day 625. Within these three days, I was able to get myself two stacks of gold, but only three diamonds, so uh, not a great start on the diamonds, I must say. Five days later, on day 630, and I had seven stacks of gold, so I was actually very close to completing that one, and I also was able to obtain 50 diamonds, so I was definitely making progress at this point. By day 635, I had got all the gold that I needed, which means I just need to go ahead and start mining some diamonds. The easy part of this is that I can now lower my Y level to go to diamond level Ks. It should be quite easy to find diamonds at this point. And by day 640, I am not kidding, I was one diamond short for being completed here. So I have to keep caving for one diamond. Oh, I wish I was kidding. Lucky for me, it only took until the next day, day 641 to find the extra diamonds. And our 39 day caving trip, that's right, 39 days were finally complete. I got back home the next day, day 642, and I began cooking away all the gold. Now that one extra diamond I got, it was enough to get myself one extra diamond block. So I guess I miscounted that one. And for most of the day, I was pretty much just really excited to get this beacon base. So I was just waiting for the gold to cook. I didn't mind waiting out on day 643, but here we go. I got the nine neverite never blocks done. I just need to wait for the last of the gold to cook, which didn't take any time at all. And now for my creation. It took many days of neverite mining, gold collecting, diamond obtaining, iron. Well, well, I had all the iron, but I finally created my masterpiece. Missing something. Son of a, I forgot the damn bacon! Well, I want to get that sorted as quick as possible. So on day 644, I went straight back into Never and started killing some wither skeletons. I got my first skull done pretty quickly, all things considered. By day 645, I had got the second skull, so good progress so far. And in three days in a row, by day 646, I had gotten my third skull. Let's head home. By the time I got back on day 647, I headed straight into the caves and started fighting the wither. I totally didn't do the baby way by trapping him in a cave 
for something. No, guys, don't, don't, don't call me baby, please. I also failed the potion kill. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really letting the team down here. Well, let's get back up and cook up some glass. I have zero obsidian. Well, I guess we're going back into the caves. In this case, I actually grabbed a bunch of obsidian. You never know when you might need obsidian in the future. Also, want to mention, I don't think I've ever mined obsidian with an efficiency 5 netherite pickaxe. Look at it go. It breaks so quickly. That's awesome. And the big day, day 648. Let's make the beacon. I don't know why I only thought I needed free glass. Hmm. But here we go. Didn't have anything to activate it. All right, now we do. <laughs> Look at it. Oh, I'm like a proud dad who's just made his creation like a bench or something. Oh, it's fantastic. I also did check on the melon farm again, by the way, while still getting clogged even with the additional hoppers. So I decided to just cut to the chase and add about 50 more hoppers and hopefully that will fix it. I was still working on it on day 649. I started by testing it by throwing in my baked potatoes, but for some weird reason, it kept getting stuck on this particular hopper. It didn't take me long to realize that the reason it was stopped is because of the redstone. So I had to tweak it a little bit and move some redstone and move some hoppers around. I was able to test it again by throwing in this obsidian and this time it has worked. We have lift off. Now there's no way I don't have enough hoppers here there's like literally a stack in there if this somehow still gets clogged i don't know what to do that being said of, of course there was a problem pretty much straight away luckily for me it was an easy fix though though it does look like there isn't enough power to get it all the way from one side to the other so i will have to sacrifice at least one of these hoppers for a powered rail it is finally working though so we should be good to go and on day 650 firstly i made myself quite a bit of infantry space and then i started making as many melons as possible and i was able to get the walls on the castle as high as i want i just need to add some details but of course that will require more melons, which I now don't have. We are getting there, though. It's worth mentioning. I also remember to check the to-do board for the first time in forever. It doesn't seem like there's many tasks here, but each individual task will take a very long time, so uh, that's fun. On day 651, I decided yet again I was going to try and see if I can get some bees. Now, as far as I'm aware, the only place that bees can spawn is on birch trees and oak trees, so I went to each individual island and chopped down all the wood and replanted the saplings. Just got to keep hoping that 5% chance will happen for me. I also checked in on the melon farm yet again and still looks good so i'm pretty happy with that one and then finally i went to check on the villages to make sure everything was okay over here everything seems fine though there is a lack of cats which is a bit surprising usually i'm infested with them on day 652 i need to get myself some spruce woods for my next build so let's chop down some trees how in the world did the sniffer get out sneaky little thing well can't really call them little but you know what i mean anyway there's a really simple way to get a lot of spruce wood you just have to make a four by four and then bone meal it a bunch and that way you'll just have all the spruce wood you'll ever need after spending pretty much the entire day doing this uh yeah i think i i think i have enough wood and on day 653 well it was finally time to build the second boat i've been talking about doing it for about 200 days at this point so let's do it you know the best way to do it with a nice simple building montage Well, I had it completed by day 657. I have to admit, it is much more basic than the first one, but I think it does the job for what I wanted it to be. We're going to finally cross that one off the board as well. I also want to mention as well that the auto farms that I have on the island are working fantastically. Like the bamboo farm is fantastic. This iron farm is just, it's phenomenal. I've never seen as good as an iron farm in my entire life. And it's so small and compact. This is just a great iron farm. Like here's me accidentally making a bunch of shears by accident, but I just, I just didn't care because I have so much iron spare that I could just throw these shears out and just get more right this is just fantastic a neat little trick that i learned on day 658 is that you can use glass panes and put them on top of a beacon to change the color of the beacon and the best part about that is that you actually can't see the glass panes, so it just looks like the beacon color is actually different so after faffing around a little bit i got a green one over there there's a yellow one right there the blue is in the middle there's a pink one over there and then on the far side you can see the black one nice multicolored beacons great anyway let's focus on getting some good food in here so 
I quickly grabbed some taters and started cooking those bad boys up. I went back to the Merlin Castle on day 659 where I was able to finish the outer walls. I can finally start working on the inner walls and actually make sort of a wall thing like castles normally have. Of course, I ran out of melons very quickly. I mean, shocker, I know. When I did go back to the melon farm, though, I noticed a lack of minecart sounds. And when I went in there, yep, the minecart just stopped for some reason. Not really sure why this happened, but I just simply restarted it and it seemed to work fine again. So I'll just have to keep an eye on it, I, I guess. I also knew during my times, I definitely saw a new cat in the villager area. I was 100% confident of it. So I went over there with my fish and yeah, I don't know. I, I just couldn't find this cat. Either I'm delusional, which I don't think I am. I'm fairly confident I saw the cat, but uh, yeah, no idea where it went. Day 660 and merely was a little bit of a slow day. I started by checking the newly grown trees and sadly there was no beehive of them. So I decided to do a little bit of research. I am right in saying that beehives can spawn on birch and oak trees, but it looks like they can only spawn in specific biomes. And this entire island is either beach or some form of ocean. So I don't think they could spawn here sadly. So I am just gonna cross off bees from any future tests that I wanna do. After that, I was just looking for the next location of where I wanted to build. And I decided that what I wanna do is extend the original blackstone bridge into the water a little bit and then i'm gonna do a build there so i needed more blackstone so on day 661 i returned back to the nether i actually found a basalt biome this time and i was right this is where you find the blackstone and so i started of course mining away once i had enough blackstone i did actually spend a couple of minutes fixing up my pickaxe by mining myself some quartz before flying back home i got back on the same day though the sun was setting i did get to work on day 662 by extending the bridge far into the water and after spitballing a few ideas i decided to settle with the this wooden frame kind of thing. The idea is that I want it to look like it's in some sort of box. Obviously, I'll have them extend themselves and there will be some stills that go down into the water makes me it look like that's what's holding up the house. I had quite a lot done by day 663. I mean, here, here we are. Basically, the, the inside is done. I just need to do the roof and a couple of more details would be good to go. That being said, it is pretty basic, but who cares? I quickly went back home and grabbed all the cats and then found them a nice little spot for them all to put in, whether it's under places, over places, but nice little place for them to live. And on day 663, before I got some carpets in, I did a little bit more interior design, and now it was time to work on the roof. And oh boy, was it a big job. Sadly, I can't show you because I accidentally stopped recording here and didn't start recording until now, day 667, where I had it completed. That definitely says cat up there. Trust me, I'm the one who writ it. I've shown you the bottom floor, but this is basically what I've got up top. Again, it's really basic, and other than me adding some fences just to make it look a bit more natural, this is pretty much what the cat house is gonna be. Not perfect, but I can't complain. I can go back to the board, cross it off. I did quickly check to see if any more cats spawned in the village, but unfortunately, no. There is plenty of golems, though, for anybody who's counting. And so on day 668, I decided to let's go back and work on a couple more advancements. The most simple one that I found that I could do was the two that you could do that involve striders. One of them does require you to make a very long lava path in the overworld, so I did have to make this path down here and then work on clearing out the water. And with that done, I now just have to keep going into the nether, picking up a lava bucket and putting them down. And on day 669 with the lava done, I just had to quickly go back to the nether and grab a strider boy. Now the first advancement is as easy as could be and the second one wasn't too much harder admittedly. I got him into the overworld, did one little small ride and perfect. You you live here now. Uh, you can, you can have fun. The next advancement I was looking for does require me to get some crying obsidian and I believe that bastions should have them. And I know there is one nearby that's where I got the blackstone from and as far as I'm aware I didn't explore it yet. So get in there and search all the chests that were there. Admittedly, there was a bunch of cool, useful stuff in there, including this chest right here, which honestly would be the perfect chest under normal circumstances. It had pick step, it had food, it had a trimming, but it only had two crying obsidian. The one thing that I needed, it didn't have, which was very unfortunate. I definitely looked out though on day 670. Whilst looking for a second bastion, I actually found myself a broken never portal in the wall. And this broken never portal had exactly enough crying obsidian for me to actually be able to make a respawn beacon. By fully maxing out a respawn beacon, you have yourself another advancement. Not too shabby, Haven. Not too shabby. You know, you think 671 days into this world, I would know this storage hut like the back of my hand and where every single chest is, but just, just no, you'd be entirely wrong. Now for something that is actually quite evil, and when I say quite evil, I mean very evil. Firstly, I had to make sure that the king didn't get involved with this maliciousness, so I'll uh, just tie him to the fence post and lead him away. Now, you may think that it was me who tied him to the fence post, but that is fake news. Don't tell to 
the process, it wasn't me, but I did lead his children over to this new area because I'm going to need a lot of chickens for my new plan. I wanted to make a automatic chicken farm. Hey, there's a wandering trader over here. Man, his stuff is just useless. Ah, King, how did you end up attached to this post? I was at the other side of the island the entire time. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Never mind, let me just free you really quickly. So I got to work on the evil contraption on day 672. I'll show you this little mini Taj of me making it. For the most part, it was relatively simple. It also relatively small, so it didn't take that long at all. I did kind of mess up by letting the chickens out at one point, but don't worry, that won't happen again. Here it is happening again on day 673. Cool. And with the chickens in and everything good, as far as I'm aware, this should be good to go. I guess we'll now just um, wash and wait. Yeah. Day 674, and I think it was working. I mean, there is a baby chicken in there, so as far as I'm aware, it's good to go. I actually left for like two seconds to check on the iron farm, and when I came back, the chicken had gone, and now I had cooked chicken in there. So, uh, yeah, I would say that my KFC machine is now working. In case you're unsure how this is working, basically what will happen is the chickens up here will lay eggs and it will be shot by the dispenser over here. The babies will spawn and they'll be perfectly fine, but the moment they grow to adults, the larva above it will kill it, dropping the chicken into this hopper, which will put it in this chest. Meaning, in theory, I have unlimited chicken. I'll leave it to do his thing and check it a little bit later to see how much chicken he does give me. I also realized at this point that all of my gear wasn't maxed out. I still only had efficiency four tools, which is just what am I doing? Finally get to use this village trader hall. It's only been forever. I already had one efficiency four book, so I ended up buying two more. I didn't need the third one in the end because my pickaxe was already efficiency five, but I was able to up my shovel and my axe to both efficiency five as well. Day 675 and I cleared up the temporary chicken farm where I left the chickens to originally. I checked on the king. Luckily for me and everyone around, he's doing perfectly fine. How did you get out again? How, did, how are they escaping? Just get in there. You know, why are they even just get in there? And then I found myself another cat in which I quickly tamed. Sadly, this was a cat that I already had, so I can't work towards the catalog advancement, but I don't have to worry about that for now. What I should worry about instead is that I now have quite a few extra builds, but no paths leading towards them, so I need to grab myself some extra oak wood. Once I had a good bit of oak wood on day 676, I was just running around the island seeing if there's anything that needed a path leading to it, and then of course I built a path straight towards it. It was a pretty simple day, and I made sure everything was good to go, but uh, there you go. Now the paths are all sorted. I checked on the melon farm again on day 677, and yet again, I didn't hear my car sounds. For some weird reason, the exact same spot it was stopping both times. My only theory is that over time, it kept slowing down, and so I decided to add an additional redstone track on there to hopefully keep it speeding up. Hopefully, this will fix it. Again, we'll have to check it in a couple of days. For the time being, let's grab the melons we can do, carry on building, and I'm out of melons. I mean, I should just copy and paste the audio from earlier, let's be honest. I head back over to the village on day 678, where I had found myself some cats. Two new cats, two new variants, so I really wanted to tame them as quick as possible. I quickly grabbed the fish, I got over to the first cat, and he barely took any fish at all. The second one, and uh, come on. Oh my god, you fat little kid. Will you just, oh, thank you. I don't know how many fish that was, I'm sure Gray will tell us. Thanks, Gray. And I put them in the cat home. For the record, that is five cat variants now done. Only six more to go. I didn't really do much for the rest of the day. I did nearly eat my god apple, which would have been funny. But for you guys, that would have been furious. So I have a little bit of a problem entering day 679. Yeah. Here is the to-do board that I made. I think it was like the early 500s of everything that I wanted to do. Pretty much all of these that are on here uh, require me to wait a bit. I'm mean by that is uh obviously the monorail would like to add something to go all the way around the island that you can sort of look at a monorail but i don't want to build it just yet just in case i like start expanding and stuff uh the melon castle i'm just waiting for melons to grow so there's not really much to say there the advancement hunt is there is still stuff to do but a lot of it is just kind of like tedious or just a bit you know of a pain so i'm kind of holding off on that just for as long as i can uh, the hall of haven is what i've dubbed it it's basically i want to build something that like holds a bunch of cool stuff that I've collected over the time, like, but that, again, that needs to be done towards the end. Fan made build, I think I'm going to just wait until 1.20 officially comes out, because I am still technically in the snapshot, as you can see at at the top so once that happens then i'll then i'll do something because i have an idea for that uh, the, the point is, is that the the five things on here either require a bit of waiting or you know i don't want to do for quite a while 180 days in just under i'm 
kind of out of things to do right now. I may need to take a, a, a little break and think about some stuff that I need to do, but that's kind of where my mindset's at at the moment. Look how far we've come, by the way. Look, look how little we had on here. I mean, if you ignore the Among Us, that shouldn't be there. But look, look at that. We, we freaking, we had nothing. But there was a melon farm, like, right here. That's where my farms used to be. Oh, my God. I still left the melons. How long were the melons here for? The melons were there on free... What? I only changed the melons from day 500. I had that terrible melon farm 400 days in. That's kind of funny, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, that's pretty much my, my live update. That's currently what I'm thinking, is that I've pretty much done everything that I wanted to do. That doesn't require me to do a lot of waiting. I guess I could go on an achievement hunt spam, I guess, but there's not a lot of these I can do. I mean, to give you a rundown, I can't do the beads ones. Can't do that. Can't do that. I can do that, but again, that requires a lot of waiting. I, I guess I could technically do that. Uh, I could do these two. Again, no, no. And now I thought I could do balanced diet, but I just can't because there's no way for me to get like beef or mutton. Like I, there's no way for me to get them off the top of my head. I guess I could look into it a little bit, but still. Only easy lines. I hate that advancement. I guess I'll do it at some point. Uh, then there's furious cocktail and how did we get here? I tried to do how do we get here before in the 1,000 days. The only other 1,000 days I've ever done failed spectacularly. As far as I'm aware, I don't think I would be able to do this. Now, I could be wrong, but the, the one that's sort of making me think I don't think I can do this is jump boost because I believe you need a rabbit's foot and I can't do that. There, there might be certain ways to do it, but that's that's the one I can't think of. I'm not even sure I could do furious cocktail, actually, now that I think about it. Other than that, maybe I can do everything else, but I, I don't know. There's a bunch here. I could technically get... Is it a bird by looking at a spyglass? Like, looking at a bird as I'm flying over, but I feel like that'd be kind of cheating. I don't know. Could do that. I just have to head back to the Asian city. Monsters Hunted, I thought I could do. I don't think I'd be able to kill a husk or a stray, so that's kind of out the window. Power books, I guess I could do. I don't really think I can get a total of a dying. Actually, that's not true. If I can get a pillager attack, which if I remember correctly, I've had one. That's why I've got that flag. I've won all the way back in the first 100 days. So that's uh, that's fun. Uh, the smithing with style, I can't do because I can't get Vex or Tide, I believe it is. I don't remember which one it is. I, can't, I know I can't get two of them, but I can get the other six. Uh, I mean, I'm not really bothered about these. I guess I could technically get them, but I'd have to get a pillager. So that's pretty straightforward. Can't get that. Can't get that. Can't get that. Got all the end ones. I've already been through this one. So there is a handful I can still get, and there's a handful that I can't get. So I guess that's probably what I'm going to do next. Yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these are going to be a bit painful. I guess we'll keep moving. So the first thing I did on, say, 680 was I started looking for some glow squids. I thought maybe below me in that water cave that I searched all the way in the first 100 days, there was some glow squids, because there were some there when, obviously, I searched it originally, but I couldn't seem to find any. I then wondered that over these 600 plus days, surely at some point I would have picked up a glow squid ink, but, uh, no, I couldn't find any of the chests around me. I did have a quick glance around the oceans nearby, but couldn't see anything shining. So fortunately, I'll have to do that one later. For now, I guess I'll just settle with tactical fishing. I haven't done that one for some weird reason. Since I can't find a glow squid, let's move on to something else. How about killing a mod near a skull catalyst? The only problem is the only ancient city nearby me is not nearby at all. So I had to go ahead and do a little bit of a run. Now, I have no idea what day it was when I got here. And in fact, as soon as I did get here, I basically nearly spawned a water straight away. So uh, that would have been fun. But we'll take the skeleton skull though. Don't know why I left them before. Now it actually took me a second to find any mobs whatsoever, but eventually I was able to find a single zombie. I just had to lead him over to the catalyst and there you go. That's another advancement done. All right, now we just got to head home. All right, bear with me. By the time I got back, it was day 683. I should say night 683. It's way past my bedtime. Next up on day 684, I need to get a villager into the sky and soul soil unfortunately doesn't do it. I quickly popped into the nether, had to deal with a couple of piglings not a problem i grabbed myself some soul sand and began to leave what the f was that 
After that, I started going up to make a platform at the sky limit. Did you know that it takes absolutely forever to get up here? At least we could jump down and that was kind of cool. Day 685 and up we go. I forgot for the soul sand you need to make all the box source blocks or else the bubble thing doesn't work. But I felt that that would take too long and make too much of a mess. So I just decided to do it in the normal way. Admittedly, this was uh, probably slower in the grand scheme of things. But uh, you know what? We're, we're making progress up and it is A-OK. -okay. We got it by the end of the day, which was nice. I came back the next day on day 686 just to basically clean it up. It was a Mindley and I saw. The villager made his own way down. And uh, yeah, this took most of the day. Literally just digging this all the way down. Yeah, it was uh, longer than I thought it was going to be. And just as I was leaving, I found myself an orange cap with the sniffers. Of course the orange cat would be there. Of course it's an orange cat. This is orange cat behavior. If you know, you know. He was very quickly tamed. It was a perfect end of the day. <laughs> Ah, woo! I quickly returned to the village on day 687 because I was looking for more cats. Sadly, there was no kitties around this time. So instead, let's check on the chicken killer. Only six cooked chicken, really? Yeah, that's not really that good. Now to do an advancement that I just absolutely hate. I need to get myself Uneasy Alliance. If you don't know, I have to get a gas to the overworld and kill it. And I really don't enjoy doing this one, but uh, here we go. So the first task I did on day 688 was to get myself some more obsidian. I ended up mining myself a stack and then I found myself a giant cave where I began to make myself a giant portal. Now, I don't know how in the world I managed to get attacked by an enderman up here, but I thought it was cool enough to show. Also, I wish I could tell you that I perfectly planned this out and just got a perfect size, but no, I was just lucky and made the portal at the perfect size, so uh, go me. And as I went through the portal, it ended up teleporting me back to my original portal, which is uh, not good. I ended up going back through, which took me all the way back to my spawn island. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll have to try again tomorrow. I got back on day 689. The first thing I did was I mined a bunch of obsidian because I remember that I have to make the portal on the other side as well. Then using a overworld to never portal convert, I was able to figure out exactly where this portal needs to be, about 50 blocks away from my first portal. Of course it was. With the portal made, unfortunately there's a lot of gaff around it, so I am going to have to go ahead and clear that out. Now, wall blocks are quite annoying to destroy, but Google says that if you use a hoe, then you should be able to break them quite quickly. So I'm going to quickly head home and grab myself a hoe. It took me a second, but here we are on day 690 where I cleared it out. Also, if you want to see something funny, over there, just up there, there's where my main portal is. And uh, if you look all the way over here, a turtle has made an absolute run for it. Don't know why the turtle's so determined to get away from me, but it is. Also, I fill in lava, so uh, yeah. Over an hour, but on day 694, using my third fishing rod, I was able to get a gas into the overworld. Thank Christ, uneasy alliance is done. I will avoid doing that advancement for as long as possible. Now with day 695 right here, I decided to do something a little early and that was make the maps for the 700 day board. I had a couple of big plans when day 700 here, so I decided to do this one early and then just basically wait out until day 700. The map for the most part looks relatively similar other than the giant lava bar on the top left and the layered beacon you can see at the top. Honestly, a good map looking overall. And though I was planning to wait until day 700, I was actually surprised that when 700 came, well, it was a big day for Minecraft entirely. Just before we get to day 700, we have something to do. For those who saw it when I did it four days ago, I put this out. Uh, do you want a chance to feature in the 1000 Days 1.20 Survival Island? Post your IGNs below and pick, and I'll pick a lucky winner. Now, I think a couple of people got confused, and people were like, oh, pick me, I want to play with you. Unfortunately, that's not what I meant. I simply just wanted your skin, because, moment of truth, I'm going to build someone's skin in my in my Minecraft world, and I think that's going to be kind of cool. Just as a thank you to one of you guys for, you know, being so supportive over 2023, it's been, it's been a really good time. So what I've done, as you can see, there are 67 comments here, and I have a random number generator that goes from 1 to 6. So one of the random people from here will be picked and obviously that means that this guy is one this person is two this person is three I'm just going to randomly put a number generator out there and basically pick a winner. Just want to give a quick shout out to this guy, Knight, who says he loves my videos. Just thank you, Knight. As you can see, Knight hasn't put his IGN in the comment, which means obviously I can't really pick anybody. If that does happen and I get a comment that is they don't really say a name or I can't find the skin or something, then I will just pick the person above. So in this case, if I did get number two, then obviously I would pick, I don't even know how to pronounce this guy's name, but uh, you know, there, there you go. All right then, random number generator, let's do this. 38. All right, let me just quickly count 38 down. 35, 36, 37, and lucky number 38. I eat potato chips. Great name. 
Uh, well, if, uh, as long as they have a decently alright skin, I, they would count as my winner. Alright then, let's, let me just quickly check their skin. You know what? That's a pretty, pretty dapper skin, uh, Potato Chips. Uh, yep, so congratulations to Mr. Potato Chips, Mrs. Potato Chips, Potato Chips themselves. I'm gonna build this skin in, in the Survival Island world. So, uh, you know, thank you all for leaving your comments. I'm sorry for everyone who didn't get picked, but yeah, this looking person, let's, let's build a skin. So, Minecraft, uh, released 1.20 a couple of days ago. It was June 7th when they released it. June 8th and June 9th, I was working on a different video, which, uh, you know, 24 hours in Minecraft, not my smartest decision. Today is June 10th, and yeah, look, look at me go, look at, look at all, look at all this schnitzel. 1.20 is officially here. That is wild. I remember starting this in the first ever snapshots. What, five months ago? And we're actually now at 1.20. We're also 700 days in to this world. Starting this video on day 500, so we're 200 days and we've got 300 to go. My goal is to get this out by the end of July. We shall see. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to build, what was his name? Potato Chips' skin. Uh, I need to find a good location. Let me just quickly check the map. I'm thinking I might do it over there where the cherry uh, tree was where there's that little island thing that might be a good idea if not i might build something past the mob grinder and build it there i'll uh, i'll decide when that time comes but yeah we are officially in 1.20 took forever to get there but here we are so uh 300 days to go looking at the stuff as well i mean pretty much most of these will be probably done in the next 100 days if i so desire so i really need to find some new stuff to do but uh that's for future me to decide not currently so after looking at a couple of different spots I ended up deciding to build it past the mob grinder. I will need to extend the bridge, but just couple, so that shouldn't be an issue. You know what is annoying me on day 701? Let me just quickly move the day counter and this, for this right here, it won't go away until I break wood. Whose idea was that? I'm 700 days into this world and they think I need tips on how to play, like seriously? So after very quickly extending the bridge, much thanks to Swift Sneak itself, I took another quick look at the skin again. It is mainly black, which means I'm going to need a lot of black dye. The original plan was for me to just fly around and kill a bunch of squids, but I I did have a problem. I have very little gunpowder and so little sugar cane to spare. And because of how little fireworks I have for the first time in this world, well, I'm gonna need to set myself up a creeper and a sugar cane farm. Because to be honest with you, these 23 fireworks that are on my name at the moment, yeah, it's not a lot. Let's do the easy one first, which is the sugar cane farm. Out of all things that I don't have on day 702, I cannot believe cobblestone is on that list. To be clear, I do have plenty of deep slate, but you need observers and pistons for this type of farm that I'm wanting and they only accept cobblestone in the crafting recipe and so I'm going to need a bunch of gobble. I started mining away until I got 20 observers and 28 pistons. I decided on a good spot to get to work on this on day 703 and after faffing around a little bit, I got to work placing the sugarcane observers and pistons. I did however make one mistake. I made this farm 28 long and for some weird reason I thought that I had enough observers and pistons to do that. But since this is a double sided sugarcane farm, I need to get 28 more. I swear to god I'm not that dumb usually, but I do need to go and get more gobble and then on day 704 after making enough that i needed i got them all in then i just had to get the redstone on there i did have to extend the platform a little bit then i went to pee apparently it was a long pee and by the time i got back on day 705 my idea was to have a water source pushing the sugar came into these hoppers this will lead to an individual chest which whilst not the most efficient in the world it really doesn't need to be because let's be honest sugar cane farms nearly fill up so quickly now it didn't necessarily look that amazing but it's more about getting it to work rather than making it look fancy and that's that's the exact reason why it's taken me four days. Day 706 and the hoppers were very annoying to place. You have to shift in the water, but that will make you go down in the water. And if you don't shift at the right time, then you'll go into the hopper. It was a pain. Also, a wandering trader showed up. He was about as useful as the others. I threw my axe and my pickaxe into the hoppers. It, of course, works like a charm. Let's get the sugar cane in. Wait a second. I've put the pistons and the observers one too low, haven't I? Well, I guess I'm going to have to restart that one. What I will admit on day 707, that is nothing. And I mean, absolutely nothing is more demoralizing than having to redo a bunch of work that you've just done. But here I am doing it in a not-so-live audience. I would be more mad, but to be honest with you, I've got 300 more days to go before this world ends, so I'm not really rushing to do literally anything. At least I will be done soon once I get a few extra blocks, because apparently I'm just a few blocks short. Let me just quickly grab that. I'm great! Now let's get the sugar cane in. Perfect. Very soon I will want to make it look a little bit more fancy, but for now, it's good, yeah? That's German for it's good, yes? At least I hope so. And then on day 708, final couple of touches to make it a bit more fancy. I added some bamboo to the walls to replace the cobblestone. I kept not bringing enough, so it was a lot of back and forth.
and forth, grabbing more bamboo blocks. But by the end of the day, I was happy with everything that I had replaced. It was a very easy, very simple farm, but it will give me the sugar cane I need. Right then, next up, the creeper farm, and oh boy, I'm not looking forward to that. Do you know what I learned on day 709? Did you know that you can repair shields in an anvil with wooden planks? Because I, I had no idea. I decided that I didn't want to keep doing that, though, so I'm just going to put mending on my shield, and then it should never break. I also, whilst looking at my armor, realized that I was missing an enchant, and that was fawns. Lucky for me, I had a villager in the village trader hall that was trading fawns for ebooks, so I am a few emeralds short, which really wasn't a problem. A new wandering trader showed up as well. I don't even know why I'm checking at this point, I'll be honest with you. I bought the last book and started adding it to my armor. At least I would, but I'm actually a few levels short because I need quite a few to get this done. Well, I can add them onto my armor a little bit later. Here we are on day 710, where first update on the chicken farm, and I'm getting plenty of feathers, but not much chicken, which is kind of the whole point. At least I was getting plenty of melons. Oh, right, sorry. <coughs> melon! I still have a long way to go on the melon castle, but we are getting there. Also, I really thought it would be a problem with leather, but honestly, these llamas are such a good source that I'm actually not struggling for leather at all, which is a weird surprise. I checked again on day 711 at the sugarcane farm. It was walking perfectly fine. Been a while since you've been in here. Well, Dr. Haven, I'm checking in. The next farm that I need to make myself is a gunpowder farm. Combining the sugarcane with the gunpowder would mean I have an unlimited support of fireworks, which means I can use my life to fly around anywhere that I wanted to. Now, I have made a gunpowder farm in the past, ironically, in the other 1,000 days video I ever made. The problem is that farm requires snowman, which of course requires snow, and to my knowledge, there's no easy way for me to really get snow, so I will have to come up with a plan B, and that plan was cats. I went on YouTube and found a nice design that would allow cats to push creepers into a death chamber, basically, so we're going to try that one out and hope it gives us a lot of gunpowder. I started the build on day 712 right next to the shoot cane farm. I guess it's time we do another build. It did tell me after building the farm that I should AFK all the way in the sky. So I AFK for about 30 minutes, which led me to day 717. And when I went down, it was the moment of truth. Zero. Oh, awesome. Great. Cool. I thought that potentially it could be from the light that came from down below it. So I decided to cover the glass and cover up the light. It was worth a go. And then I went back up and went AFK again. I left it an hour and came back on day 720. Nothing. You can see that I am uh, overjoyed to take the least. I decided though at this point I needed a break from the creeper farm. I don't know why it was working, but I will figure it out later. At least during this time of AFK and stuff, I was able to get myself plenty more melons. I had four stacks of melon blocks, and those melon blocks did quite a lot to the castle. I'm guessing that maybe a few more stacks and I should be completing with the melon castle. It's only taken a few hundreds of days, you know, the usual. I looked at the creeper farm again on day 721. There's definitely something I'm doing wrong with this. You are welcome to yell at me in the comments. Just remember that this was recorded probably two months by the time I get this uploaded. And so I made the very, very frustrating decision to basically scrap the farm altogether and look for a new design. So I started ripping down the farm. And on day 722, I had the farm down. I instantly started working on the new farm. Well, at least a mini version of the farm that I found online. I'm going to need a little bit more deep slate though. Lucky for me, I have plenty. So I got to work. Work is still trying along on day 723. The idea was the cats that I stood in the middle here would force the creepers into this gap. They would fall down this water stream, pushing them into this single campfire. It's a very very simple design, but I'm hoping that it will work. I just need to add a couple of the last touches, like adding some carpets in and we should be good to go. And the last thing to do on day 725 was to get the cats in. And once they were in their locations, I closed up and oh my god, I hope this works seriously. I mean, there is no time like the present trade out. So I went back up to the AFK shack in the sky and I went, well, AFK, what do you expect? Another hour later and this is it. Here we go. Oh my god, there's gunpowder. There's 30 gunpowder. That means I was averaging one gunpowder every two minutes, which is absolutely terrible. But for the time being, it will do. In the retrospect, I probably won't need that much gunpowder anyway. For now, as I can store it away and actually work on a bridge to this thing. I did have a sneak peek into the farm on day 729, and there was just nothing in there. I mean, it works badly, but you know, not the first time I've had a mob grinder work badly on this island, just saying. At least the sugarcane calm is cooking or growing. Yeah, I guess you don't cook sugarcane. Or do you? All of this work, these hours I've put in for one and a half stacks of fireworks, it's the joys of Minecraft. I'm not gonna lie, I took so long building these farms, I actually forgot why I made them in the first place. You see me staring into this chest, that's me reading my notes, because I was like, why, why did I do this? What am I doing here? The only other thing I did on this day was I found myself a new cat and brung him home. That's seven out of the 11 needed. And then on day 730, after realizing what I was supposed to do, I started looking for new spots for the skin, because I've 
completely forgot about the spot that I already selected. I ended up deciding we're going past the cherry trees over here. It'll be a nice spot for it. Day 731, I can finally set off into the world to get squidding. Now, I do need a decent amount to get this stuff done, so I was flying around all day just killing every squid that I could find. By the end of the day, I did get myself a stack of squid ink, which should be enough to go. And though I have the black ink by day 732, the thing that I needed to make black was concrete. And so I am going to need to make myself some concrete powder. So I entered into the nether because one of the two things you need for the powder is gravel. The only small issue that I had is that my netherite shovel actually has fortune free on it, which means the flint chance will be upgraded if I was to dig it up with this shovel. I ended up just using this efficiency one diamond shovel that I had spare and started digging up all the gravel I could. I ended up digging up about four stacks of gravel, which I'm fairly confident that will be enough. Now, where am I going to get sand from? God, the, the impossible decisions of this world. So on day 733, there was a, there was a villager in the middle of the ocean. You know what? I just don't care. And I actually flew over to the ocean ruins that was in the water because it had a sand island next to it. And I decided that I'm just going to dig up this sand island. You could make the argument that I'm using new land here. But quite frankly, I'd rather destroy this island than destroy a lot of my own island just to get sanded. Also, guys, literally, it's a small island in the middle of the water. When What am I getting from this other than sand? Once I made all the black concrete powder, I started placing it in the water before using my brain and realizing there's a much smarter way to do this by placing it on land. A little bit of water mixed into it on day 734 and I started mining it up. I even made myself a little bit of red concrete as well. I do also need terracotta and I was fairly confident I had some somewhere from when I made the pick step art. However, other than this little red over here, I genuinely couldn't find any. So I guess I'm going to have to head back into a lush cave and start digging up a bunch of clay. By the time I had that dug up on day 735, I remembered that I need to occasionally bring, break my furnaces more because the amount of levels I get from it is just fantastic. And now we wait for the clay to cook into terracotta. Whilst we do that, did somebody say a uh, melon castle? All right, let's do this. Oh, I misplaced that one. That's fine. I'll just use my, uh, where is my axe? Okay, I don't know what happened here. I just somehow lost my axe. I ended up spending a minute looking around the islands, just searching for it. I thought it was in the chest over by the cherry trees where I placed all the concrete and stuff. It wasn't. I went through every single chest in my storage shack. I was so confused where it was till I ended up checking the furnace area and found it in there. I don't know how I accidentally put it in there, but there you go. Anyway, I got the melons and I put them all down and I think one more stack will do it, boys. One more stack and I have made the melon castle. I waited an extra day, but it was day 737 where I had the terracotta cooked. Let me just grab it and... Oh no, that's really bad. And thunder, great. He's like a sleep away the day. Now, on day 738, it might not look like a super big deal to you, but the maps that were there were completely ruined. And it wasn't just 300, it was 400 as well. Basically, the maps that I had locked in there, I didn't save them because at the time, I didn't realize you could actually do that. So when they were broken and put into the world, they updated. So now they're updated as of day 738. From what I can tell, there is no direct way to fix this. And there's no way to put them back in without loading them up for the first time as well. I did have a quick google around and found that you could technically change the names of them but you'd have to tamper with the files and stuff and i'm not sure i don't know about that one it just felt a bit you know sad so i guess i'll just go and cry in the bathtub and then when i come back i'll fix the signs and then fix the floor it was it was a sad day to behave and i will say that and so on day 739 i got to work on the skin may have left the terracotta behind no biggie definitely not my couple of days i'll say that much and so i got to work i was planning out pretty much everything that i needed to do and whilst i was doing that i actually saw some glow squid in the distance. I actually still need that if you remember, so let me go ahead and kill those boys. Anyway, it was back to work. Do you want to see a single player world lag on day 740? Well, here you go. I don't know what happened here, but there it is. The good news is this skin is actually really, really simple. It pretty much is just a suit. The bad news is that I had to get myself more black concrete. Luckily, I got plenty in the reserve, so I just need to make it and start building it again. Here is an update on day 741. The arms were completely done. There was some powder in the arms, and I felt like that added a bit of texture rather than just being pure all black so i think i'm gonna include that a little bit here there and everywhere well a little bit later at least i've still got more building to do and this was the body done on day 742 we just need to get the head on there and we are good to go also can you guys see the weird texture with the clouds i've never seen that before i got working on the face on day 743 but i did forget about the hair of all things i never actually got myself any materials for the hair so i'm gonna have to quickly stop and go and get some stuff there after getting everything i needed by day 744 i got to work the thing that i will mention about 
Chips' skin is that his hair is multiple colors of brown, so I did try to mix a concrete terracotta and wool mixture into the hair. I ended up deciding that this was a little bit too small, and then looking at the brown wool, I really wasn't a fan of it, so I decided to take that out, and I also do need to make the head a bit bigger. And here is the final product on day 745. I honestly think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna just put a couple of signs down and get the advancement. Glow and behold. Good stuff. Good day. And with another thing ticked off the board on day 746, I started looking at advancements again, seeing what I could and couldn't do. And from the surface level, I believe there is only seven more advancements I can get without breaking or bending any rules. Here, I'll let the doctor explain. So counting the advancements that I had left at this point, I believe there was 24 advancements in total. But as I just explained, not all of them are doable. For example, I can't eat every food. There's no way for me to get beef in this world. Or a more obvious one is smithing with style, something that I've already complained earlier, which requires me to use these eight trimmings, which two of them I have zero access to. And they're the ones that are basically impossible without breaking the rules. There are a couple that I could do by technically bending the rules. For example, is it a bird looking at a parrot through a spyglass or even adventuring time by entering every biome? There's nothing stopping me from flying over and then potentially picking up the biome by flying over it or looking at a parrot on a spyglass as I'm flying over it. But that still feels like I'm technically using the resources from those lands. So I made the decision that I'm not going to do that. So what are the seven that I genuinely think I would be able to do during this time? Well, firstly, I can get every single cat variant as long as they spawn at the village. There is a new one which requires you to make a chisel bookshelf and then use some redstone stuff for it. Post mortal to die with a totem. There is three that are required with a crossbow and then finally to use an axolotl to kill something. Now, there might be some tricks or ways for me to get other ones here, but again, I'm confident that these are the only seven that I can potentially get that don't require me to do any dodgy stuff to get them, if that makes sense. So for the time being, let's focus on these seven. First thing to mention on this day 747 is that I got myself a new cat. I only have three cats to go and we should be good to go. And then I did something for the first time that I don't think I've done in about 500 days, and that is to get the axolotl out of his cage. I headed over to the drowned ruin that was on the surface, and then I got myself the advancement where an axolotl and myself killed the drowned. And just like that, he went back into his cage, and he will not leave there probably for the rest of this video. On day 748, I made myself a new bookshelf. I also remembered about fawn, so I got one of the armor pieces done. I need 50 more levels to get the other one. Now, to be 100% honest with you, I have no idea exactly how to do this bookshelf thing, so you just... Oh, never mind, that was easier. You're back already? Oh my, you must have missed me. So out of the seven advancements that I said I could get, those two were easily the easy ones to get. The other five are kind of complicated, and let me explain. As I mentioned, I do have to tame three more cats, which is entirely time and look based. So there's nothing to do but wait for the cats to spawn and then tame them. The other four are kind of a pain to do. And now I could get the double phantom kill now, but I like to do all the crossbow ones at the same time. That of course requires a pillager attack. Pillager attack would give me bad omen, which means I would be able to kill a pillager with a crossbow. Obviously get the bad omen, which would trigger a ray, which would give me the chance to get a totem of the dying. And then of course I can get the phantom one at the same time as well. Now it is also worth mentioning earlier, I forgot about the advancement hero of the village. So that would make eight advancements out of a possible 25. So still an extra advancement I could get. But again, all of this stems down to I need myself a pillager attack. Now I am 748 days into this world. Do you want to know how many times pillagers have attacked me on this world? Once. And I'm pretty sure it was in the first 50 days. So my chances of this happening are very, very slim. I will say though on day 749, whilst I'm not getting the pillagers, my look with the cats is going great. Another new cat variant and two more to go. And with that cat done, the melon castle is calling me. And after doing my thing with the melons that I had done, I had done. I had built myself a melon castle. You know what would really finish off this melon castle? Of course, a beacon. What, what else do you expect? Before you comment it, by the way, day 750, yes, I'm putting a beacon in a melon castle. So what? Oh, also another meme. <clears throat> Look at all those chickens. <laughs> Nailed it. Also, I'm pretty sure the strider fell into the water and died. Uh, rip that guy, I guess. What an idiot. Great. Do me a favor and make sure to cut out this clip of me nearly dying stupidly. No, great, great. I said cut it out. Great, great, great. So if I'm right, I think this is the third, if not second time that I'm actually in the never killing with the skeletons to get myself a beacon. I mean, this is probably about the sixth or seventh time I've done it in the series. So um, did anybody really want to watch that? I'm on on no. And so an hour passed on day 754 where I got myself the third school. Nice. And then I got myself a fourth school, which was really cool. And then I got myself a fifth school. Like, what are the chances of that? The only problem is I am now basically out of fireworks. I have a solid one. So I'm going to have to run back at this point. Using the levels I got on day 755, I got thorns free on my boots. I can now say if I fully maxed out my gear, well, 
as far as I'm aware. There is a small problem though. I can't put the beacon in the center of the melon castle because it's an even number. So my only real option is to put it in the corner over here. Now it's a terrible idea. Don't worry. I think I'm going to fix it later. But for the time being, I give you the melon castle beacon. Sure, why not? I thought on day 756, there is not going to be a problem killing this wither. I've killed plenty of them. It isn't going to be a problem. I, I had to eat the god apple. If, if I didn't have the god apple, I would have died. I'll be 100% honest with you, but I was able to kill it. I headed back up. I made the beacon. I changed the villager beacon from green to red because obviously the melon one needs to be green. And of course, it was thunder. Of course. And day 757, it was a great day. I got the melon castle done. And though I will probably work on the interior a little later, I have officially completed it. Also decided to put the skulls on here. Not particularly sure why. And then just when this day couldn't get any better, it happened. Hillagers. I am such a lucky boy. And only for the second time in this world, just to be clear, 750 plus days in, I had got myself Bad Omen again. On day 758, I decided to do it. I actually triggered it from very far away. I have no idea how I triggered it from over here, but there you go. Now, to be honest with you, with the beacons that I had and the gears that I had, this pretty much was one of the easiest raids I've done in my entire life. The highlight of the whole thing was probably when a Ravager is spawned inside of the Axolotl cage and then started drowning to death. That was kind of funny. But whilst going through this raid, I was able to pick up myself five totems of the diet, which is really good return, I would say. And just like that, there you go. Hero of the village. Easy as can be. I also did something else crazy on day 758. I actually named my last chest for all three totems. I had finally done it. I also got the banners added to the house. I mean, I have enough ominous banners, so that is good to go. And then, well, there's only really one more advancement I need, and that was to, of course, kill some phantoms. So, now we play the waiting game. And it was on day 762, or night 762, I would say, and here's the phantoms. I'm not gonna lie, it took a couple of attempts, but there we go, we had got ourselves the phantom. Oh, I'm an idiot. I never got the freaking pillager one. That was the whole point of that. Oh my god, are you serious? Oh, you're an idiot, Haven. You're an idiot. How do you make these mistakes? You're seven. You're an idiot. Oh my god. Is it thunder? All right, well, good day. That was day 763. Thanks for watching. I won't show you every day on day 764, but what I will mention every single day, I am going over to the villager. The first thing that I am doing to see if there's any new cats. There is unfortunately none today, but I just wanted to show you that it was happening. I also decided, thanks to the creeper, among other things, that I really need to add some more light to the island, so I'm planning on changing that. Day 765, and I went straight into the nether. I used my silk touch ash to grab myself a stack of lodestone before heading back. The idea was to make these lamppost kind of things. They weren't anything special, but they'll do the job. I scattered them across the island, hopefully to add a lot more light to stop mobs from spawning. What I did notice on day 766 is that you see Chip's head over there? Why did I not notice that it was like one too far back? I, d I don't know why it took me so long to notice that. I thought I could easily fix it by basically getting myself a piston and pushing all one blocks forward. The only problem is the inside of the head is hollow, so that's not gonna work. So I moved on to a pretty simple plan B, and that was to remove the back layer and then add an extra layer onto the front and that should even it out my dog's just farted and it stinks oh my god <clears throat> let's try that again <laughs> um <coughs> jesus christ uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's so bad. It took most of the next day to get it finished and looking at it, it now definitely is good to go. When I saw a new trader on day 768, I was about to murder him like I just murdered his llamas. But as always, I decided to check the trades where I saw that I had myself a jungle sapling. And I can't believe I didn't notice it, but I never made myself a jungle island because I've never had jungle tree before. So after buying and saying thank you for the trees, I needed to get myself a few saplings. And so I did myself a little bit a bow meal to get myself some extra saplings. And for the first time in what feels like a while on day 769, I actually went into the caves. Of course, I'm not looking for diamonds or golds. I am, of course, looking for dirt, the real man's treasure. Looking for me, it's actually quite easy to find dirt down here. Once you do, it's in giant clusters, so it's quite easy to get a lot of dirt quite quickly. That should be enough. Let's head home. And then on day 770, I started working on the new jungle island. I was thinking about it as well, and apart from the dark oak tree, I had now got an island for every 
we was. This may be the last time I don't get a Dark Oak Sapling, or four of them, should I say. I can't believe all the things I've done in this world, and I still have got more to do. I got myself the base platform completed by the end of the day. Now to work on the underneath area. And I had all of the island completed by day 772. Well, at least the island itself, and I had to get the saplings and the grass on that kind of stuff. I started cutting down more trees. I do need to get myself plenty more saplings to actually get on there. Don't you just love watching tree leaves decay? It's like watching paint dry. It's fantastic. It was taking too long, so I started doing single trees. It didn't speed up the process at all. I spent an extra day cutting down trees, so it was on day 774 where I got myself 20 plus saplings. I got them all planted. I, of course, planted some sugarcane as well. And then I grabbed the usual suspects to make myself a bamboo bridge. And I got a start on the bridge on this day, but it took me until day 775 to actually finish the bridge. I also failed to grow this tree, which is no biggie, but I can't believe that happened. There was also a random cat on the bridge as well. No idea how we got over here. There was unfortunately a duplicate though, so no biggie. I also then tried to fix up my bow, but it did say it's going to require 33 levels to do that, which is just ew. And then I checked on the firework farms again. The sugarcane farm, looking good. The gunpowder farm, shoo boy. Iron farm, top notch as usual. Let me just show you how good this is. Not only is the chest chocker full, but literally the hoppers are also chocker full as well. I had to clean out the hoppers to actually give this a chance to actually spawn stuff in, which is just crazy. Note to self, I need to make myself this farm every single 100 days that I need iron. I finally remembered on day 776 that I wanted to actually build the skin over here. Completely forgot about that. And I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of stuck a little bit here. All the projects on the board at this point in time, I wanted to save until much later in the video. And so I didn't actually have any current projects. So actually for the first time in forever, I was just walking around the island aimlessly looking for something to do. Luckily, every single idea I've ever had, I started writing down. So on day 777, I actually came up with a plan to do a big task that I wanted to do ages ago. And that was to kill the Ender Dragon 20 times. So let me just quickly pop into the nether and run through a tunnel. Then I got lost in a tunnel and then I'll just quickly get to the end. Let me show you why. You see this thing is called the end gateway. There is two of them because I've killed the ender dragon on two separate occasions. Now the max amount that you can get of these are 20. So I wanted to kill the dragon 18 more times and max out each one of them in the end. But how does one spawn the ender dragon 18 times? Well to spawn it one time you of course only need four end crystals. I assume most of you watching this video know but for the few that don't this is the crafting recipe before it. However, I'm not wanting to spawn the Ender Dragon one time. I'm wanting to do it 18 times. So I need four times 18 Ender Crystals, which just a quick math for you, that's 72. Which means I need to make 72 End Crystals, which requires 72 Eyes of Ender, which requires 72 Gas Tears. And though that might be a bit grinder, it should be easy enough. I checked what I had that I could potentially put towards it on day 778. I had 21 Blaze Rods. So that's 42 Powder. So we're halfway there on the Blaze Rods, the easiest thing to have. I did actually have a couple more Blaze Rods and two pills here, but really no tears and a lot of pills ago. Uh, yeah, I guess we're going to go into the nether and start grinding some stuff. So I only needed 12 blaze rods on day 779. So I didn't think that would take long and well, it didn't. A whole seven blazes got me the 12 blaze rods I needed. That was the easy one. Let's move on to the harder ones. Next up on day 780 was I needed to get myself about 70 ender pearls. And so I headed towards the warped forest. And although I had that complete on day 782, another future note for myself, stop killing endermen with fire aspect. It is the worst thing you can do they just teleport away just don't use fire aspect all right let's move on well there is no easy way to do this on day 783 so uh great do you mind just doing like a gas killing montage please thank you and even though the last gas nearly killed me in the process i have done it that is 74 gas tiers. I realized I got two extra, but who cares? Who cares? That should be everything needed to make these end crystals. A 792, by the way, that took, uh, what did I start that? 781? Did that take 11 days? God, that, that, that took forever. It would have been a lot easier if I actually had the elytra, but I just didn't have the elytra. Because obviously I don't have gun, 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 well... I have some good powder now. Should have actually been picking up more as I went along. All right, let's head home and uh, let's do this. I got home by day 793, grabbed myself some food, made myself an anvil because we have a lot of dragons to kill. I really need to be careful about, oh, I can fix my boat quite easily. I must have had it the wrong way around the first time. Anyway, I do need to get myself a tiny bit of sand to make some glass and we are good to go. Okay, anyway. Day 794 and we are ready, boys. Let's do this. That could have been really bad. So this is pretty simple. I just need to kill the dragon a bunch of times. I was averaging about five minutes every dragon fight. So about four dragons per day and night cycle. And so by the 799th day, I had killed the last dragon. And that was dragon 
20. Well, 80. But it got me to the 20 of dragon kill. But just to make sure, this one with the end stone on it, that could be one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Give it a second. I'm a slow runner. Nine, ten, eleven. I think that was eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, give it a second, 17, 18, 19, and that's number 20, with obviously that being number one. We have done it, boys. We had killed the dragon a solid 20 times, so that's pretty good. Um, all right, then, I guess that pretty much gets us on. Seven, 7.99, by the way, 7.99. That took uh, five days. That was literally about five minutes per dragon kill, I would say. So, right then, we have, a, we have a world to go to. Probably just have enough time to get the map in, so let's go ahead and do that. So you know how it is. I got myself four maps, I drew them all in, and we are done. Compared to 700, it is very similar. Other than the firework farm and chip skin, yeah, there's very few changes to the map. But we are still there, and now we're over 50% done to 1,000, so we still got a long way to go. So I did take a couple of IRL days off between day 700 and 800, so when I returned on day 800, I was just getting myself re associated with the world the only real thing i did was i removed the sugarcane quote-unquote far from over here i really don't need it anymore and other than that i checked a couple of good spots just a usual basic day for me but the first thing i had to deal with on day 801 was the fact that i had zero food we're gonna go ahead and grab myself some chicken only 10 that ain't enough i also started putting new ideas on the boards whenever i could think of them and whilst i am doing that i'm gonna cook up some raw pork chops that i've had sat around for a while it was another day of me walking around so um yeah let's just skip this day as well the more i looked at the beacon in the melon castle and with day 802 the more i realized that it actually looks really dumb in the corner i think the new plan will be if i can get a second beacon and put them in the front castle thing is official name i know then i'd have two beams of light shooting up through them and that would look pretty cool it does mean i do need to get a second beacon though for the time being i will have to move this one i got the changes done by day 803 i just need to remake the beacon underwater it's still not fun compared to the first time that i did it but with the beacon done i can now show you my favorite part of the day the moment where i misplaced this glass not once not twice but three times isn't that cool on day 804 after grabbing myself a little bit of extra food i went towards the nether quick pause though you guys remember when i got those two extra wither skulls from the last time i went wither skull hunting well uh, at the time i wasn't aware that that was a thing so guess who's going to get three extra skulls from the wither when he only needs one yes it'd be me of course it is turtle's still hanging out in the nether by the way just thought i'd let you all know i go to the fortress by day 805 the first skull i got pretty quickly kind of funny to think that I would have been done at this point if I just remembered. And it was only the next day on day 806 where I got myself the second skull, also pretty easy. If it wasn't for the extra hour which took me to day 809 to get the third skull, this would have been quite easy. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Waking up back home on day 811 and I saw it. The two skulls hanging on the side of the old villager hut. And though you can't necessarily see it, you could probably hear it. It's me contemplating life. Anyway, after my existential crisis, I went to go and find the weather. Now, the last time I fought this bad boy i had to eat a god apple this time however i have totems and i actually have a smarter plan basically what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna build a ton on a little spot to spawn him and then i'm just gonna spray him down with arrows until he reaches his melee farm it surprisingly went really well like seriously i barely took any damage all things considered and compared to last time it was a cakewalk i should do this more often even if it is the baby way to do it all right let's go ahead and make the beacon uh, of course i'm one obsidian short i'm also glass short how do i not have glass i mean it's very easy to fix my glass problem and uh, oh it's thundering well I guess I'm back to bed. So I went back into the caves on day 812. I killed a mob and look at this chest plate I got. I don't think I've ever had a good chain chest plate before, but there you go. I very quickly mined the one obsidian needed and then headed back up. I made the second beacon and did the very painful job yet again of making the beacon underwater. And with that second beacon made, all is done. I've got to say, it looks so much better with the second beacon in. And then started the very annoying process of covering the underwater beacons with melons, of course. And by day 813, I had the left beacon covered but unfortunately for the right beacon i am out of leavens god i hope we've got some spare oh my god yeah i think i'm good and a little bit of melon placing and the beacon is covered the melon castle now has more melon 
that so as usual on day 849 i went to go and check out the village and would you look at that there's a new cat and best thing is it's a new cat variant i was going back to get fish and there was another cat in the water and that was also a new variant so i tamed the first cat quite easy and when i tamed the second cat that was the last of the 11 i had got myself a complete catalog i got them all in and here's a little showcase of all 11 of them are they fantastic i think this is legitimately the first time i have got this in a 100 days video which is kind of cool actually i might have got it in the advancement one well, let's move on on day 815 i realized whilst i was storing this stuff away that i think i'm fully done with fish and fully done with melons which is crazy to think about i've been using those things for like the past 500 days anyway something i wanted to do literal years ago is i wanted to make my cooker station a bit more automatic by simply adding the process of adding these hoppers and some chests over here i could set myself up a pretty simple system so i would never have to restock this ever again to be a hundred percent sure i even end up filling it with a bunch of bamboo if i have to refill this by day 1000 i will be seriously surprised i spent day 816 just cleaning up a couple of things there was a couple of things on the island that i wasn't really a fan of so i just wanted to well like i say clean it up for example the scaffolding that was hanging off of the creeper farm still not working by the way for all four people that care all the caves and cliffs tower i don't have an elytra so this is going to be a bit of an annoying thing the only way i could get up was to do this yeah this is going to take a minute five in fact by the time we got up to the top we was digging back down and it was much quicker would you believe by the time i got down it was the night and it did actually give me a chance to look at the lighting situation on my island it did look like there's a couple of spots that needed lighting like the top of the skull head thingy my bob dr haven's classroom also could do with some lights i remember to do that later but it was on day 817 where i came up with something massive what you're looking at is my original house that i dubbed the haven house and i would like it to be the haven tower basically i want to take this tower and build it all the way build limit it is going to be massive and so i went up placing the bamboo blocks that i have the idea was to place a slab each time i was five blocks up that will show where each individual room will be if i decide to go ahead with that and it did take all day worst part is i didn't even have enough bamboo to actually complete it but you know we've at least made a start on it day 818 and just look how high that is it's not even close to done by the way i also realized i'm going to need a lot of glass and a lot of bamboo to do it and since i have next to no bamboo and even less glass this is going to be an awesome time the good news is over time bamboo will collect itself so that's pretty simple so we just got to figure out the glass situation so it's time to do some maths i counted that i placed 44 glass on the bottom section so it's going to be 44 glass every single time that i go up the tower will go up 253 blocks and since each section is going up five that means there should be 50 sections to the haven towers 50 sections times the 44 glass i need per section means i need two 2200 pieces of glass that's blocks by the way i i, I didn't use paints for some weird reason make it simple for you that's about 34 stacks of glass isn't that great I'm not even gonna talk about the bamboo i need so much bamboo like to try and speed up the process a little bit i ended up just bone mealing a bunch of bamboo as well it, it helps a little bit but not a massive amount like the monumentally big task that this will take is gonna be crazy for the time being let me light up the areas that i saw darkness on so hopefully that will cover the mob spawning let me give you a visual representation of day 819 of how much sand i actually need so you see the shulker i need to fill the shulker to the brim but that would only give me 27 stacks of sand i need this full shulker and then seven additional stacks of sand to complete my task i also was able to make an additional 51 fireworks it's something i guess and well there is no time like the present let's head out and dig some sand the plan was pretty simple on day 820 i was going to fly around the ocean and find sections like this which is just on the land and then dig that up it would make it much easier than actually going into the water and digging sand directly that would slow me down quite a lot as i dig even more sand on day 821 there might be some of you thinking haven why don't you just make like a sand duping farm or something and in theory yes that could speed up the process quite a lot my somewhat weird moral code of right versus wrong makes me think that duping sand or duping items feels a bit cheaty so i'd just rather dig out the sand and gotta say it is going quicker than i expected it to as well another new area to dig out on day 822 after digging and collecting the sand i was actually already done which was surprising i thought it was going to take closer to 10 days it barely took three all right then let's head home as i was flying home on day 823 i wasn't actually paying attention to where i was going and i nearly just flew straight by the island that could have been funny and then i started cooking the glass and now listen it's literally 34 stacks of glass so i'm just gonna leave it to do its thing and come back later for now let me clear out some extra stuff that's some extra sand too by the way i also collected the bamboo at this point i'm just gonna leave it in this chest out front and come back to it later the ultimate goal is to just get as much bamboo as i can before taking this on again so uh yeah i'll have to come back to that later like i say so on day 824 i'll be honest with you the only thing i really did was add a bunch of things to the board that i wanted to do 
do. I came up with a cool few ideas that I wanted to do, but there is one that stood out to me that I wanted to do straight away. I want to kill the warden. What I realized on day 825 is that I've actually never killed the warden, at least not in the current version of Minecraft. I actually killed a warden before he learned the screech attack in a 1.19 snapshot. But other than that, I don't think I've ever actually killed the warden, so, you know, it's kind of scary. Basically, I'm going to brew all these potions and hope that's going to help me. By the time I was done, here was my gear on day 826. I'm just hoping it'll be enough. And I returned back to the ancient city by day 827. Right then, let's fight a warden. Well, I got him. It wasn't easy, but I got him. Just look, he fell in that hole. Day 828, and I've got to say, I feel a bit overprepared. Like, look at all these spare potions that I had. Maybe I just got lucky. I will store them away in the potion chest. You never know. I might be able to use them later for something. It did also cost me three totals of them dying, so I guess I shouldn't bite a gift horse in the mouth. That's not, that's not right. I shouldn't punch a gift horse in the mouth. Hmm, I think that's the same. But then I went over to the board and changed the sign from kill the warden to make a warden monument, whatever that means. Figured out the catalyst that I got from killing the warden will just go into the totem chest. No need for that chest anymore, let's be honest. I was also looking through my advancements again, and I realized at this point there isn't any realistic advancements that I could get without again bending the rules. So I could confidently say I could scratch that one off the board. The only one I could potentially get is who's the pillager now, but again, that would require a pillager attack, which I don't think that's going to happen. What I will do though is I'll quickly hover over the ones that I don't think I can get. You're welcome to look at them and tell me what I could potentially do in the comment section below. Just remember that I recorded this ages ago, so this is all long gone. But as I looked through them at the time, I was confident enough that I wouldn't be able to get any of them. So yeah, there you go. Day 829 and I realized that I never bred the sniffers and I always wanted to. So I guess I did that now. Soon those two sniffers are going to be free. Isn't that neat? Also, I'm going to sound crazy. Like I'm pretty sure I'm going to set up a Haven and conspiracy, but there's definitely something weird going on with the melon castle. Like the amount of times I've looked over it and there's just been a missing melon from it. It's like only one at a time or something, but like melons are moving. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe the melon castle is just haunted, but I don't know. I'll probably just sound crazy. On day 830, for the four people that care, I am now in version 1.20.1. That's cool, I guess. I decided to make this bridge a bit more fancier to the castle and the mob grinder. So I made myself a bunch of slabs and a bunch of walls. I know I didn't have enough slabs to complete it, and I definitely didn't have enough walls, so I am going to go ahead and mine myself some extra cobble. And with the bridge completed on day 831, I began collecting something that I never thought I would collect in Minecraft, and that is soul sand. I want to set myself up a basic nether hole and using soul sand actually seemed like the best way for me to do that. On day 832, I started building the main hub area. I am going to need some extra nether bricks so I quickly return to the nether fortress and mine a bunch of that out. And on day 833, with plenty back, I started building. Let me tell you that this hub was really, really basic. It had nether warp blocks as the floor. The walls were a mix of nether bricks and red stained glass. The corners were quartz pillars and the roof was, well, that. Also forgot to bring in a crafting table so I had to leave and come back, so that was fun. Here's the completed version on day 834. Again, basic, but I really don't care. The thing is, that was actually the easy part. Now I'm going to make some paths towards the two locations I want to go to, and uh, yeah, that's not going to be easy. They are both at least 300 blocks away, though they are in the same direction, so I started building a tunnel towards them with soul sand floors so I can run across them quickly. Before anybody comments, why don't I just use ice? I couldn't think of a way to get ice, is the simple answer I can give you. Day 837, and here's what I've got so far. Starting at the fortress, you can run across the soul sand I will need to make it much safer, but at least it's a start. Up until you get to here. Now, up there, you can't get there at the moment. I will put in some ladders, but up there is the never portal that will lead you to the stronghold. And following the path back even further, you will get back to the main portal. Pretty nifty, right? The plan is to make a tunnel basically using this design that I'm showing you here with ricks and glass on the side and quartz slab up top. That's all I got done by the end of the day. For now, I'm asleep. I carried on working on day 838. It was at this point that this task was much bigger than I originally expected it to be. I was about 10% 
10% done with the overall task and I was completely out of resources. So yet again, it was back to the fortress to mine more bricks. Hey, with a skeleton. Uh, of course, it drops a skull. The first thing I decided to do on day 839 was to get the rails in over the sides of the bridges that go over lava so I don't accidentally fall in and die. That would kind of suck. Shout out to the skeleton who took that personally, by the way. And rest in peace, homie, you shall be missed. The most annoying thing about doing this was definitely the mobs getting in the way all the time. Like, it must have happened four or five times for me overall, but it was just such a pain. But yet again, I was just consistently running out of resources. So I kept to go back and grind some more. And I'm, you know, I'm just going to skip the grind here. Here is the completed version by day 845. This trapdoor leads you down into the main never if I ever want to go in there. Running through the actual tunnel itself, the ladders are now in. I'll just show you up here that this is the main portal to the stronghold. And again, if you follow this path down, it's a very safe path all the way to the Never Fortress. It's clean, it's simple, I like it. Let's move on. Though I was thinking on day 846 that I can't really move on until I make this as good as possible. As you can see, my boots currently have Soul Speed 1 on them, and I was thinking that if I can get Soul Speed 3, I could get through these tunnels insanely quickly. Now, there is only two ways to actually get this enchantment, which is Bastions and Bartering. So let's start by Bartering. I don't know why I bothered to be honest with you this was a waste of time like usual I, I literally a stack of gold to trade and they gave me soul sand and obsidian i who needs iron nuggets i have do you, have you not seen the iron farm my guy you want to know the insult to injury once they just didn't give me anything i ended up killing them and they both dropped soul speed one iron boost which is just it couldn't be more useless if they tried to be god i hate them so much and so on day 847 i returned to a long forgotten bastion that i haven't searched in a very long time the hope was that i left a soul speed book in one of the chests figured that i never needed it i mean let's be honest what 500 plus days ago why would i need soul speed i know there was definitely some goodies that i left over from the chest during this time unfortunately there wasn't a soul speed book lucky for me on day 848 there was a second bastion quite close by and after heading over and heading to the main room there was actually a book that i left behind unfortunately it was only soul speed 2 i originally thought that was quite unlucky until i got really lucky basically i was digging for a new area to find new chests where i found this enclosure area where I found a chest that had a soul speed one book in. By combining the books together I should be able to get soul speed free pretty easy. Also got a sharpness five iron sword isn't that nice? By the time I got home on day 850 I started combining. Turning this soul speed one to soul speed three by the way cost me 42 levels. To be fair though look at that speed baby. Oh yeah play that sonic music. And that is the never hope 100% completed. I finished today by collecting some more bamboo and starting one of the towers. I may have uh, underestimated the amount of bamboo will actually need for this. This is going to be a monumentous task. The next task I decided to take up on day 851 is I would like to get myself a really easy access to levels and so I'm going to go and set myself up an enderman farm. The thing is the enderman farm that I know unfortunately requires a lot of leaves so I'm going to have to wait a minute and just shear a bunch of trees until I can get them all. It took an extra day but here we are on day 853 and here's all the materials that I need. The soul speed by the way totally worth it. Look how fast I'm going. And so I began the enderman farm straight away. I'll show you the basics, like making a pillar to Y0, getting out over 100 blocks out, building the platforms and stuff. It was a slow process, but I was just following the tutorial again. Here is the fully completed version by day 856. I do need to make the bridge a bit safer, but other than that, it is good to go. Let me just say, by the way, it's very, very loud. Insanely loud. <laughs> I also don't think I'm using the right sword for it because I'm not getting that many kills. I think I need to get sweeping edge or something. I decided to make it safer straight away on day 857. I collected a bunch of slabs, made a couple of anvils, traded a couple of bookshelves, and I also wanted to make myself an enderman murdering sword. But I need to get sweeping edge as I just said, so I am going to have to go and set up a villager to do that. At this point in time, I didn't actually have a villager that traded. Oh, never mind. There we go. Day 858 and I got the books that I needed. I combined it with the sword that I got at the bastion. And then I found llamas but i couldn't find myself a wandering trader and then i found him dark oak saplings you say well don't mind if i do anyway it was back to the end the first thing i did was set up a platform and set up an enchanting place do you guys think i have enough anvils i don't know if i have enough maybe i should go back and make some more anvils i don't know i had the safety rails done by day 859 and then i noticed that my enchant setup is missing something quite important a grindstone so now i have to go all the way back home to make a grindstone to run all the way back to place the grindstone very dumb i know i got back on day 860 and with the grindstones down i must say the swoopy gadget chairman that i put on the sword it definitely 
improvement. Like, this Iron Sword is killing at least three times what the Neverite Sword was. Like, I was back to 30 levels, probably less than two minutes. This is a great farm. The only problem is actually getting from the Enderman farm back home is a serious, serious trek. Like, seriously, I counted. It takes me four minutes from when I set off to the Enderman farm to get back home. That's just too long. I, need to, I might want to look at that in the future. I was happy to knock another one off the board on day 861. Next up, I want to make the Dark Oak Tree Island. And let me tell you something about Dark Oak Trees. Obviously, as most people know, you need four saplings to grow them. But if memory serves me well, they don't actually drop that many saplings from the leaves that they have. And that's why I decided to buy four more and then start farming them. I don't know if they made the changes in 1.20, but they actually did drop a lot more saplings than I expected to. By the end of the day, after chopping trees all day, I actually got myself 33 saplings, which is a good turnaround. And the plan on day 862 was to start the new island. Unfortunately, I only had 27 dirt. So pretty much my entire day was heading back underground and digging up a bunch of dirt. And so on day 863, I immediately took a bit of a shortcut here. There was some land near the islands already that was quite high to the surface, so I decided to just make most of the island on there already. It didn't stop me from making quite a chunky island. I'm pretty sure this is the biggest of the islands I've made so far. But by the end of the first day of building, I actually got a decent amount done. On day 864, I got the bottom of the island done. Most of these islands connect to the floor in like a sort of tile kind of thing. This particular one, more of like a hangy thing, like it's got a little bit of a cove underneath it. Still works for what I wanted to do with it. Anyway, I got the saplings down. I began lining up the bridge. The only problem was I was surprisingly out of bamboo for some reason. Don't know how that happened. Here's what I did on day 865. It was a good day. To be fair, by day 866, I did have a third of the chest still. So it was actually a pretty good option, all things considered. And now I can actually make this bridge. Now, this bridge was actually slightly bigger than the other bridges, but that's just the way it would have lined up. It would have been stupid if I did it otherwise. And the bridge was pretty basic to build. I made myself some lanterns, got them in there, and that island is now done. There is only one more to go with the mangrove. Let's hope I get that sapling. On day 867, with the spare bamboo that I collected during that time, I decided to start working on the third pillar to the Haven Towers. Every time I get to the top of one of the pillars, by the way, and I'm out of bamboo, I just realized that I really shouldn't have made it this big. This was a bad idea. Well, from one big build to another, I decided that I wanted to build a somewhat warden statue. But with the design that I found that I wanted to use, I'm going to need a lot of blackstone. So it was back to the nether, and then it was to a basalt biome. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be here for a while. I need quite a few stacks. Day 868, and yeah, I definitely got myself quite a few stacks. I also was heading home. I stopped and grabbed a couple of warp trees. I mean, I have to use it for the design as well, so I'll definitely grab that. The last thing I needed to set up this build on day 869 was a couple of blocks from the ocean monument, but that's going to be fun. So I made my way back over to it. I forgot about this villager in the middle of the water. Don't worry, bro. I'll come back for you at some point. Whilst I was there and mining up the blocks, I made a terrible discovery. I thought I need prismarine blocks. It turns out you need dark prismarine blocks. And the only way to make that is with black dye and eight prismarine shards that would give you one prismarine block. I need over three stacks of it. It would probably take me over a hundred days just to get these blocks to the amount that I needed anyway. So I decided that I'm just going to move on to plan B and make a new design. And I got one. Now you might be wondering why is it day 873? And the simple answer was I wasn't recording collecting the materials I need for it. Somehow this is graceful. I don't know why. So come on, Gray, do better. Well, it was time to work. For the most part, this build was just a pixel art of the warden's face. And then I was going to put something in front of it to symbolize the catalyst. But uh, for the most part, I was just copy and pasting from another YouTube video. Here is the completed version half an hour later or day 876. It's not what I originally wanted, but to be honest with you, I actually think it looks pretty good. And now for the catalyst. Now, if it's up to me, this thing is never going to see fresh air again in its entire life. So I'll keep it caged down here. And that is the warden monument done. Let's just clear down my inventory and clear that off the board and we are done for the day. I haven't really mentioned this yet, but in day 877, I just want to let you know that it's like really good feeling to knock something else off of the board. Like these are all big tasks. So knocking them off one by one was definitely a satisfying thing to do. Well, another bamboo trip up into the sky was on the cards. Up I go and yet again, I'm out. Now this jump was definitely completely unnecessary and I didn't realize at the time that I didn't actually have a totem in my offhand. So that could have been really, really dumb. But uh, you know, I'm too much of a pro gamer to die like that. The next task up, I want to get myself some banner patterns. Still here, by the way, just inside my office. And um, banner patterns are a preset pattern that you can get in Minecraft that you can apply to banners. I guarantee 99% of you have never used one. So it appears that there's two extra versions in Bedrock. There is five versions that you can get in Java Edition. There is the Snout version that you can collect in Bastions. The Thing version, which you can craft using a God Apple. The Skull version, which you can use crafting a Wither Skull. The Creeper version, which you need a Creeper Skull for as well. Shocker, I know. And the Flower version, which you need an Ox 
Side Daisy for. Starting this challenge, I already have the Creeper and Wither Skull, so that was easy. I have also picked up a Snout Pattern along my time, so that was also pretty good. The other two is going to be a massive pain to do, but I'll come back to that in a second. This may also be the first ever time that I've used a loom in Minecraft, at least to my recollection, and, uh, well, let's just say that, uh, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing here. Day 878, and once I knew what I was doing, I made the three banners straight away. The other two banners I need, well, here we go. So as I mentioned, I need either a God Apple or an Oxide Daisy to actually complete it, and both of them are pretty hard to do under the current circumstances. When it comes to getting a God Apple, the only reasonable way I could do it is to go back to one of the ancient cities I've found and hope that there's still a God Apple sat around there. That or I have to find a new ancient city, which is just such a difficult task. However, I still think that would technically be easier than actually getting the Oxide Daisy. Unfortunately, they only spawn in biomes like plains and flower forests, so unfortunately, beach and oceans, they just don't want to spawn in for some weird reason, even if you bone meal. So the only choice I've got is wandering traders have a chance to trade them, but uh, that's a very slim chance to say the least. So getting either of these two by the end of the thousand days is definitely going to be a difficult task. We'll uh, give it a go though. For now, I'm just going to focus on the bamboo. As you can see on day 879, I have a lot of bones to go through and I can't really think of another reason why I would need bone or bone meal. So I'm just going to sit here for a while and I'm pretty much just going to bone meal all the bamboo. I ended up adding more hopper mine cars underneath to actually collect more up as well. I'm going to be 100% honest with you from this point for the next hour or so, I pretty much just stood here and held right click. The only time I looked at my screen was to replace the bone meal. Otherwise, I was on my phone. I was looking at something else. I was just trying to get as much bamboo as possible. After an hour had passed on day 885, and this was the bamboo that I got. And boy, was it quite a lot. All of the work that I put in for seven stacks of bamboo blocks. I wasn't even 100% sure if it would be enough, but I'm willing to give it a go. Well, up I go again on day 886, this time with a water bucket. So we went up and got to the first sky limit on one of the builds, and then I did something really dumb. That immediately could have gone better. Well, up we go yet again. All right then, take two. Man, I just suck at this. The thing is, that was technically the small jumps. Now let's do the big one. Nailed it! And up we go one more time. All right, you know, we hit the third one. That was the impressive one. Let's just move on. I wish I'd tell you that my big brain knew exactly how much bamboo blocks I needed. This was the exact perfect amount I needed to get all four pillars to sky limit. I'm completely out of bamboo at this point. And again, I really wish I told you that I did that on purpose. I did not. Didn't need to risk the jump again, but then we move on. The thing that I remembered on day 887 is that the pillars were only part of the puzzle. I still need so much more bamboo for the actual walls. And it did also remind me that all the glass would have now cooked, so I collected it all. Decent amount, I would say. Also, I got myself some better snacks. I really wanted to upgrade from the terrible carrots. All the eights, day 888. And you know what the dark oak island is missing? It is missing big mushrooms. And so I needed to go and get myself some. Now, checking out my storage area, it looks like I did have a brown mushroom sat around, but I didn't have any red ones for whatever reason. I, mean, I guess there's no reason for me to collect red mushroom. You get the point. And so I went back into Nether hunting for red mushrooms. Did I expect it to take me 45 minutes? to find red mushrooms absolutely not but here we are on day 890 collecting the red mushrooms i got back home by night i got a single stack of bones left over and they got lucky with that one i thought i used them all and well let's get them down the red mushroom was as easy as can be the brown one it just didn't want to work i don't know why i just decided that it didn't want to do it i tried waiting until the night to get it to work to hopefully I can get some more darkness in i might be able to grow and i got there in the end but it was much more annoying than it should have been day 892 and it was map day it's a bit early earlier than I was planning to, but I had a big plan coming up, so I wanted to do it early. I got the four maps recorded. I did have to collect a little bit of cherry logs because obviously I wanted to use that for the board and I literally had zero somehow. And this was the 900 day board. The warden kind of looks funny on the map, I will say that. You can definitely tell there's a new island down there, which is pretty cool. You also tell that something is happening to the main Haven house. Hopefully it'll become more noticeable that the Haven Tower's in, but yeah, that's all I did for now. And then for the big decision on day 893, I really want fireworks again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to AFK up top and wait until at least 900 days, which should be close to about two and a half hours. Hopefully that will spawn some more gunpowder in. I guess we'll check on day 900. And we're back. Day 900. Here we are. Uh, still in the skies. I'm hoping for the love of God. We actually got some uh, gunpowder. That'd be nice. I'll be honest with you. I'm technically on a different day right now. Uh, real life day. I sort of left my game playing and then turned it off to, to play another day. So I don't really know how good or bad this will be. Um, I'm hopeful though. Because I really miss the ability to fly around. Here we go. 
That's not a lot. I'm not gonna lie, that's not a lot. I left it for about nearly three hours. That's not a lot. Yikes. Why is this door gone? What happened to the door? Where's your creeper? What is happening? Have I just, have I just lost the door? <laughs> what happened in a couple of days that I've been gone? No, I just don't have a door anymore. All right, whatever, I don't really need one. So, looking at the board, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six tasks available for me to do. I think that these six tasks, I will be able to do them all in the next 100 days. I'm hoping Haven Towers won't be too bad, but that's just entirely dependent on bamboo, so we'll uh, check that out in a second. Uh, the banner pines might be a bit of a pain as well, but I can roughly remember where our foundation city is, so I'm going to see if I can get those. I guess we're just going to start doing stuff and take it from there. Where we are in 900 days, I have done so much. Like, I can compare that to the 100-day board. It is crazy how much is actually on this board. There's still more space to do stuff. Like, I could do stuff over here. Why is... This? You don't have Among Us. I'm going to fix that quickly. And back in. But this, this is it. This is the final stretch. We have 100 more days to go. And then this this world will have been alive for 1,000 days, which is crazy to think about. I do have some big tasks before then, so let's get straight into it. The first thing I did on 901 was check how much bamboo I had, and yeah, it was a decent amount. I turned it all into planks and then used other kinds of wood to make a bunch of ladders. The plan was to make a ladder system that went all the way up to the top and would make it so much easier to get up and down and build the rest of the tower. I and yet again did not have enough bamboo to make it all the way to the top, so uh, that was fun. And going down with ladders like this, yeah, I would never recommend it to any of you. So I think we can agree on day 902 that under normal circumstances, I'm never going to get enough bamboo to complete the tower. And so I decided that I'm just going to personally speed up the process. How am I going to do that? Simple. I'm going to use bone meal. I didn't have any bones at the time though, but the nether is right there and the nether does have bone blocks. So that's going to be pretty good to do. I spent three days in the nether collecting bone blocks. I had collected a grand total of 11 stacks at this point. I was hoping that that surely should be enough for me. And when I got back on day 906, I started bone mealing all of the bamboo. It was very very loud and so I'm you in my game. So y'all 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 ready for this? Day 9-10, been a good uh, 45 minutes since I started this. So a decent amount of bamboo I would say. No, not too bad, you know, pretty pretty good all things considered. Um what's that? It's like 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 with more bamboo flowing in because those they're just chocker full. From 10 stacks of bone blocks, that's that's a decent amount. But if you think that's all I've got, here is a here's a little here's a couple of chests and uh yeah, decent amount of bamboo in there and a decent amount of bamboo there and ten stacks of bone blocks have pretty much half built the Haven Tower, I would say. So it's uh, definitely a good start. It's also good to know that if I ever want to, I can just um bone or block it up and then gain up. So now it's really gonna be a case of building. So uh I guess we can get to work finally. So let's make some more bamboo and then let's Let's make some bamboo. After that, I'll make some more bamboo. And then, uh, well, bamboo. 16 stacks of bamboo blocks later, and let's see what we can do. First things first, let's get the ladders finished off. And I carried on working on the tower on 9-11. Don't do it. Don't, don't make the joke. We all thought of it. Just don't do it. And with the ladders now completed, well, technically I was free short, but that's really not an issue. I wanted to place at least one block on each level to show where the floors are supposed to be, and boy, was that fun. By the end of the day, I did just that, so we can now actually start working on the floors themselves. So a little bit of a showcase on day 912 and how exactly I'm doing it. Leaving a 4x4 four four in the middle so eventually I can put some glass in. I added some bamboo to the bottom layer of each floor before adding two layers of glass to the wall to make a wall pattern that looked like this. Every single room from here to the sky limit will look exactly like this and I'm not going to show all of that. Instead, we're going to have to do a build a montage. So, look, look how far we've come, look how far we still have to go, and look how little bamboo that I have. I have one slab. All of that work, all the bone kneeling, and I don't have enough bamboo. I don't even know if I'd have enough glass, now that I look at it, because I've still got to go up. I mean, I counted out the glass. I'm surprised I won't have enough glass. It's a monumental task, to say the least. And after 
going up for what day are we currently on? 916. So I've been doing this for the last four days. Um, yeah, kind of concerning that I may have to get more glass and I may have to get more bamboo. Because the thing is, I still don't have the flooring in. Uh, I guess I could maths it out and work out exactly how much bamboo I need. But then the flooring and stuff. This is... This, I don't know why I decided to do this. It, it, it was a cool idea at the start, but now here I am after bone mealing, literally 12 stacks of bone block, and I am probably still going to need a solid 10 stacks of bamboo. This is going to be awful. Anyway, let's do some maths. So there's 25 blocks per wall needed. They're both two blocks high, so I need obviously two, so that's 50 per section. There's 30 sections left that I need to do, which means I need myself 1,500 bamboo blanks. There's also 58 sections that I need for the floor, 30 pieces of wood per floor so that makes another 1740 planks needed in total i need 3240 bamboo planks to complete this or about 50.5 stacks of bamboo planks i don't regret this at all this was a good idea i did more maths on day 917 on screen is exactly how much bamboo that i needed to give you an idea of how much that is this double chest has 54 stacks i need to fill that four times and i still wouldn't even have enough at least the tower looks kind of cool and it will only look cooler once I get it done. The plan was to get straight to it. I made as much fireworks as I could. It was only three stacks, but it was going to be a lot better than just running around the nether. And then I returned to the nether and started bone block mining away again. And by the end of the fourth day, I got myself 15 stacks of bone blocks, which was definitely a good amount. I was going to go a little bit further, but not too much since my firework reserve was going to run out pretty soon and I really didn't want to get stuck in here. On day 922, and I feel like we've been here before, repeating the same thing over and over again. Hmm. Guys, ever seen Groundhog's Day? You know, when I saw this adventure, I didn't think that when we got the 900 day mark, it would turn so grindy. And yet, it seriously has. So, we're now on day 928. We're actually about halfway through. We've done a decent amount. Uh, and as you can see, it's uh, got like no bamboo in it. That's because uh, I've got all this bamboo, and I got all that 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 bamboo, and I got glass. Nice. What I'm planning to do is if I just have all the items on the floor. I could just do this. Ah, didn't think this bit through immediately. It's fine. Don't worry. Give me a second. Oh, there's so much bamboo on the floor. Oh, there. Let's try this again. No, you... Why did you do that? God damn it. This this, this plan worked better in my head. Just want to make that clear to everybody involved. Right, let's try this again. So much bamboo. You did it again. Okay, right. We're going to go to plan B here. This is not worked out how I wanted it to. If I've done the maths right, this should be enough. I worked out that I need 25.3 blocks of bamboo to get this done. This is about 27. So there should be enough bamboo to complete this. I'm just hoping I've got enough glass. Uh, I think I do. Oh, this is open. Anyway. 929 is here and uh, great, great. Just, just do the thing. And we are up top. So pretty much I'm fairly confident the bamboo will be good. I haven't done the walls um, just because I feel like it'd be easy to just go up with the walls when that time comes. But I do have pretty much all the bamboo I'll ever need. I'm fairly confident that'll still be enough for bamboo. So now what we got to do is get enough glass to fill all these center four in and then get enough glass to go all the way up. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to go ahead and do some maths again. Oh boy, who would have thought our oh, Minecraft video would be so educational with math. Mm. So I counted 19 walls that still needed glass and 54 floors that still needed glass in the floor. Glass needed per floor. That's 216 glass. The 52 walls, that's an additional 988, which means I still need 1,204 pieces of glass or nearly 19 stacks worth. As I finally fixed my bow, that thing was going to break any day now. Anyway, let's fly around and get ourselves some glass. Found a nice little place to start digging and so I did. And then on day 935, I did a little bit more digging. And on day 936, I might I've gone overboard a little bit, but that's eh, fine. We can finally fly home, start cooking away. It is definitely going to take a minute, so whilst I am waiting, I am going to go ahead and trade a bunch of iron. Why? That's a good question. Why did I want the village trade? What was I just about to do? Why am I here? What was I about to do? I was about to do something. Why am I here with emeralds? What was I about? To... I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess we'll scrap that plan. I don't get a clue. <laughs> Oh, I remember what I wanted to do. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. 
I remembered I wanted wool and quite a lot of it and trading iron and melon seemed like the most simple way to do it. The only problem was they was maxing out really quickly so I'm gonna have to find a new way to do this. So I started trading with as many farmer villages as I could on day 937. I bought so many apples. I was getting PTSD from the first 100 days. The problem wasn't the emeralds. I had plenty of that. It was just the fact that I was consistently stuck with one trader of white wool. And so every single time I was just maxing him out and then I was just having to wait for him. I could trade 16 at a time. So to give you an idea of how long this was taking, by day 940, I only had three stacks of white wool. I also finally added the final enchant to my sword, Sweeping Edge. Now I can officially say all my gear is maxed out on enchants. Rest in peace, all those levels though. I mean, cost a lot. So anyway, it was finally time for me to build my boy. And so I got to work. So I got back to work on day 941. And before I knew it, I was out of wool. Yeah, this is definitely going to take a while. So I began trading pretty much straight away. Problem is, I just couldn't be bothered to wait around again. So my plan was kind of simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to max out the trades the best I could. And then I'm going to go ahead and build a little bit on the wool guy. After that, I'm going to head back to the villager and hope that the trades are done and keep going back and forth until I've actually completed my build. Spoiler alert, it was a very painful process. But here is the finished product on day 943, a wolfy boy. I can't tame a wolf, so I may as well build one. I shall call him Paxton. No, I call him Paxton. Now, somebody will get that joke, trust me. Now, with all this cooked glass, I should be able to finish off the tower. So, for the time being, Gray, charge you up for the last time. And from crazily underestimating it to honestly crazily overestimating it, I ended up with over two stacks of bamboo spare and over two stacks of glass spare as well. I don't know how I did that, but anyway, we move on. But the Haven Tower is done, mostly. You see these little slabs now? Basically, I just want to get them going all the way around, so that's going to be a bit of a pain, but that is the last thing that I have to do. Three days into this project, by the way, and uh, we're still not done. Anyway, let's finish this. <laughs> So that's the first wall done, that's the front wall done. Um, took me about 15 minutes, I would say. So if we're taking 15 for here, 15 for here, 15 for here, and 15 for here, and this is the next hour of my life, cool. Um, well, no time like the present. Wait, is this the water side? Wait, it's the water side. <laughs> I should be more careful about doing that, even though I have the tokens, like seriously. I just have enough bamboo to do this, but we're done. That's all four sides done, I believe. Let me just quickly check. So this side is good. This side is good. This side is definitely good. Yep. And of course, this side is good. Fantastic. All right, then that's all four of them done. That took an hour. <laughs> yeah, admittedly wasn't too bad. Um, I no longer have to touch bamboo or glass for a very long time, and I'm a very appreciative of it then I think I'm going to go ahead and stop building this. We're in the final countdown of 50 days. I believe the water is this side. Probably should have been more careful. Definitely should have been more careful. But what I can do is first up make a wolf and done so. And then Haven Towers is also done so. So there's only three really things I want to do. The battle patterns, I don't think I'm going to have time. So I'm just going to get rid of that one now. And uh, that one's fine. But a uh, Hall of Haven, got to build that. That's just going to be a monument to the island. The minecart track slash monorail. Oh, that's probably going to be the next big thing I work on. And the mangrove island entirely depends on a wandering trader spawning it. But I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I just don't think that's going to happen at this point. So uh, next up, let's check our quartz situation. So it was day 952 where I went back to the never to mine some quartz. And believe it or not, that's what I did when I got in there. To be 100% honest with you, thanks to the fortune, among other things, it was actually quite an easy adventure. I, I pretty much half filled 
the shulker by the end of the day. And by the end of day 953, I had filled the shulker completely. Very easy stuff. I began flying home, but as you can see, I have now run out of fireworks, so I'm going to have to run back. It wasn't really that much of an issue or anything. I did also run out of food at this point, so it was definitely a good time to go it quits. Lucky for me on day 954, food is something I had plenty of. Look at all that chicken. Again, somebody will get that. Also, there's holes in the melon castle again. Why does this keep happening? I mean, I've actually looked into it. Melons don't decay. What, what's going on here? This day originally would have been a write-off, but then it happened. Pillagers. I could actually get the advancement that I wanted to. And after getting who's the pillager now, I went through the advancements one last time, and I can confidently say that I have got every single advancement that I can get without bending any rules. So, uh, go me. So, I wasn't thinking much on day 955, and I accidentally triggered a raid. I'm going to be honest with you, though. This raid couldn't be less scary if it tried. I ended up just spawning a bunch of iron golems and just letting them deal with it. It did knock off the right side to the maps on the 300 day board. It was already broken, but that just made it worse somehow. Also, who do you think is going to win this fight? Seven iron golems or one vexy boy. Oh, it was the it was the golems. Huh, I've seen that one. Take the three tomes, by the way. What I realized on day 956 is that the amount of times that I've actually just looked around my island for just a new spot to build something was that up to about 20 days at this point. I look around so much. But the plan was to start my new build here and I'm going to build a monorail ring around the island. Do you remember that shulker that was full of quartz? I was planning to use that to make a rail all the way around the bottom as well as making a sort of killer thing underneath it so it like goes all the way around. The problem was after using all the quartz I only got about halfway done so that's uh, that's not good. I realized that was wrong though on day 956. It turns out I only used half of the quartz at this point so I was able to get back to work. I could have done it quicker but I was really worried about overshooting it so what I decided to do was basically start again at the start but go the other way around that way I don't accidentally misline something. But anyway I got the main ring completed though I am pretty much out of quartz at this point. Falling in the lava was a bit unnecessary admittedly and as I was typing up some notes there was an iron golem being in the background. That pretty much sums up 956 and I have spoken. Day 957 and I think I have enough rails if I do say so myself so I started working on placing rails and just like that I am out of rails. Definitely underestimated how many I need. The good news is though I have a little bit of spare iron just just a couple of pieces here or there. Took me until day 959 to finish the railing. Now I can move on to putting down some powered rails. The plan was to put the rails on each of the corners and hope that that would be enough to push them through. But I also thought if I put them in the middle as well, just to give them that extra push, that should be enough to get them through. As I say, I will need more cores to actually put down the pillars underneath it to make sure make it look like it's holding itself up. But for the time being, I will at least finish the rails. And it was on day 960 where it was finally time to test out the rail system. It was mostly fine, but I could definitely tell the longer sides of the rail definitely need more powered rails because I was running out of steam towards the end. I can do that in a second for the time being I really need to get some more quartz so I returned back to the nether. It was by day 962 where I was able to fill out another shulker. That should definitely be enough to do as much as I want to do. And so at day 963 I went around placing the powered rails this time. Hopefully it will be enough if I put them in the right locations. It admittedly was quite a slow process but when I tested by the end of the day I definitely say it worked like a charm. Well almost. I think I need one more boosted towards the end of the railway but other than that it should be good to go and i added the booster on day 964 i'm fairly confident it'll work now when i next test it the last thing to do to complete this monorail was to add the pillars underneath the powered rails so i got to work the last rail was done by day 966 it's time for a test ride all right then let's go for a little bit of a ride so what you do is uh first you turn down the game because it's very loud uh, but you just press that button and it takes you around you can have a good nice outline of my island and uh, once you get past the butt of chips just ignore his butt obviously you have each of the islands and all their grown that's kind of what's going on over here i really like the jungle i feel like the jungle islands come across quite well i must say disappointed i didn't get mangrove but i mean what can you do at this point up next you see villager isle there's the nitwit that i got all the way on day i don't even know like 60. my god remember when i had that guy that was totally fun Honestly, I don't even know why I put, like, bookshelf things down for them. They're not bookshelf lecterns down for them. That was kind of not my smartest move, but, you know, what can you do? You see the boat of the dog, the melon castle. To the right, you've got the warden statue monument thing and the completely, totally working mob grinder. The semi-auto farm that... And since I've built much more efficient ones, I realize how terrible it actually is. I'm pretty sure there's still a sunken... This sunken ship, like, right there. I got that ages ago now. Feels like an eternity since I first got that. Then you have the automatic aisle. So you've got the sugarcane farm there. You've got the, um, the creep... Quote-unquote creeper farm. 
you have uh, the iron farm, there's the multi-layered beacon, there's the chicken farm there. And as we approach the last corner, you'll have Dr. Haven's uh, school, his classroom, and obviously the lava pitaroonie for the, the um, what do you call them? Strider. There you go, Strider. Uh, among other things. Honestly, good addition. I'm really, really grateful I did it. The, the only thing is, I don't know how exactly I would do it. I guess I could put a button now. Because then it just takes you on and you just keep going. Obviously, I don't want to do that though. So, oh no, I want you. And with that done, on day 966, with the sun halfway through the day. And that is one of the last two big tasks that I wanted to get done on this is land. In fact, I only have three tasks left. Obviously, you've got the monorail minecart track. I can now officially get rid of that altogether. God, this is a good day. Uh, mangrove Island, let's be honest, the chance of me getting another wandering trade that also has the mangrove sapling, I don't think will happen at this point. So it may be the only task that I will be able to do, which is kind of sad, but considering everything else that I've done on this island, I can't really be sad about that. I mean, seriously, you can't look anywhere on this island without seeing something new and cool, so that's kind of cool. And then finally, Hall of Haven. I've had this on the board for a very long time. There's probably some people are like, what the hell is the Hall of Haven? Basically, I just want to build like a... I don't even know the correct term for it, but like a monument to every accomplishment I've done and put down some cool statistics that I've, you know, had during the times. Just basically like a final celebration for, for everything that I've done. Because, you know, in the next couple of hours, I'm done. All of this work, all of this recording, all this, this will be the last time I go on this island. And that's, it's in a way, it's bittersweet. Because obviously, you know, I've done a lot on this island. And the next couple of hours, it'll be done. So, I guess, once the new day hits, because the sun's about to hit, you can look past the giant tower. And uh, we'll start the Hall of Haven. Now, where are we going to build that? Oh god, we'll have to spend a couple of days figuring that out. Day 967, and it was time for the final build and we need to make ourselves something fancy so i started by using the remainder of the quartz i had to make myself a nice lorraine i then began planning it out making sure it was an odd number because i wanted a center block it was onto the walls on day 968 i used dark oak for the first time because i've never used that in this world and though i did have to do a little bit of reworking because i accidentally miscounted one of the lambs i was able to extend it and keep on working i will say on day 969 it's so much easier to just use glass panes you get so many of them and it's just so much easier to play this was a Joy. I'm so grateful I never have to place glass blocks again. My god. So day 971 and uh, here's the roof. Yes, it does look awful. I'm not pretending it doesn't, but I do actually need it to look like that because I need to hide myself a sign. Let's uh, let's get some iron blocks. And I introduce to you the completed build of the Hall of Haven. It's not great, but I think it works. I just really wanted to fill it up with some interesting stats that I was able to do across the time that I was here. I was still adding stats by day 973. It was actually kind of fun to go through and look at some of the statistics that that I was able to pull off during this time. The legitimate last thing that I wanted to do was just to get a beacon and put it in the Hall of Haven. So for the absolute last time, let's run into the nether and get ourselves some wither skulls. I'm gonna skip this process because we don't need to see it again. But here we are on day 973 where I got not one, but two wither skulls, getting me to four wither skulls, which I thought was pretty cool. But it's time to head home. I did get a little bit distracted on day 980, but I was able to find the wither. I used the same tactic as last time by shoving him in a cave and then just spraying him down with arrows as soon as he got close to me i just spammed him with my sword he barely did any damage to me i mean even whilst i was afk typing notes here he still was doing damage but i was never gonna die here not even close the greatest thing i realized on day 981 is there's gonna be a day very soon where i won't have to build a beacon underwater and let me tell you it'll be a good day and then something happened that I genuinely never expected i ran out of iron blocks i cannot believe that happened whatever will i do to fix this problem let's just see if i have any iron in reserve oh look yeah, I do. Who, who does see that one coming? And just like that, the whole of Haven was completed. Day 982, and there was just a handful of things that I wanted to do before the ending, like put a couple of walls around the hall, add a couple of lanterns there, put a couple of extra things in the hall of Haven, those kind of things. And it was a bittersweet feeling on day 983, because this was the legitimate last thing that I was going to do. I made four maps one more time. I obviously recorded the map locations. I made the final map board, and it was done. It doesn't even fit the monorail by the way, which is kind of crazy. And I do know it is 17 days early, but I legitimately just was done. I didn't want to force anything out. I didn't want to add something that I wasn't going to lie. So I was pretty happy to just wait until the end. But we're not done here. There's two more things we need to do. So for the last time, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce Dr. Havenand. Last time over here, eh? Well, don't be too sad, people. I'm sure I'll pop up in other videos when needed. For now, it is my final lesson of the Survival Island video. So pay attention, make note. This is going to be the final one. My final
final lesson to you is the seed of this world. But before I can give you that, let me just quickly take a nice little field trip. Does this place look familiar? No? Well, let me just fly up here. Now it definitely should. This is the island that I have survived 1,000 days on or the thumbnails from every single video. Now, when I started here, I believed that there was no wood on the island. So I spawned in one bamboo to use the new wood to basically make a very unique experience on Survival Island. You can do that. Alternatively, you don't actually have to because it turns out there is a sunken ship right off the side of the island here. You can use the wood from the sunken ship or go into the sunken ship and get the moss. Basically, I'm saying that if you want to use this world, you don't have to use the bamboo way that I did. I just did it because I didn't think I had any other access to wood. You can just use that. The final little note that I want to give about this world is that though it does work on both Java and Bedrock, there are slight differences. I've been playing in Java, so let me just quickly show you the Bedrock version. If you were to play in Bedrock, then you actually get a desert temple over here. It is worth mentioning though that if you do play in Bedrock, the shipwreck isn't there, which means you wouldn't actually have any access to wood, so good luck if you are wanting to do it that way. Ah, back in the office, that's so much better, but that's enough jibber-jabbering. Here is the sea. Now, I know some of you have been waiting a very long time to see this seed, so thank you so much for watching this entire series and waiting up until this moment, and I do have a favor to ask before you run off and play this world. If any of you decide to make content on this world, basically make a video or a series or something, do me a favor and leave at Haven and you in your YouTube description. It's not because I want the credit, I don't care about that, but basically when you put at Haven and in your description, it will notify me on YouTube that you have made this series, and I would love to watch some of you guys' content on this world. The Haven and Survival Island challenge, which I'm going to dub it selfishly, was a really cool thing for me to do. And if you start with one bamboo or just a shipwreck, it was such a fun experience and I'd love to see other people give it a try. So like I say, notify me on YouTube, leave that at Haven and it'd be really cool. Fair warning though, it is challenging. And that ends my final lesson. I thank you all so much for listening to the lessons that I've given you along the way. Sign us off, Haven. Sign us off. Day 999. We have one more day in this world. So I think now, of all times, would be the perfect time to do one last island tour. God, where do I even begin? The reason I've done this on 999, by the way, is I'm not even confident I'll be able to look at it all. So I guess we will start on the far side of the island and we will work our way forward. But there's a lot to get to here, so uh, get comfy. You can <laughs> watch the uh, Haven Tour one last time. Starting with the multiple islands, the jungle, the dark oak. You've obviously got the alcacia, there's the oak. Uh, cherry tree, of course. Over here, you have our... Can I have a chest over here? Oh my god, I could have used some of this stuff. No, oh, whatever. I eat potato chips skin is right here. Congratulations to him yet again. That pretty much is all of the islands. The grass over here didn't complete, which... I mean, to be fair, I've not really been over here that much, but it is still a bit of a surprise because I've stood around this island a bunch. It's very surprising it didn't fully grow out. But that's pretty much all the trees and everything. Obviously, got Azalea Island, there's Spruce Tree Island, there's Birch Tree Island. I'm so disappointed I didn't get the mangrove tree for the record. I would have got every single one of them. That would have been really cool, but uh, uh, what will be, what will be. The minecart, I'll do that last because I feel like that's the, the best uh, thing to do last so we can have one last uh, loop around. Over here, we have some nice places. First of all, King Pedro. Oh my god, how long have I had you for? It feels like an eternity since I had, you know, King Pedro come to my island and stay and own his little plot of land. The sniffers I got in the first, I was gonna say first 100 days, it was in like the 500 days, but they feel like they've been here forever now. I mean, kind of crazy. Villager Island, remember when there was all stuffed in this house and now they've got, look at how many golems they've got. What is this? There's like, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, there's 39 golems in here. Guys, I get it, you ought to be safe. Oh, there's 40 there, what the hell? But yeah, this is a, uh, I, I always thought I'd make this a little bit prettier at some point, but I just never really got the chance to do it. So, uh, you know what? It, it, it does what it's supposed to do. Of course, you have Among Us in the corner over there. I still love that build, though. One of my favorite builds, I must say. Hello, Paxton, how you doing, buddy? It's really hard to get a good look at him, but I... I just quite like the way he looks, I'm not gonna lie. I think it looks really cool. You have, of course, the map room. This is every map from day 600, when it was, uh, you know, from 600, that's where we were. And then 700, and then 800, and then 900. And here's where we finished on day 1000. Look how much is on the island. Wait until I show you day 100 and just how little there was. I really wish I could get a map of just day zero. That'd be kind of cool. But like, look how much is on here. There's not like a space of land that is just free. It's, it's kind of crazy. Over here, you've got the uh, villager area with all the trades. I only ended up using it a couple of times, but it still was a useful get. Hello, Catland. How's it going? You know what? 
That logo, the cat, the way it's sort of set up, that's actually kind of grown on me quite a lot. I actually quite like it. But here's all 11 cats. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep, all here. Uh, the black cat, I've looked into forever, by the way. Incredibly lucky to get that one. It would have been absolutely, like, if I got 10 of the 11, I would have been like, yeah, that makes sense. This only spawns at midnight, and there's only like a 1 in, if I read correctly, like 1 in 50 chance of it being a midnight kind of thing. So I got very lucky that I spotted him the next day. Like, incredibly lucky. Obviously, you've got the melon farm, which I might, it probably just could be chocker. Yeah, it's completely chocker. Yeah, there's loads of stuff in here. It's probably like backed up like crazy, because I haven't touched it since I completed the melon castle. Actually, that's not true. I grabbed the bit to do some training, but that was still ages ago. You got the dragon statue. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much to say about it. I do think it's an upgrade to what it originally was. Oh, the to-do board. I never crossed this off. So the Hall of Haven is gone. You know what? The Mangrove Island, they can stay there because it's the only thing I wasn't able to get done. It's unfortunate, but what can you do? Obviously, my giant person, my human. Now, I have noticed, and I imagine some people are going to comment here saying that the head is one block too forward. Like, do you know, remember how I did with Potato Chips' skin? How his head was one too far back. Mine is one too far forward. It's just such an effort to, like, change it, though. It literally took me 20 minutes to fix Potato Chip. His face is really basic. Mine has the goggles and the mustache and those kind of things. It'd just be a real pain to fix it. Of course, you've got the Melon Castle. I didn't even end up going for the flags because I just didn't think I'd be able to get them. I mean, I definitely wasn't able to get the Oxide Daisy one, but uh, the, the God Apple, in theory, I probably could have got. It was just a lot of effort to potentially find a third one, and trust me, I am very, very tired of doing all this stuff. This thing is the bane of my existence, so we'll ignore it. The Warden Monument, the Warden that I killed, uh, the Catalyst is still down there, protected, never to see the light of day. I guess it is because the glass, but you, you get the point. I don't really show this, but as I'm running back, I'm just sat here silently. <laughs> just waiting for like the, the next thing to do you've got the maps this is the day 100 map by the way i mean if you ignore the among us i accidentally took that out at one point but there wasn't anything there apart from whatever this little thing is it actually might be the bottom of the mob grinder but again it's fine but like look how little is there you had my house some farms the bamboo that was the pig that red dot there that was the pig step area and I, I don't even know what that was. I don't even know what that is. Maybe it's the enchant setup? It probably is the enchant setup, actually. And 200 days, I had... Did I put... No, that's not right. That's definitely... Yeah, that's definitely wrong. Okay, 200 days is wrong. That's fantastic to look at. 300 days is definitely wrong. We know this. And so is 400 days. I'm really disappointed these maps were broken, by the way. 500 days is correct. But apparently 200 days is broken as well. I don't know how that's happened, but 200 days is also broken. So, um, isn't that fun? I don't know when that got broken. So the only, <laughs> the only working maps I have is day 100 day 500 and then obviously the ones that go up to 1k but to be honest with you this one being the the free one is fine and if i want i can go through and get screenshots of every one of them and put them together so that's fine uh the auto cooker i will show you by the way i still had so much cooking like stuff done so i was never ever gonna have to refill like I, this is four stacks of coal in there so we were fine we're fine. we were good the tower of haven it goes all the way to y320 i'm gonna be honest with you after not after this floor there is nothing up there there's absolutely nothing like i could go through every flat there's also that which i kind of missed there's just nothing i just wanted to have it i don't know why i thought if i had enough time i could like design each floor but i just never got the chance to do that so of course you have the schools i'm uh, really happy i got all these especially this one this one was a pain but yeah these were quite nice and easy to get so that's cool very big fan of the boats this one is much more basic than this one but i still quite like this one they definitely know what they're doing so that's pretty cool and the dock as well i really like this feature of the island i'm not gonna lie oh this thing god how much time did i put into this but here is every single armor trimming that I can get, excluding mine, but I guess I could stand like that and uh, look at that. Disappointed I couldn't get the rest of them, but you know what? The fact is that I got these, I feel like it's really, uh, really impressive considering where I started. You've got the never portal, which hey, it's a never portal. And you've got the lava thing, which was for the strider, but the strider obviously is gone. Dr. Havenand's build, his home is his place. Lovely little place for Dr. Havenand. Yeah, he's now he's now retired from this place. Good on him. The pigsteng dance area. Oh, it looks so much better, even though it kind of looks like the ISR one, but we move on. I'm, I'm only halfway done the island is turning night the axolotl he's still for some weird reason he always like sits in this corner or one of the corners and just stays there forever so you know go him the enchant setup i haven't touched that in forever design wise this i think i made in 200 days and this has been i've probably been in this building more than any other this storage area has been fantastic for me the little among us guy didn't really do anything with him either but you know just to have him on the island is kind of cool it's my semi-auto farm oh god this thing like i say in future videos i've made this so much better 
But like, it, it always worked. It always like was, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. I just had to replant it. But the cactus fart, I never even touched the cactus. It only ended up getting me, it didn't even get me two stacks in the end. So, you know, wasn't even that good. The bamboo farm, this thing, it's still got barely any bamboo in it in the grand scheme of things, but we were fine. The chicken thing, it did what I wanted to do, I guess. This thing is the greatest thing I've ever built in Minecraft. The iron farm has been spectacular for me. The sugar cane farm has also been pretty good. The creeper farm, and to be fair, there's fireball gunpowder in there now. So, you know, that's something. Multi-layered beacon, not too shabby if I do say so myself. Finally, the Hall of Haven. I'll go in there in a second. But for now, I think I need to sleep and, uh, you know, do one last day. Because day 999 is about to end. We're about to hit the promised land. The day that I never thought I would reach when I started this. Here we go. Look at that day 99. It's right there. Wait for it. Wait for it. Day 1000. Well, I guess there's two less things to look at, and then we can finally end this once and for all. I didn't show too much of the Hall of Haven, just because, you know, there's not really too much to it. I just want to put down some cool statistics and everything that I did. What I have done is I've got these item frames, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that gear and tools in there. We'll have the elytra and the bow. There you go. That's all That's all the main stuff that I used. The armor. I, I just don't need it anymore. Oh, I'm still wearing the Dr. Haven and skin. Ignore that. Ignore that, guys. It's, it's, it's not, guys, it's not Dr. Haven and I'm just, it's, it's cosplay, guys. It's cosplay. There you go. That's that. Some of the stats are pretty, like, when the episode started and when I got them uploaded, which is pretty cool. Some of them is, like, how long I've played, how many views and likes it's got. If you want to, like, look at all of them, you can uh, maybe come onto this world, which I'll get to in a little bit. I am going to hold this here just in case. You never know what's, what might sneak up on me. Look at me looking on naked. Again, ignore, ignore the cosplay, guys. It's just a cosplay. And that means there is only one last thing to do. One last thing to do. I guess two, technically. Uh, maybe even three. <laughs> you know what? We've got three last things to do. And then we can finally close off this chapter in our in our YouTube career. Uh, and that is to take the monorail all the way around. Again, I'm going to turn you down because you are very loud. Should work perfectly fine. But we can actually get an outside look of this island and just everything that I've done with it. I mean, this, this particular video has been going on for so, so long. Like, I'm finishing this and I'm confident it's going to take me two, three weeks to upload it. I mean, I'm, uh, this is July 1st. Just to give you an idea, it's July 1st when I've finished recording. Uploading-wise, I've got a clue. Sometime at the end of July, I assume. My entire uh, backup of videos that I've had, whether it be the uh, trimming video or the... Uh, I had the circle video, AI. I had a bunch of different stuff and that's all now uploaded. So basically, after this video comes out, I don't have any 100 days recorded. So... <laughs> you know what? Give me, give me a second for the next video, baby. <laughs> Please don't leave the channel just because this is over. I've got lots of stuff still planned, I guess. As we go around and look at all this. But, you know, I'm really actually happy that I added this of all things. I feel like this was a good addition to the island. You know what? I left my pickaxe. It's going to be such a pain to get this off. You can see all the beacons in the sky. There's what, you can see, what, six beacons from here, which is kind of crazy to, to think about. I think w when it comes down to day 1000, even though the final, what, 15 days, I barely did anything. I pretty much just stood around and waited. I still think that I did everything that I wanted to do in this world and, and more. I thought this was going to be a one-off 100 days video, call it a day, and then move on to the next series. And instead, it's the most popular video on my channel by far. It's, it's not even close. Like, the second most viewed video was Skyblock. It had, like, 1.8 million, and I'm like, there's, there's no video that will ever catch up to that. And now, Skyblock is setting about a million views behind the 1.20 Survival Island. That's kind of cool. So I hope you liked the tour. That was everything that I did, uh, which gets me to the last two things that I want to do. You need to find a good spot here, a good quiet spot. And that is, I want to say a couple of thank yous. The first person I want to thank is my good editor, Graymond. When I decided to go to 1000, it wasn't possible for me to do. It was too much work. And so I got in touch with Graymond, who used to edit for me. And I was like, great, I can't do this. Can I rehire you just for this little period? to do this and they with open arms just like yeah let's do this and the amount of work that they have put in is crazy so great thank you so much for all your help if you want to say something or put something on screen now you're more than welcome to Please go check out Graymond on Twitch, twitch.tv slash grayscaped. I will leave a link in the description, so please go check them out. When they do stream, they are a really good streamer. Just no promises when they do stream, because, uh, spoiler alert, it's not very often. <laughs> Grace definitely going to roast me for that one.
Also, maybe check out my streams because I would like to do some more streaming in the near future. So, but both of them will be in the description. But Gray should be the priority because the amount of work that Gray has done in the past, oh god, couple of months is outrageous. So, you know, Gray, I know you're watching this. I really appreciate all you've done. Thank you so much for your help, Gray. And the viewer, you, you, in 2023, I made a big change to my life. This became my full time job. And the support that I've got in 2023 alone has been sensational. And this is the series that's done it. So, seriously, if you started on day 100 and you are now watching this moment, I found Thank you, because just watching the videos is enough for me to get paid. Um, <laughs> no, it, it supports you a lot, whether you like or comment or anything. Even if you've got annoyed about golden apples or azalea trees or how the island looks like India or there's no crops, but there were sugar, you know, whether you liked it or not. It was still a really good series for me to make. And that pretty much ends off that. I guess there's only one last thing to do on this island. Then, then we can maybe go watch something else. And that, of course, is to dance with some pig step. <laughs> Remember when I did this all the time ago? Wait for it. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Seriously, everybody, thank you so much for watching and supporting the series. There's still so much more to come, even though this series is coming to an end. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, here's the 200k. Oh, by the way, uh, last thing I completely forgot to mention. Uh, do you want the world download? Do you, do you want the to, to, to look around Haven Survival Island 1 the 20 video? I'm going to ask for something outrageous. 20,000 likes, I'll release a video downloading the world and everything you need to know about it. Yeah, all right then. Let's log out. That's not some pick step with the upgraded down below.